Testing, testing, one, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Let me know in the chat. And also, let me know where you are watching from. It's tradition, right? This is what we do. Um, I, I like to see in the chat at the very beginning of the stream where everybody's watching from so we get a good gauge of where the core audience is. Today, it should be in Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. Uh, that looks like uh, the hardest hit uh, areas today as far as uh, the severe weather threat goes. Uh, but, hey, we're going to have even more severe weather tomorrow, uh, even farther east. We're talking about tens of millions of people here uh, under the gun for potential severe weather uh, during our multi-day severe weather outbreak. Yesterday was the first day. A little bit underwhelming, um, other than some almost basketball-sized hail down there south of San Antonio. Uh, obviously, we had some damaging winds, uh, some brief tornadoes up there in Mississippi, Alabama, and portions of uh, Tennessee. Uh, tonight looks like it's going to be a little bit more significant. Oh, maybe this is Brad. I can hear you. Um, and uh, we've got a tornado threat for sure, uh, but it's starting to look like uh, the main threat, the, the biggest thing that we're going to be watching for today is hail and damaging winds. And this ain't your normal hail either. We're, we're, we're really thinking about seeing uh, potentially some extremely damaging hail uh, today in and around the Dallas area. And then, of course, we do have that tornado risk. OK, that is still a thing. Uh, and we are still having to be, uh, you know, conscious of that uh, as we go forward. Speaking of risks, uh, let me show you what those look like. Um, uh, while also showing you all of our storm chasers here, we've got a bunch of guys on the ground. We've got Brett Adair, Chris Hall, Brian Allen, Brad Arnold, and Zach and Frankie uh, out there uh, giving us a good view of uh, everything that's going on. Uh, if we can get a rail fan camera in Texas, that would probably be, probably be better. And since we don't have a, um, a location on Brett, probably somebody else in the number one spot would be uh, good until we get a update from Brett there. Uh, anyways, I'm going to turn um, our Radar Omega app into our SPC viewer here real quick. I'm going to turn off uh, weather alerts. What else am I going to do, y'all? I'm going to turn uh, off uh, the Cyclone Port Network. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Then I'm going to turn on the day one outlook, guys. 8 million, 8.5 million people under the, the uh, risk for severe weather today and uh, almost the most significant category that you can get. Uh, Dallas, uh, you're under a moderate risk of severe weather today. That's a four out of five. Little Rock, you're under a three out of five, the enhanced risk. And this is going to be uh, an uh, all evening event. All right. We've got supercells popping up right now just to the west of Dallas. Uh, and then things are going to keep on going uh, farther east as we go through the night. There's two different modes. Uh, we've got potential prefrontal uh, and, or warm frontal uh, supercells uh, that are going to try to form uh, out in front of this uh, second mode, which is a line of storms that's going to squash through Dallas uh, later this evening. And uh, we're thinking about hurricane force winds are, are probably likely with that squall line. And then with the supercells out ahead of it, baseball size hail or larger. And then, of course, I think there's going to be a, at least a few intense tornadoes tonight uh, somewhere along this corridor 
So uh, if you're in any of the shaded zones here, I don't care if it's yellow, orange, or red, uh, you do need to be paying attention to the weather tonight. It's going to be quite the, the dangerous scenario out there. This does include Dallas, McKinney, Tyler, Shreveport, Texarkana, Sulphur Springs, and Hot Springs, and Camden, and El Dorado between um, mostly Arkansas and Texas, but there is a little sliver of Oklahoma and Louisiana in there as well. Uh, but I would be just as keen uh, as to far as like looking at the weather uh, from uh, Brownwood down through Waco into uh, Monroe, Louisiana, and then Greenville, Mississippi, up to Memphis, Tennessee tonight. As, as we've seen multiple times, storms don't care about these lines here. They don't care about the colors. They don't care about the zones. Uh, a lot of times we can see bad weather even outside of the forecasted zones. But we do have something uh, really interesting going on here. Let me show you the tornado probabilities. We got 11 million people with a 10% hatched risk of seeing a tornado uh, tonight. That's a 10% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any given point. And the dotted lines there indicate areas that could see EF2 tornadoes or stronger. Uh, this is the criteria that we use to go live usually. If, if we've got something like this, then it's probably going to be a big deal and uh, we need to be here to cover it. Uh, but this isn't the most concerning thing today. We have actually uh, other aspects of the storm system that are driving the moderate risk, like wind, okay? Uh, we have a 45% chance of damaging wind tonight between Dallas uh, and Pine Bluff in, in Arkansas and Texas. Uh, that's kind of what's really driving the moderate risk, as you can see there. And this is, once again, maybe bigger than baseballs. You get a, a, a baseball size hail storm move through a place like Dallas, and you're talking about well over a hundred million dollars in damage, if not more. Um, and and you just you, you hate to see it, but tonight uh, is the kind of night where that can happen. I think Texas in the past, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years or something, has had 30 um, instances where there are disasters that cause you know millions and millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. And only like nine or 10 of them are tornadoes. Guess what? The majority of them are hail events. So um, this looks like it could be uh, one of those situations in and around the Dallas area. We hope that those supercells kind of miss the metro, but we're going to be tracking them hard here as we go through the rest of the afternoon and evening. Um, and then, of course, uh, <laughs> we, we had the, the wind graphic up, but I was talking about hail. But we do have um, a, a significant hail chance today. Uh, out here in the Dallas Metro, Fort Worth, Denton, McKinney, Gainesville, Sherman. You guys are all in the, on this. Get ready for the baseballs, son, uh, coming out of the sky potentially um, as we go forward. We got a malfunction over there? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, let me know when it's fixed so I can bring that back up. Uh, so that is the SPC Outlooks. For today, real quick before we dive into now casting, uh, I do want to show you the SPC outlook for tomorrow because this is something else that we're going to be watching uh, very closely. Got Four million people and an enhanced risk of severe weather up here in Kentucky and Tennessee, Lexington, Richmond, Louisville, all the way down to Nashville and Murfreesboro, Tennessee. You guys are in on potentially getting in on some damaging winds and isolated tornadoes. Uh, the, the wind threat is probably going to be the main thing here, but phew, I'm telling y'all, I was looking at some of the models, uh, before, uh, I came on the live stream here and I, I was talking about this yesterday and, um, I, I just, I can't help myself. Uh, I, I really do think that tomorrow is probably going to be, uh, as significant as today, if not more significant in terms of severe weather. Now, I don't know if it'll be as widespread. Uh, it's probably going to be a pretty localized event wherever it happens. But man, the wind shear is off the charts. The, you know, all these things that come need to come together for severe weather are coming together tomorrow up here in Kentucky. And um, th there's a couple things that might be our saving grace, uh, like a, a lack of instability, for example. But if a thunderstorm gets going out here tomorrow, I, I I really do think we're going to see um, something incredible in the form of a significant severe weather event. So we'll be covering this tomorrow. It might be a little bit different. Your boy might want to get out of the house, okay? I live over here, if you guys don't know. Um, I can hop in the truck and go storm chasing tomorrow out here in this region and still go live. Uh, I believe we could have Andy here kind of manning the ship 
And I, I would still be talking, doing everything I normally do. It just wouldn't sound as good because it'd be through like my phone <laughs> on Zoom or something. Um, but I, we'd still have the automated warning alerts. And I, I don't know. I just I think it would be a good opportunity for me to go storm chasing and provide live coverage at the same time. Is there a significant problem over there? You need my help? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Sweet. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's, but if I don't go storm chasing tomorrow, I will probably be right back here uh, in the studio, uh, broadcasting along with you. All right. So that's the SPC. That's the storm prediction centers outlook. What's going on right now? Well, <laughs> we've got a couple of these big supercells up here already, uh, moving up towards Gainesville and, uh, areas just North, uh, and West of Dallas. So uh, these are definitely dropping hail. Uh, we've got 1.25 inch in diameter hail moving up here towards Denison. Uh, Gainesville, you just got in on some of that hail, uh, and that's moving up towards Whitesboro and Collinsville. Um, uh, one and a half inch in diameter hail moving up towards Valley View and Sanger along the I-35 corridor. Uh, this is just something you really don't want to see as uh, <laughs> this is just the beginning. We're going to see more of these cells pop up. And potentially produce even larger hail here. What do we got? What in the world is uh, going on here? Hold on. What was there a fire on his stream? Did you see that? Yeah. Did y'all see that? I, now, don't tell me I'm crazy. It just like it was just like the field was on fire, and now he's he looks like he's running from it. <laughs> what the heck, <laughs> Brian? What in the heck just happened there, son? I I thought I saw fire on your uh, your feed, and I pulled it up, and then you was driving away. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> we got big 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 bolts around us and it just struck right behind us about 50 yards and uh caught the grass on fire uh but we got to get out of here because we're this thing's get, getting up on us quick so we got we had to move uh it's too far gone with that wind dang so uh a lightning caused it well all right, well, <laughs> that's another added risk that we can add to the table of things that could uh, potentially happen today. Uh, grass fires as a result of lightning strikes out here in, in uh, some of these fields in and around Dallas. I'm trying to find out where um, where exactly. Okay, so Brian Allen is actually just to the north of Fort Worth. He's out here near Slidell, so he's right on this storm, um, and that's what caused that fire. I don't know if if we could get a clip of that or not, it looked like it was a pretty big fire. And I think he probably stopped to try to do something to put it out, maybe throw a bottle of water on it or I don't know, but the wind is obviously ripping through here and that's probably going to cause that to spread pretty quickly. So got dry lightning on the bottom side of this storm. Uh, just a, another sign though, of how uh, intense, I guess the, the, the storm is it's packing in a lot of inflow. And it's going to continue to grow here as it moves off to the north and to the east. Once again, Slidell, you're getting ready to get in on some of that extremely uh, heavy rain and some large hail that's going to be moving up towards Sang Sanger, Sanger, Valley View, Collinsville, and Whitesboro. These are going to be big hail producers, y'all. And right now, um, there is rotation. We are, we are seeing these storms spin a little bit. Uh, but it's not, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing, uh, I don't think that we're going to have a tornado warning here uh, soon with either of these storms. I could be wrong, but I think the more tornadic uh, potential is going to be down here to the south and to the west. Look at where Brad Arnold is. If you guys have the Radar Omega app, um, you guys can see his location live updating on the road as he drives around here in southeastern or eastern Texas. He is over here in this field of storms because... He believes that this is where we might see tornadoes. And he's exactly right. The, the best parameters for tornadoes today are all over here. 
Uh, the problem, if you wanted to see a tornado, I guess, uh, is the fact that there's a cap in place. There's a warm air inversion in the atmosphere. It's not allowing for that rapid up upward motion uh, and instability that we need to see big storms. So that's probably not going to allow the storm to get big enough to take advantage of all the different layers of the atmosphere that are, you know, the winds turning in different directions and all that stuff. Uh, and that's why we're not going to see like a a huge tornado outbreak today. I, I do think we'll see tornadoes. I think we would have seen a historic tornado outbreak if it wasn't for that warm air inversion that's in place. Uh, but if one of these storms can kind of fight through that and break through it, it is going to produce a tornado out here. Um, and that's why Brad's down there kind of, uh, you know, uh, keeping an eye on them storms uh, as we go forward. So, once again, th uh, three different areas to watch right now, and this is all going to be moving east throughout the day. Uh, one of them's uh, over here in uh, eastern uh, Texas near Tyler. These storms are nothing right now. They're not doing anything. You don't have to worry about them. Uh, Brad's keeping an eye on them to see if they're going to get any bigger and maybe produce tornadoes. Uh, and then we've got the ones over here closer to Dallas, moving up towards Denison, and eventually towards Durant uh, and Atoka and Antlers in um, uh, Oklahoma. These are big, beefy, bad boy supercells, and they're dropping big time hail. But that's it. That, there's not a lot of a um, a tornado kind of risk with these right now either. Now, that's that could change. When these things develop big mesos, and they probably will, we'll probably see some tornado warnings come out of these. And, of course, we'll let you know as soon as that happens. That's the second mode. The third mode uh, is way back here near Abilene right now, where we do have a severe thunderstorm warning. Um, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for 60 mile an hour winds and one inch in diameter hail. This is going to turn into a big nasty squall line and produce 60 to 70 mile an hour winds as it goes through Dallas later tonight as well. And then all the way up into, I mean, this is, this one's going to go the distance, you know what I mean? And it's going to go fast. Uh, so that's going to cause problems. There's three different big time problem childs here, and we're going to keep you updated on all of them. Uh, the biggest tornado threat is once again, if these storms down here where Brad is go a little bit harder than what they are right now. And this squall line, this, this squall line is going to interact with a ton of wind shear tonight. And there will be multiple uh, QLCS tornadoes at some point tonight. Uh, but we're just hoping that we don't see those big, nasty, long track supercells. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we're just crossing our fingers and hoping that doesn't say it. Uh, let's see here. Andy's lights aren't working. Are the lights working at all? Let me see if I can turn them. Hey, Bulls. Why is something always going to be broke? <laughs> We spend hours and hours and hours setting this stuff up, and then one little thing decides not to work. Uh, if uh, if Andy wants to talk to me, uh, guys, if 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 you guys want to jump in, just let Carly know, and then Carly will let me know. Sound good? All right. ULCS. That's a quasi-linear convective system. Just a big fancy word for line of storms. Gotten in a habit saying QLCS rather than just linear storm because I've been hanging out with Andy too much. But, uh, that, I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, if you guys know anybody out there in the Dallas area tonight, uh, all the way up through Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, all of East Texas, please share this link with them. We're going to keep them updated. Um, as these huge storms are, are really starting to get together here and they're starting to uh, show their their ugly side, I guess you could say, right to the north of uh, Dallas. These, these are definitely dropping some big hail. We've got storm chasers on them. Brian Allen is in one. Um, he's not in the hail core. He's actually on the southern side uh, trying to, uh, you know, chase the, the bottom of it because these storms could produce tornadoes up here. That's what they're after. Um, but I don't think they want to get in the, the big hail core over there. Now, where in the world is Zach and Frankie? Yeah, I, they just, they're not online, I don't think. So I'm going to, well, I don't see them on, 
Oh, okay. Here they are. Hey guys, uh, just we just went live looking for an update. Uh, what's your location right now? Okay. Hey Ryan, uh, me and Frankie are in Whitesboro, Texas. Uh, just trying to keep an eye on this supercell to our west. It's gorgeous. We're trying to get east a little bit and get a little bit of better view for the stream and for some photos. So. Um. Okay, so really good uh, information here. Uh, Zach and Frankie are on the storm to the north, okay? So they're on the storm that just went through Gainesville that's moving up towards Gordonville and Pottsboro. So uh, when you see Zach and Frankie's feet up there and, and the storm that they're getting ready to show us, that's that storm. Then there's another one right next to it to the north and west of Denton, okay? Actually, there was a new severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued for Denton, um, and that's going to be uh, the one that Brian Allen is on, okay? And Zach and Frankie, do, they do have a visual on a, a very uh, good-looking storm. There, this is the this is a, this is the storm that's producing the very large hail uh, back here towards Whitesboro. It's getting ready to move into Whitesboro right now. In fact, uh, Zach and Frankie, their exact location is right around uh, Whitesboro, just to the south and west of there. Definitely a uh, good looking storm. Um, get an update for Brad too. Hey Brad, we're live on YouTube. Um, just wanted an update from you. What are you thinking about the setup today? Are you going to stay out there a little bit farther east and see if some supercells can pop out of that cap? Um, or are you going to just await the squall line? What's the game plan, man? Is there anybody else on? Uh, yeah, so right LSM? now we are playing the eastern play on east uh, in eastern Texas, northeast Texas. Um, my my feelings were about the setup to the west, north of Dallas, that those are mainly going to be hailers um, associated associated with an MCS, mainly a damaging wind threat, isolated tornado threat. I think your chance of seeing a significant, maybe even a violent tornado now that we're seeing the cap break um, in eastern Texas is much higher than it would be over there. Um, so we're gonna stay over here. Um, we will intercept that QLCS as it comes through later because it's it's not gonna stay super cellular the whole night. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just northeast of Tyler, Texas, watching these storms to the southwest of us. Um, they've kind of bubbled up, they've kind of fallen apart. That's They're trying to battle that cap and weaken that cap. Um, just looking right now, it looks like the uh, cloud tops, we're looking at about 30,000 feet. That's gone up about 10,000 feet in the past five minutes or so. So they're definitely growing, keeping a close eye on that. And then as soon as I see, see something, I'll let you guys know. Awesome. Okay. So Brad is uh, saying that the, uh, the, the cap uh, may have actually uh, broken uh, over here uh, where we really don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, the, if these storms start going nuts, uh, I'm telling y'all, especially the closer we get to about 6 or 7 p.m. tonight, th there's not a better environment that you could be in to produce tornadoes if you're a thunderstorm. So I, we're just going to hope that that doesn't happen. Um, and we, we do have a new tornado watch. New tornado watch. Let's all come together and do what we do best. We're the most active weather watching crew on the Internet. Let's all go to Twitter a new and retweet tornado this. Watch has been issued. National Weather Service Twitter gets no love. It's this got what forty two likes right now. Um, I, I'm going to retweet it, or you can just go to at NWS Tornado. Let's all share this so we can get out this vital information to the nine point eight million people who are in this watch. And this is a significant watch, not only because of a few tornadoes are likely, not just possible, likely. Uh, but scattered hail up to apple size is also likely. Uh, and then scattered wind gusts up to 75 miles per hour, likely. Uh, 9.8 million people in that. Uh, 3,293 schools, 209 hospitals. This includes Dallas, Fort Worth, Granbury, Waco, Tyler, Marshall, Harris, and Sherman in Texas. Um, and then it also includes a good chunk of southwestern Oklahoma, and the Texarkana area, and then a little bit of uh, southwestern Arkansas. 
This is going to go until 10 p.m. tonight, all right? So we're going to be in this. We're going to be watching the Dallas area for a while. So if you know anybody, anybody in Dallas, um, let them let them know let what's going on here, okay? And we're going to be live streaming and uh, keeping you all up to date throughout the evening. I mean, we started at 3 p.m. We could go to 3 a.m. theoretically um, if we wanted to. And uh, that that's the plan. If we're needed, we're going to be here. Uh, Carly, let's get... Let's get Bryce Shelton up. Is he out there? It, what what where, what area is he in? Okay, yeah. Let's let's get him up. I think that today is a day we need a a full roster. Uh, three of our storm chasers: um, Brad Arnold, uh, Chris Hall. And uh, eventually Bryce Shelton are over here in this area. And then we've got another group of storm chasers over here. So we've got uh, pretty wide coverage for you guys um, as we continue to watch these storms literally explode. Last night we watched a storm literally explode to almost 70,000 feet in the air down there south of San Antonio producing uh, you know softballs. We had reports of um, hailstones just falling through the roofs of homes. Like imagine you're cooking dinner and then there's a grapefruit made of ice that busts through the ceiling. Um, that was, that's what was happening last night <laughs> in some parts of uh, uh, areas south of San Antonio. And I'm afraid that that might be somewhat of what we could expect um, with some of these storms today if they actually uh, get to that kind of height. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. I'm here to tell you about north and west of Abilene, Texas. Uh, there, If you go up in height especially, you can see that rotation that's there in that QLCS. Uh, yeah, sorry about changing your vernacular, by the way. <laughs> linear <laughs> linear storms there. <laughs> so, yeah, um, not warned currently, no tornado warning on that, but it is going to pass right over Impact, Texas, on the northern side of the Abilene metro. Uh, I'm pretty concerned about this one, although it is a bit, a bit tough to tell on radar. I've double checked and I don't think it's side lobed. So I, I think this is legit rotation there. And I would not be surprised if there were a tornado warning issued for it. So y'all watch out on the northern edge of Abilene, just in case. All right. Thank you so much, meteorologist Andy Hill. He's going to be here with us throughout the day, um, making sure that we um, continue to Always uh, pay attention to, the, to, to the, the things that are happening outside of the current area that we are looking. Um, so, like, we'll, we'll spend a lot of time looking at Dallas today, but guess what? There's going to be other storms that pop up, just like over here near Ab Abilene, that we need to focus on. And uh, this is going to be a pretty a strong storm that comes through Abilene. Uh, but like Andy said, near the town of Impact, we do have a little bit of a uh, potential rotation signal he here coming out of the front of the storm. And that is, uh, I mean, we saw it last night multiple times. Uh, this can cause a quick tornado and they can cause damage. So if you are in that area, definitely watch out uh, and prepare. And in fact, if I'm anywhere near the Abilene area, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and get in my safe spot anyways, because I mean, well, you know, why not? What you got to lose? This is going to be a, uh, a strong storm regardless of if you get hit directly by a tornado or not. Big hail, strong winds. All that bad stuff uh, is coming right for you there in Abilene. Uh, do we have a rail fan in Abilene? I wonder if we do. We need access to the uh, the back end of that. Rail fan, Abilene. We need. We really need to set that up. Uh, probably not. It's not looking like it. It ain't looking like it. Uh, we've got a considerable severe thunderstorm warning now for Jones and Taylor County in Texas. We're going to see a lot of those tonight. We're going to see a lot of considerable severes. Um, uh, yeah, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. No live cameras in Abilene from what I can see, at least that I could show. Uh, 
Uh, but that's all right. That's all right. We got the radar here. And uh, that's all you need. If you're just now tuning in, this is live, continuous, uh, severe weather coverage. Uh, we are talking about um, big time severe thunderstorms happening in Texas right now. Uh, I mean, these things are, are kind of already going nuts. It's 4.05 p.m. We've got huge hail falling over here between Slidale and Bolivar, Texas. That's moving east. I, I, Denton, Texas, I, I know we got a lot of people in Denton that watch. I got some buddies out there in Denton. I think you guys are probably going to um, miss get missed by the big hail in, in this storm. But there's more coming. Okay, there's going to be more storms coming later this evening, uh, so definitely don't let your guard down. Uh, but you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, the considerable severe thunderstorm warning um, is up here a little bit farther to the north. This does include Durant in uh, Oklahoma. That's for two inch in diameter hail as this big storm continues to race off to the north and east. And this is the one right here. Um, if I can pull him up. Yeah, this is a live view from Zach and Frankie with Vortex chasing out there of the bottom of the storm that's producing the two inch in diameter hail right now. This is near Whitesboro, this live view here. Uh, Micah G, thank you so much. Vicky, thank you. Sarah, thanks for becoming a member. Happiness, uh, thank you for that. Um, Banana says, I'm in Denton, Texas, and thank you for keeping, and thank you. I'm keeping a friend in Arkansas up to date. Uh, you are a godsend. I appreciate that. We're just, we're just geeking out about the weather here. I'm glad you guys find it valuable. Um, Brittany, thank you so much for becoming a member. And Nancy says, Ryan, thanks for all you do. I'm 80 miles southeast of Abilene here in Brownwood. Thanks for the alert. Absolutely no problem. Make sure you stay tuned here and every single uh, new piece of information that comes out about this, uh, we will let you know. That's what we do here. Um, just fast, super fast, no filter information um, directly from the source. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and of course, my Twitter isn't working right again. Let me Let me get that fixed. There we go. Thank you guys so much for sharing this. There's so many, um, so many, so many shares out there on Twitter right now. Uh, this is a video that Will Moore just sent me um, of the storm uh, just to the east of Decatur, Texas. Wow, you can see how they, these things are growing fast, and they look very ominous here. Uh, Will, thank you so much for for sending that in, and I retweeted it. Yeah, there was a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, damage last night around uh, Alabama and uh, Tennessee. I think I, it wasn't terrible, but it was just pretty widespread. Oh, new NATO cast just dropped too. Check it. 10% hatched, pretty much in agreement with the Storm Prediction Center there. I think I'm just going to have to start using Microsoft Edge, as I hate it. It just works. It works better for uh, Twitter anyways on my end. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, <laughs> Chris Hall, Chris Hall is out there chasing uh, for us tonight in Texas, but he's, uh, he's already telling me, he's like, man, I'm probably going to go to Kentucky tonight because it, it does look like it's going to be pretty intense over here tomorrow. Um, uh, I don't want to say too much about it though, because these things, these forecast models have been a little bit finicky lately. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, uh, uh, the, the convective allowing models, especially there's so many little things that can change so much about like the actual, the reality of what happens versus the simulation. 
we don't want to get too hung up on them, but there's been a lot of consistency about a, a pretty significant severe weather event tomorrow in Kentucky and Tennessee. If you're just now tuning in, what you're seeing on the screen here, these two big blobs are supercell thunderstorms uh, that are just producing big old hail out here to the north of Denton, Texas. Bolivar and Sanger, you guys are next in line to get like seriously some uh, golf balls or, or larger coming through here. That's going to go over towards Hamming and Pilot Point. Uh, and then uh, our other storm up here near Whitesboro, uh, and that's going to go up towards Pottsboro. This one's also producing some really big hail right now. These are missing the Dallas-Fort Worth metro right now, but there will be more. Don't let your guard down. This is going to be a long evening of severe weather. And boy, I I'm telling you, I these storms over here are trying. The, the storms over here are trying um, to the east and southeast of Dallas as well. They're trying to, to do something. What are they going to do? I don't know. That's what we're here to do. We're, that's what we're here to figure out, right? We're now casting. We've been forecasting for a while. Now it's time to now cast. You can see <laughs> they're trying to grow upscale like they're they're trying their best but they're very quickly the tops of these storms are getting blown off to the north and east with the incredibly strong uh you know mid and upper level winds there might almost might be too much uh upper level flow to allow these things to organize we'll see hey I know why the lights ain't working. You turned them off. <laughs> I just remembered that. <laughs> Remember? Uh, try the, the, the row three, the one to the left. Yeah. All right. There we go, yeah. Yeah, try it. Try hitting it. Well, shoot. Hold on. I can at least get it to blue. No, this is definitely right. I can at least get it to blue. That You could have made a daggone TV show about the weather house here over the past week with all the problems we've had. Very dramatic. Considerable severe thunderstorm warning for Callahan, Jones, and Taylor counties in Texas. And we still got that uh, severe thunderstorm warning for Abilene, uh, and it is really starting to get into the town now. Uh, not seeing as much of the uh, rotation signature, but I believe we might have had something going on there near impact for a little while, and we'll probably see something else happen as this moves off to the east. Clyde, uh, Albany, uh, Breckenridge, uh, Eastland, you guys are all next in line to get some of these strong winds and potential tornadoes. Remember, this line is going to be interacting with a significant amount of um, uh, wind shear. And supercells or not, when you've got the, the kind of ingredients that we have tonight, uh, you, you get spin-up tornadoes uh, for certain uh, out of lines like this. So um, let's, look at the, let's look at the model really quick uh 18z show you the the future cast six p.m tonight it's what the radar could look like down here uh let me do south central yeah there we go um obviously we've got a big line of storms back here approaching dallas the the sails that we're trying to form out here are expected to just kind of congeal together into a mess in and around the uh, texarkana area and then we're going to see the line just really become a a powerhouse of a damaging wind system at, right as it moves through dallas so we got the chance for big hailers damaging wind um and then probably the continued chance for uh, potential tornadoes and large hail all the way up into uh, Arkansas as well around 11 p.m. tonight. That's where we'll be watching that. 
And then, you know, the farther uh, east this goes, especially as we get into the early morning hours on Friday, uh, things calm down a little bit, only to reignite in, in a very big way um, over here in the Ohio Valley. I mean, this is just going to be, once again, I, I can't even explain it, how, how much, uh, how high the ceiling is. Look at the significant tornado parameter. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so it'll, this is just going to be another thing that we have to now cast. I, the, the, the ingredients will be in place tomorrow for something significant to happen. There's a lot of failure modes. Uh, it's a conditional threat. Um, but yeah, that is, whew, that's something you don't see every day in Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, and basically what this big blob is, it's just an area of a, a very favorable uh, conditions for tornadoes. It doesn't mean that there's going to be tornadoes. It's just saying that if the right storm happens to pop up in there, um, it, it very well could happen. And it looks to me like that, that storm mode would be exactly what you would want if you were looking for tornadoes. So the only problem with them is, is if you're a storm chaser, especially like uh, if I go out there tomorrow, trying to track these things down, they're going to be moving fast, faster than you can drive. So you just got to kind of get in front of the right one and let it hit you. Um, Totem Wolf, thanks for gifting five memberships. That was very generous of you. Beverly, thanks for becoming a high risker. Cheryl, thank you. Dave says, I can help zap those tech issues so you can focus. Dave, you're hired. Come on down. Um, <laughs> hey, Ryan, I'm scared of tornadoes, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Is it looking less likely here tomorrow? I, I did forget to mention that. It does look, I think, less concerning for the Atlanta area, but here's the thing, right? This has changed a bunch already, um, and it'll change again. The the big uh, saving grace, I guess you can say, down there near Atlanta is the fact that there's this huge cap in place. There's a, there's a, a huge warm nose, uh, and it's just not allowing for the uh, the the forcing uh, to really push the uh, the. It's, there's not enough instability, and. If if that wasn't the case, we'd probably be talking about a big tornado outbreak tomorrow um, in in Georgia. So that we're actually lucky that that's happening. But with these kinds of events, there's always something that happens, right? Like a lot of times, we'll we'll be forecasting an event like this, and there's supposed to be a tornado outbreak, right? And then we get to the day of, and there's some unexpected morning convection, or there is a cap that comes up that wasn't modeled correctly. Tomorrow, we might wake up and there's some sort of something that w wasn't modeled or forecasted correctly that actually it, it goes to make the situation worse for an area like Atlanta. I don't know if that's going to happen, but this is the kind of system. It's moving so fast. It's so unique in its, uh, like everything about it that we can't just 100% rely on the forecast models. We've just got to know what the threats are and just watch it tomorrow until it passes and be ready for anything. But right now, it does look like the, the farther south you go, the more of that cap that's going to be in place, and the less we're going to have to worry about uh, potential tornadoes. Still going to be something that we have to watch. Um, I, but I would say from Chattanooga all the way up to Louisville, um, and draw a line from Nashville to Louisville to Cincinnati, down to Knoxville, back up to Nashville. In that box, that's where I would be watching out the hardest, I think, for potential tornadoes. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. I uh, have been watching this part of the line headed towards Albany, Texas, or uh, I hope they pronounce it Albany there, <laughs> but the different states thing, right? Uh, in Shackleford County, it's been ingesting surface vorticity quite efficiently there. 
Uh, I think it's going to be one of many possible rotations along the line you can take a look at, uh, but this one's been more consistent over time. What I think these are actually uh, sort of uh, similar to Gus natives, a type of land spout. I think that's why we're seeing them ahead of the line, uh, you know, where we could actually tell where something's happening because it would be in heavier rain. But this is in the lighter rain out in front. So I think it's actually a part of the the downdraft, you know, the gust front that's out in front of the storms that hits first. And then the rain comes after that. That gust front is actually rotating in some areas as it ingests this vorticity. So I don't know if the National Weather Service in this area will issue tornado warnings, but uh, for those... Um, gust nados so to speak but if they do then i bet albany would be placed under one fairly soon but um yeah I, I think we would probably wait for a more intense signature to warn a sort of a land spout like that one so gust nado is possible along this line headed towards albany texas okay thank you very much meteorologist andy hill you can see that uh, we've got a lot of strong winds coming in here uh, and then of course uh, we're watching for little inks little divots like this uh, and we'll, we'll probably, I'm telling y'all, at some point tonight, we're going to see multiple uh, spin-up tornadoes out of this line. Uh, but right now, at the beginning stages, it looks like uh, um, some of these might be a little bit more of gust NATO. Still could cause problems. Definitely something that we don't want to um, uh, kind of look over. Uh, so it, I'm very glad we've got Andy drawing our attention to that. Remember, this is moving fast, and it's going to be moving towards Fort Griffin, Albany, Moran, Putnam, and Baird in texas over the next little bit abilene you've been hit already by the hardest or the strongest part of the storm i think you're going to get one more round of really strong uh rain maybe some hail uh and then hopefully you'll be done for the day uh, as that moves on up and out of there we got a 1.5 inch in diameter hail report uh coming out of uh, up here north and west of sherman uh in texas so let's go check in on that uh yeah, this was just moments ago, uh, south of Gordonville. Uh, amateur radio, ping pong ball, uh, hail seven miles north of Whitesboro. So this place is getting covered up in hail. I've, I've also seen a bunch of videos of the road. It just looks like it's uh, like it's snowed. We've had a little bit of a hail blizzard in some of these places. Uh, so that's, that's what's happening right now uh, with um, these storms. And I'm thinking that this next one, is probably going to go right towards Sherman. I know we've got I've got some uh, people that watch in Sherman. Um, I, I remember a lot of the comments that I see, and I, and I know that we've got a significant amount of people uh, in Sherman. So you guys get ready uh, as this uh, big storm is coming right for you here. There's two supercells that are really causing uh, most of the problems right now, and they are north of Dallas. We are watching several um, cells. They're not super yet. Um, uh, but we're watching several cells out here in East Texas uh, that are trying to do something, and, and Brad Arnold is keeping an eye on those as well. You look at this one here near Gladewater. Uh, you can see what's happening here. This is the bottom of the storm. It's sucking in air, right? As the air goes up in the air, the, <laughs> the, the low-level jet it just kind of swipes everything this way, and that's actually what you look for in the beginning stages of, of storms like this uh, if the, you think they're going to potentially produce tornadoes. However, these storms are having, they're, they're struggling. They're, they're not having the best time uh, becoming big, uh, nasty thunderstorms. And sometimes that's what you need uh, in order to actually get a tornado. So I'm watching this storm here near Gladewater. I'm watching all these storms, actually, because they're curving uh, with height. And, and they are in an atmosphere that could produce tornadoes. Uh, but right now, everything's still looking aight, okay? There's nothing to to kind of uh, hit the, the panic button about just yet. Just yet. Uh, do you see any rotation heading uh, to Durant in Oklahoma? Uh, there's definitely some rotation in that storm that's uh, heading up towards Durant in Oklahoma, but it's broad and it's not the kind of rotation that we look for to, uh, to say that there's a tornado there. Now, that could change. Um, but right now, this is mostly a big hail and wind problem for you over there in Durant as the storm moves in. It's a considerable severe thunderstorm. K Webb, thank you. Uh, DC, thank you. Shelby says, do you think Central Kentucky could end up in a moderate risk tomorrow? It definitely could happen. I have no idea. Like, there's um, 
I, I don't know what to say. It, it definitely could happen if for whatever reason the Storm Prediction Center upgrades the tornado risk to a 15% or if they upgrade the uh, wind or hail risk to 45%. Uh, it definitely could happen. I don't know, though. I don't know. Um, uh, the, th- the thing that I always try to say when people ask questions like this is it doesn't really matter. Um, we, you just need to know that significant severe weather is on the way, whether it's an enhanced or moderate, you need to pay attention and, uh, have some way of getting warnings, right? That's the most important thing. Have some way of getting adequate warnings, uh, to your device, or hopefully you have a NOAA weather radio. I know a lot of you guys have got them from me. Uh, we we're shipping them things out left and right. Um, but if you don't have one, I mean, you can get one at Walgreens, I think. And, um, th- those things are, are really nice and y- you can always just watch me and I'll try to keep you as updated as possible. Storm chaser five, seven, five has been a member for 11 months. Uh, let's see. Do you think Statesboro will get bad weather tomorrow? Uh, can you do a little vid on Pembroke? Um, I think I probably will do an extra video tomorrow before I head out for the storm chase. Um, but as of right now, it looks like Statesboro is, is in the zone that could receive severe weather, but it's hard to tell how much right now it's hard to say, I'm sorry. Um, uh, just, it's another one of those things we're going to now cast tomorrow and we want to be prepared, not scared. And, um, I don't want to say like with any confidence what's going to happen tomorrow because if I'm even wrong a little bit, um, you might let your guard down. Uh, do you think uh, the enhanced risk tomorrow will be more, moved north into Ohio? It could be nudged a little bit north, but I actually think that if it's going to be changed much at all, it'll be expanded a little bit farther to the south and east, actually. Uh, Durant, a Sherman native, thanks for all you do, brother. You saved our tails last year watching closely, and it's getting dark. David. Thank you so much for the uh, generous super chat. Um, I'm glad I, I could keep you updated. Spencer Hart is also out there, gift and memberships. Y'all are just all over it today. I really do appreciate all the support. And I'm sure uh, all the gifted members appreciate it as well. If you're just now tuning in, we are doing um, nonstop uh, multi-day severe weather coverage here. Well, we stopped to sleep, but that's about it. Um, And today is day two out of three. We've got two big supercell thunderstorms out here uh, north of Dallas producing hail. Um, And we're getting ready to see some big hail in Collinsville. If you live in Collinsville, uh, you guys need to uh, essentially get to shelter now. Uh, because this is going to be some one inch in diameter hail at least could be up to two inches in diameter. That's going to go towards Sherman. Um, You guys are, it's starting to rain and it looks like there's a big storm happening right now in Sherman. That's nothing compared to what's going to happen when this big supercell moves through. That's also probably going to hit Denison as well. All right. Uh, This is all North of Dallas. Uh, The DFW Metro has been lucky so far today, not having to deal with any of this. That's going to change because look out to the west. See that big bad boy right there? That's coming right for you in Dallas, and there is no escaping it. This line of storms will move through the metro tonight, and as it does so, it'll be interacting with a lot of wind shear. It'll be interacting with a lot of uh, just significant severe weather parameters that are going to lead to damaging winds, hail, and maybe even a couple of tornadoes. If we get a tornado today in the right spot, it's probably going to be strong um, if it's not just a spin up, right? If we actually get a, a rooted up sail or a part of a line that's actually taking full advantage of the environment, um, it's going to be a strong tornado. Uh, so we've got to be ready for that. Go check back in on these storms one by one. We do have the severe thunderstorm warning for Abilene. I think the the worst of it is over for you. Now, the really strong part is going to be moving up towards Albany in um, uh, uh, Texas, sorry, <laughs> and then uh, Baird and Putnam yeah, along I-20 there. 
and that's going to be um, that's going to be what we're dealing with uh, over the next little bit over here. Right now, we're looking at seventy mile per hour winds moving into Albany with one inch in diameter hail. So get ready, batten down the hatches. That's going to be a a wild storm for you as it's only going to get stronger on its approach. Um, and then. Of course, back here towards uh, Sherman and Denison, we're still watching these supercells approach you. I want to um, I want to show you this. There's something else here that I can show you on this. I just don't know. I don't know how to get to it. MRMS. Aha. Okay. Yeah, so we can actually kind of look into the storm here and estimate the hail size. Looks like two inch in diameter hail uh, right in through here. So that that's what's moving up towards Collinsville and uh, South Maid right now. And four hour hail. Okay, this is another thing that we can do. Uh, I can show you the hail tracks. So this is where the, the hail has fallen today. Um, and uh, I, I, I just kicked myself in the butt because I knew that we could have done this last night and it probably would have been a, a very good way to illustrate the, the path of that storm. I forgot we could do it, so I wanted <laughs> to remind myself. Uh, this is the, the hail uh, path today for that storm, and we're going to keep up with this as well um, as we go forward. And it's only going to get bigger. We're only going to see more hail uh, as we go uh, throughout the rest of the evening, those storms are going to get stronger up there around the Red River. So Sherman and Denison, get ready. Now, let's go back to single site radar. Let's go check on our storms that Brad um, is waiting on over here. And, buddy, these are just having the hardest time ever. They are rotating. Look, look at the little, you see the little inflow blips here? You see how the greens get really bright on the bottom of every single one of these storms? these storms want in every way to be monsters um, and, and they are in a perfect environment uh, outside of um, the, the fact that they're, they're just not getting strong enough right now. They're not um, taking full advantage of all of the parameters uh, in place out there. So that's good news, but we're watching this closely because actually this is more convection than I believe what was modeled, at least from what we were looking at yesterday, right? So the cap is being broken to some extent. We'll see what happens, though, okay? Um, and we'll, we'll keep track of this because this, this might cause a, a problem as these storms get up there closer to Dangerfield, Lone Star, New Boston, and Texarkana. problem might be my IFTTT. -T -T. I don't that I don't have the ability to start or stop that. If that's a problem, then it's on their end. Um here. Yeah, I'm not I'm not able to change any other colors. I don't, can we restart Phillips? Maybe. Well, no, it's definitely not Philips Hue because I'm I'm able to control the lights with my phone, so they're fine. It's definitely the if then then that trigger. We'll see if there's something that I can do on here. Date. Connect. Okay, I refreshed it. And nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I It would probably take some more investigative work on my end to figure that out. Just keep trying it. It won't, it might just randomly start working like it does sometimes. Weather in Chicago tomorrow, still looking for some snow. Still looking out for some snow uh, up there. Uh, that's changing too, as far as the, the snow forecast goes. It looks like there's going to be a little bit more warm air that the uh, storm has to overcome. 
But I, I still believe that we're going to have a pretty good uh, or significant snowstorm in and around the Chicago area uh, with maybe more than six inches of snow overall by the time it's said and done. All right, we just got a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning for 1.5 inch in diameter hail and 60 mile an hour winds. That's for the storm coming into Sherman. Y'all get ready for this one. The big one. Coming right for you. Uh, I don't think we have a visual on it anymore. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to uh, play along, send uh, pictures, videos, reports, whatever you want to do uh, to me, uh, you can do that on Twitter, at Ryan Hall, y'all. And we'll share that here on the air. And also, make sure you tag your weather service as well. Uh, figure out what your local office is and just tag them whenever you send that stuff in. I really appreciate y'all sending um, anything in, really, even just tagging me in uh, newsworthy stuff. Yeah, at Ryan Hall, y'all. Uh, what is your prediction for the Waco to Temple, Texas area? I saw your forecast and it looks spicy, but the north, northeast storm. So from the Waco um, to Temple, Texas area, let's see, that is a little bit uh, to the south of where the, the most intense storms are going to happen tonight. Definitely going to be a chance of some hailers. Maybe even a couple uh, tornadoes um, throughout the the evening with these storms as they come through. But I think your your chance is much less than um, up there a little bit farther to your north and east, like around Dallas up through Texarkana. Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing if we're in Waco, we're watching this line of storms. After this gets by us, we're we're OK. All right. So just keep that in mind. Once this line of storms moves through um, it's, we're done. We're done with the severe weather. All right. Um, Andy, if you don't care to give me a couple, uh, uh, minutes here, I, I do have to take a quick break. You got, you got it. Yep. I'm here, Ryan. All right. Thank you, Andy guys. I'll be right back. Okay. How do y'all? Meteorologist Andy here once again. <clears throat> My lights aren't working today, so you may see less of me until, you know, I have to relay the most uh, pertinent information that's happening right then and there. But I might not be able to beat the tornado warnings today like you guys are super used to because we have to we have to go through a couple steps now to get me on there. Unless I'm just like, Ryan, hush, it's time for me to tell you something. Uh, so I'll do that if I have to. I promise. Anyways, the line is now passing through Albany, Texas. That is not Abilene, Texas, by the way, guys. Albany is a different town than Abilene, Texas. Make sure you know that. That's very important. Uh, so now they're getting wind and hail in this severe thunderstorm, one for 70 mile an hour winds, and also up to one inch in diameter hail. Uh, it's probably pretty nasty out there. But yeah, that thing, like Ryan said, is just going to move east along the I-20 corridor all the way into Dallas-Fort Worth. I don't think it's going to stop. I don't really see anything that shows me it's going to weaken uh, until, you know, well into the night. And I know it's going to be there, you know, probably around sunset into the evening hours is what I expect. So get ready for a light show and get ready for a lot of that stuff to come your way. I still think there's a risk for gust tornadoes, little gusty guys on the front of the um, that gust front. Rather, you know, when you're outside, if you've ever been in a line of storms, you step outside and suddenly it gets real windy, but it's not raining yet. Right. That's that gust front. And it's possible to even get little, you know, what would look like a dust devil on the front of those. So I think this line carries that risk for a little while now as we see surface vorticity ingested into it. Uh, so something to watch out for, for sure. If any stronger signatures show up, I'll be sure to relay those. Uh, as for our East Texas risk, I'm waiting for stuff to start up there. Um, 
you know, we've got storms. They may be producing a couple flashes of lightning over there near um, Mineola areas around Tyler, Texas as well, eventually. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting for those to actually, you know, produce some severe quantities, some severe levels of uh, uh, output here. But cer certainly right now, they're not severe warned for a reason. I trust the National Weather Service to uh, severe warn those once they meet criteria. So we're watching those for you, Tyler, Longview, Texas, of course, Mount Pleasant, all in that area uh, to within the tornado watch or just south of it uh, currently ongoing. So eyes over there. Very good. Okay. And then, of course, we've got our monster supercell hail storms up here. Much less of a tornado risk with that. And, you know, what's kind of curious north of Denton there on the map, we're not seeing a lot of large hail reports. And that's because when you see greater returns on, on our uh, radar here, that does not mean or it doesn't correlate one to one with larger hail. It could also just be a hail blizzard. You know, what the radar is showing us is the energy of the beams bouncing off of objects. So if there's a lot of tiny pebbles of hail passing through, that's also a lot of energy, just, you know, maybe as much as a, a three inch hailstone would give out. So a lot of one inch hail uh, reported here, you know, west of Collinsville as the cell moves through. Uh, so that's what I'm seeing there. More like a hail blizzard than a, than a you know, an apple size hailstone hailstone falling right now there but no guarantees that could change yeah paris texas you guys will get in on this line of storms eventually if you don't meet if you don't meet hands with a, a rogue supercell out in front here you guys will definitely get some severe weather from the line that passes through into the evening hours so that's there for you guys we'll be sure to keep you up on that All right. What is Ryan fixing over there, guys? What is taking him so long? He's got all sorts of stuff messed up. I can't even tur turn my light screen today. So no, there is no noteworthy like tornadic uh, hook that's showing up on here. If you see what looks like a suspicious storm shape, it's more than likely just how it's formed. It's altering its local environment. Uh, the hail cools the environment quite a lot, so it can turn into some funky shapes, but um, we're looking for more than that to tell you that there's actually a tornado risk with that cell in particular. Shreveport, eventually those st those storms are going to meet you along the I-20 corridor. I'm sure that you'll at least see something, if not overhead, it, you'll see it in the distance as we get into the night. All right, very good, Ryan. Have you fixed it? Have you fixed everything? No. But I am back, <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue to try, but uh, I don't think it's a me problem. I think this is uh, good old, the main service there, so we just got to wait on them and see what happens next. Uh, but um, uh, there are a couple things uh, that we still need to fix. Uh, by the way, if you guys didn't know, uh, we, we, we had a lot of problems yesterday. Uh, we solved them. We'll probably have some problems today. We're going to solve them. And we're just kind of building back up to where we were. Ryan, you copy. Who was that? Ryan, do you copy? Yeah, go ahead, Zach. World they got here, son. I was just going to give you a heads up. We're right up next to the supercell north of Tioga, Texas. Had an interesting view on it. Some big hail just to our west. We're trying to get out of its way. Yeah, this is a live view of the supercell that's uh, moving north of Gunter right now uh, and then moving towards Sherman. Um, and man, it's. <laughs> <laughs> they they are probably going to get hit by that hail. I don't know how they're going to get out of its way. But, uh, yeah, this is the one that's uh, getting ready to slam into Dorchester. That, that's where Zach and Frankie are right now, pretty much, in Dorchester, um, Texas, as this uh, monster hailer uh, is moving right towards them. Looks like they are on um, Highway 289 going northbound. 
Um, they're probably going to get right in the hail here. Oh, okay. They're turning right. They're turning right into the, the 902, Highway 902. <laughs> so they're getting the heck out of Dodge um, to try to avoid some of the larger hail here that's been falling with this. And there has been some large hail. New considerable severe. Man, we've got a bunch of considerable severe thunderstorm warnings now. Um, uh, all in Texas, pretty much. All in Texas, pretty much. And we've got the one that, uh, um, well, the one for Durant now is no longer considerable. That's as good as it's going to get. I don't want to say anything because everybody watching will not be able to not see it. If I do. Um, all right. Weather. <laughs> oh, we've got a bunch of new severe thunderstorm mornings popping up down here south of Abilene, by the way. Uh, Albany just took the hit from the uh, the strong line of thunderstorms, uh, and we've got Coleman now and Cross Plains under a severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile an hour winds and 1.25 inch in diameter hail. Hey, we got a considerable severe thunderstorm warning down here to the south for 70 mile per hour winds. That includes Paint Rock. So there you go. Big hailers starting to come together as this huge line of storms is setting its sights on Dallas. Dallas, this is, this is coming right for you. How many people do we have watching right now in the DFW area? Let me know in the uh, chat. Uh, here's a look from Chase. This was the storm that caused the supposed tornado in Columbus, Ohio uh, on Monday. Hey, I probably drove by your house. I was out there chasing that. Uh, let's see here. Janine, I think I'm saying that right. Sent this in. Says, uh, just watch this roll by here in Texas. Thanks for doing what you do. Well, thank you for that. And buddy, we've got a bunch of people, <laughs> a whole bunch of people from uh, the Dallas area watching right now. Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to we're gonna be together for a while tonight. Strap in. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button so the algorithm will put us in front of more people that need this information. And don't forget to share us out there as well on social media. Facebook is a great one. TikTok, Instagram. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Just hit the like button if you don't want to do any of it, though. Um, let's see here. I just want to hear a weather person pronounce Nevada, Nevada correctly. Uh, thanks for the coverage. I, I, think that, um, I think that I always say it wrong. But I, I, I've just gotten into this pattern where I say both, so I can never be wrong. Uh, everyone be prepared, not scared. Ryan and team keep up the good work. Looks like all we're getting is a ton of rain here in Dayton, Ohio tomorrow. Yeah, that's about right. Don't let your guard down that Dayton, Ohio is far enough south to maybe get a stronger wind gust. How bad are you expecting it to get in Tyler, Texas later? Um, not good. It's not going to be good, uh, but I wouldn't say that's going to be really bad. Just Make sure you have a way of getting weather warnings. There's going to be some very strong winds uh, and possibly some tornadoes. Um, Anthony says our NBC station in Dallas has S-band radar. Is that good? Uh, what is the tornado and hail threat for Irving, Texas? And what is the time frame? Um, first of all, that is, oh, that is good. Um, more than likely, what they're doing is using a combination of that and the main radar from the National Weather Service. Uh, so you, you absolutely can um, 
rely on that um, if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And then what is the tornado and hail threat in Texas looking like or Irving, Texas? Well, first of all, where? <laughs> Irving, Texas. Oh, you mean Dallas. Um, it's so it's pretty high, actually. It, it's incredibly high. Um, in um, in Dallas tonight, so we've got a, a big time hail threat, mostly wind second, and then um, well, actually now probably wind mostly hail, and then we've got a tornado threat. All of them are much higher than usual. Uh, the tornado threat being the least likely problem causer out of all three of those, but. Thank you very much for the incredibly generous super chat there. Um, it's Nevada. I know. That's what I said. Nevada, Nevada. Lynn, thank you for becoming a member. Charlie, thank you. Uh, go Cowboys, I guess. Is Gainesville, Texas going to get hit more? Yes. So I, I want to let you guys know we, we've had a huge area that's already gotten some hail, right? You, you're like, wow, that was a big storm, Ryan. Thanks for letting us know. We're going to go have a picnic now. No, it's not time for a picnic yet because there's another round coming. All right. These big hailers up here are the appetizer, um, the main course. Well, probably the main course uh, as far as winds go. Uh, it's still back here to the west, gaining strength right now. This is going to come through uh, pretty quick over the next couple of hours. And once this gets past you, then you can have your picnic. Now, it's going to be muddy. There might be some tree damage. But you can have a picnic. And uh, I've said it once, I'll say, I'll say it a mil million times, we have the, the largest and most diverse audience of any weather communicator on earth. Um, if you count all of the dogs and the cats and the bunny rabbits that are watching tonight, um, I, I think we have well over probably a million people watching right now. Look, I, right there, oh, okay, that's the same. I thought there was another rabbit. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, Melina, thanks for sending that in. Uh, considerable severe thunderstorm warning just coming through for Coleman County and Reynolds County in Texas. Let's run through these, shall we? Uh, this one down here is for 70 mile an hour winds. The one moving into paint rock. Uh, Coleman and Cross Plains, you're getting ready to get in on some 1.25 inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds. Really the strongest storm right now out of all of these uh, in the line is getting ready to go through Breckenridge, Texas within the next couple of minutes. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to bring some really strong wind gusts on the front side. You're going to get some hail, some strong winds, and then you're going to get some stronger winds on the back side. And then it'll be pretty much over for you there. Uh, back here in Abilene, we actually got some damage reports coming in. Um, trees blown over onto power lines in Abilene near the intersection of uh, Tradeway Avenue. Uh, this caused a power outage. And then um, back here, just a little bit north of town, an 18-wheeler tipped over onto a pickup truck from high winds on Highway 277. So yeah, big time uh, wind damage happening back here towards Abilene, and that's probably what's coming for you at, 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 to some extent over here near Breckenridge. Get ready uh, for this very dangerous storm. Some hail in that too. Yep, you can send in uh, pictures and uh, videos of what you've got going on. 
uh, as far as uh, weather report goes uh, to Ryan Hall on Twitter, at Ryan Hall, y'all. I've got Instagram, Facebook under the same name, too. Just got a better chance of me seeing it uh, if you do Twitter. It's just it's my platform of choice here. For this format. Annette, welcome to being a member. Uh, Dean Dima, Dean Demater, uh, my uncle wanted me to give this to you. He said he knows it's not much, but he loved your content. Uh, he passed away a few weeks ago. Uh, talked about you a lot. Thanks for giving him joy, Ryan. Uh, Dean, thank you for that. You didn't have to do that. And um, uh, my condolences. Sorry to hear that. But uh, really appreciate your support. And um, I'm glad... We can give them uh, some some joy. I'm glad that once again, there's so many people who find a uh, value in, in what we're doing here because it's just like I just I love sitting here talking about the weather. Uh, Kirsten, I think uh, says Red Oak, Texas, just over the line uh, south of Dallas, which is in Ellis County. Yep, you are under the the threat for some significant severe weather tonight. Uh, you got. You, I think Dallas has, for the most part, missed the first round of, of big hailer uh, supercells, uh, but there's no missing uh, what's coming next, okay? This big line of storms that's going to bring potentially hurricane force winds in and uh, some more hail and maybe even um, tornadoes. So that's what we're going to be watching in Dallas over the next several hours. Uh, Cass says to our favorite weather guy, y'all would not believe how bad it was in Valley View, Texas. Wow. Now there's your hail, hail blizzard um, from Cass. That was in Valley View. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. That, so that's the storm that's going through Sherman right now. In Sherman right now, you're probably seeing uh, pretty similar uh, conditions to this. Look at that, Hillcore, right over downtown Sherman. Nevada. <laughs> Ryan, it's Nevada. Oh my God. Nevada. <laughs> Ryan, it's Nevada. <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> Ryan, it's Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> How was I saying it? No, I said Nevada, Nevada, right? Nevada, Nevada. I, I, I said it right. I don't know what you're saying. No, I get it. No, I think what, what happened one time, it was, uh, I say, I, I've said it wrong once, and then somebody said, no, Ryan, it's N-A-V-A-H-D-A. -A -A. And I said, that's weird, Nevada? Because that's how that seems like you would spell that. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just going to say Nevada, Nevada from now on. That way I'm never wrong. <laughs> Thanks for making that video and teaching me. So I, I appreciate it. I am from uh, rural Kentucky, you know. Dang. None. <laughs> I thought I had a lot of stuff. <laughs> what is this? Ah. Oh. Yeah, you, you, you're monitoring the situation. If anybody's monitoring the situation, it's Robert Vermillion. 
Thanks for sending that in. This is in Sanger or Sanger, uh, Texas earlier. Very strong winds there from one up Definitive Studios. So this is the storm. This is the storm also that's going through uh, Sherman right now. Ryan here in Texas, we call it Nevada, Texas. Ryan here in Texas, we call it Nevada. A new tornado Texas? warning has been Ryan. issued. I'm just going to call it Nevada, Nevada, Nevada from now on, I guess. Okay, we have our first tornado warning of the night. <laughs> we got a little distracted there by pronouncing words, but let's refocus and uh, take a look at our newest tornado warning uh, that is um, out now uh, in portions uh, over here of Texas near Breckenridge. We've been talking about this for a while now, uh, but we finally have a tornado warning here as we've got convergence on the front side right here to the south of town and Breckenridge, Kiddo, um, and the this highway between Brad and Breckenridge are included in this uh, tornado warning. So you want to take shelter now. Um, as uh, this will be the kind of tornado that uh, potentially um, is, is just very fast, right? If you're in uh, Caddo, uh, some, some states call it Caddo, some, some states call it Caddo. If you're in this area, um, uh, you got to get to shelter now. This is going to, uh, if this is producing a tornado, it's going to be there before you know it. Uh, also, some of the smaller places in between that and where it is right now uh, includes uh, Highway 207 uh, and then also the uh, Highway 180 there. There seems to be not a lot of um, stuff uh, where this is right now, so that's great news. But if it makes it up there towards the uh, Caddo area, definitely going to cause some problems, and we're going to keep you updated on that. This, I think what we just saw was the very beginning stages of uh, a long night of stuff like this happening, okay? We're going to have spin-up tornadoes probably throughout the night along this line, and we're going to be tracking them intricately on this stream, okay? Oh, wow. Now my videos aren't even working on Microsoft Edge. Just kidding. Wow, here's some larger hail. This is from James Casey in Tioga, Texas. Whoa. I can't tell from the resolution of the video, but it looks like golf balls, if not a little bit larger. That's the storm. I don't know. I don't know which storm that is. Hold on. Okay, yeah, that's the storm that's going through Sherman right now. And it's on its way to Yarnaby and Sowell's Bluff. All right, I'll turn that off. 
and Denison. Uh, Denison, you're next in line. It looks like a lot of the, the bigger hailstones, though, are going to go to your south and west. So Terrace, Bona, Grover, um, Ambrose, Kemp, Hendricks, uh, right along the Red River there. Uh, that's where some of the biggest hail is going to fall as the storm's moving this way. And then we've got this tornado warning out here for Breckenridge. Take shelter if you're in Stevens County in Texas. This is a dangerous storm. The National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for um, eastern Stevens County and north central Texas until 4.30 p.m. Central. Radar indicated rotation. Flying debris will be da dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Uh, tree damage is likely. You got tornado sirens in Durant. That's probably due to the higher level um, severe thunderstorm warning. I don't think that we've got a tornado threat out there right now. Brian Allen, our storm chaser, uh, who has given us a feed from up here near Sherman, Texas. Uh, it, it, well, he was near Denton, Texas, sorry, is going to pop down to the south and west uh, to give us coverage on this line of storms that's now approaching uh, Dallas from the west. Uh, here is a picture of that storm um, from Aubrey, Texas, that rolled into Sherman. Nasty looking thing. I don't know if we've gotten a lot of uh, reports out of Sherman yet, but I'm assuming that pretty significant hail. Yeah, there's a 1.7 inch in diameter report. Golf ball hail at intersection of U.S. Highway 75 and State Highway 56 in Sherman. That's one of the bigger reports that I think we've seen so far. Looks like this hail's fallen as a, uh, it's, it's a lot of it is falling rather than, uh, you know, it's very big or whatever. Looks like a new handoff. Looks like a new area of uh, rotation might be trying to pop out here of this line. On the southern side of the warning, um, near, uh, near necessity. And man, I, okay, so I'm starting to see some of the first videos from Sherman. <laughs> and yeah, they definitely got, they definitely got the hail. Ah. Guys, if you have any videos or pictures you want to send to me, at Ryan Hall, y'all, on Twitter. Uh, this is Burleson, Texas. I mean, just look at the river. I gotta change this. I mean, just look at the river of hail there. It looks like it snowed. And that's from William the Butcher Pool. New tornado warning has been we got issued. a new tornado warning for Bryan County, Oklahoma. Here we go. My goodness. Uh, 
That actually includes Durant. Let's inspect. Did we get a report? Okay, you can see that there's some rotation here in this uh, huge radar hole. Good news, I think we are getting a radar in Durant uh, at some point in the near future, but um, we don't have one now. <laughs> so we have a huge uh, radar hole here. It's hard for me to tell you anything more about this storm other than there is some rotation over Durant, Oklahoma. Um, that's going to be mo moving up towards uh, uh, Caddo, Pritchard, uh, Bocchio, or Bocchito, and Blue over the next little bit. Uh, you've got to take shelter. This, this will expire in 35 minutes, uh, but there's going to be strong winds and large hail with this storm regardless of whether or not there's a tornado. So make sure you take shelter now. We don't have uh, any of our storm chasers on that tornado worn storm, but we will have multiple storm chasers on the line that's producing it before it gets into Fort Worth. Um, so that's good news. We should have eyes on the storm as it moves into Fort Worth. Uh, yeah, the Durant radar is being built uh, on a water tower. Construction begins Monday and it's expected to be completed in mid March. Looks like we're up on the wall here at Rose City Emergency Media. Very nice setup that you guys got there. Uh, and we are continuing to watch these storms a little bit off to the east here. Uh, we do have some rotating thunderstorms trying to happen uh, around Texarkana. We got Storm Chaser Brett Adair up there, uh, and we've got Storm Chaser Brad Arnold and Chris Hall out here as well, keeping an eye on these storms. So far, they've been pretty tame. The Probably the, the most damaging storms that we've seen so far today uh, have moved uh, just to the north and west of Dallas. Uh, now they're moving into Oklahoma. We got a tornado warning on one of them uh, out here near um, Durant in Oklahoma. And then we just had a lot of hail fall in the Sherman area. That storm's going to move off towards Yarnaby and Sal's Bluff and Ravina and Ridings in Texas right along the uh, Rio Grande. Um, or the Red River, sorry, uh, as we go uh, over the next little bit. So here's another video from um, uh, Sherman. Uh, this is on the Texoma Parkway, and this is from Ann. Look at that. Big time hail for sure. Uh, where is Nick? Yeah, I see that he's in Gunter, Texas. Is that, do you know what storm he's on?
Okay. Al Texas. Okay, so he's okay. I thought that maybe he was on that line of storms, but he's not. Okay. All right. Just if we run out of, you know, chasers, um, or if we have a chaser that's in a, an area that's not servicing us, just try to keep up with the geography of what we're looking at and try to keep up with the, but just try to put up something that works. Uh, right now, guys, we've got uh, Bryan County and uh, in, in Oklahoma and Stevens County in Texas under uh, tornado warnings. Other than that, we've got a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna sit down for 30 minutes or so. I'll see you guys down there. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I love my new desk. <clears throat> This is still a little bit out of from Dallas. Uh, we're not. Uh, this isn't in Dallas yet. I know we got a lot of people watching from that area. Man, the the hail in Sherman was nuts. Absolutely nuts. My in-law's house in Sherman, Texas. There's also a lot of flash flooding going on now in the Sherman area from what I can tell because not only did we get all of this hail, but we got a ton of rain at the same time. So now that we've got the runoff from the rain and the melting hail kind of like compiling the uh, total, uh, you know, amount of water that's trying to rush through. And uh, that's leading to some flash flooding issues. That's going to continue to be a problem for everybody that gets hit by these storms. Um, uh, past, uh, you know, uh, Sherman even over here towards Yarnaby. Aylwood, Wade, Utica, uh, and of course our tornado worn storm is still heading up there towards Pritchard, um, and that's probably going to cause some of the same problems with the big hail, so y'all get ready for that, okay? Back over here to our easternmost storm, still looking at these things, trying to spin. I mean, they are. Look at this. Look at that. Would you just look at it? It's spinning. That one's spinning. This one is spinning. This one is spinning. Ooh, that one's spinning a little bit harder now. I don't know, man. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I don't want to say too much else about it. Like, well, these are going to try to produce tornadoes. Let's hope that they don't. But, man, are they they're ready to if they wanted to. Uh, we got Storm Chaser Brad Arnold here in the Radar Omega app. It's way just southeast of Sulphur Springs, Texas. It's way just southeast of Sulphur Springs. I don't. I wish I could turn his audio off, because I know it's loud. Um, but you guys could look at him in your uh, in your app too, um, Radar Omega app. But anyways, he's out here looking at these storms. Uh, let's ask him. Let's ask him what's up. Hey, Brad. Just looking for an update. We're kind of inspecting some of these storms around you on radar. They're definitely turning, man. But uh, having a little bit of a hard time uh, actualizing or maturing. Uh, you, what is your thoughts on what's going on out there right now? Yeah, Ryan, I'm thinking that they're still battling a, battling a little bit of a cap. Um, what I am noticing on uh, the storm that we're on right now looks very healthy. It, uh, visually, it looks really good. It's far away from the radar, though. Uh, we're just uh, coming to the city of Winsboro in t uh, Texas. Looking off the Shreveport radar, 
I mean, you've got gate to gate shear there. It's shooting up well into the storm, but it's 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 rotating uh, significantly um, up in the atmosphere, up in the updraft. Um, so we're going to stick with this one for a little while. We're going to head towards Pearly, uh, maybe head up a little northwest into it, but kind of battling a little bit of a capping issue to get these updrafts really going. Plus, we're battling radar. There's just no radar around here to be able to get um, a good view of the storm uh, with the radar. Okay, so that was the latest from Storm Chaser Brad Arnold. Uh, he's seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. These storms are trying to turn. They're trying to produce uh, tornadoes. I mean, they, they are. Um, but will they? That's what we're here to find out. And that's what Brad's down there to try to help us uh, determine as these go farther on off to the north and east. Um, let's see here. Still big hail producers up here in Oklahoma and Texas. We got that tornado warning for Bryan County, Oklahoma, y'all stay sheltered. Um, and let's check in on our tornado warning actually over here towards Breckenridge. Now it's past y'all in Breckenridge. In fact, the storm is pretty much out of the warning box at this point. Uh, so uh, that'll be allowed to expire here pretty soon. It'll be interesting to see if they issue a new warning for Brad and Metcalf Gap. But um, I, I, it's honestly going to be up to them. There's going to be a lot of areas that could cause spin up tornadoes on the front side of this and maybe we'll see a precautionary warning issued for that otherwise we might just see another big blanket considerable severe thunderstorm warning for 70 mile an hour winds as this storm continues to push to the east and honestly the southern side of this storm is really ramping up as well i don't think that uh, it was necessary necessarily modeled to get this intense this far south uh, where we have uh, severe thunderstorm warnings as far south as Menard and Eden, Texas. We'll probably see them as far south as Junction at some point. I mean, I mean, if this line keeps it up, it'll go through Austin, you know? So that's a pretty far south extension of our line. Still thinking that the most intense part of it's going to be right up here, the part that goes through Dallas a little bit later today. Uh, Smokey Russell, thank you so much for becoming a member, man. Landon says, uh, hello from Central Illinois. It's a beautiful 53 degrees. Hope everyone down south will be safe. Thank you, Ryan, for all you do. Landon, thank you for that. Wes says, do you need eyes on the ground in Louisville in southern Indiana on Friday? We can do it. I can give you my phone number. Wes, I 100% would love to hear what you have to say. Um, the best way to get that through to me is honestly going to be through Twitter. I mean, that's just, it's the best way that I'm going to actually see it. So tweet, tweet me at Ryan Hall, y'all. Tweet me at Ryan Hall, y'all. Uh, Abigail says, I'm watching from South Dakota with my two-week-old daughter, starting her early with an appreciation for good weather coverage. Thanks for all you do. Awesome, Abby. Abigail, thank you for that. If you are just now tuning in, we are doing wall-to-wall -wall severe weather coverage tonight. We're talking about Texas a lot right now, right? Um, but as we go later into the evening, probably uh, as we get even into the early morning hours tomorrow, we'll be talking a lot about Oklahoma more and uh, Arkansas and Louisiana as well. And then, of course, intermittently, intermittently throughout the day, uh, we're going to do a little forecast updates on what's going to happen tomorrow because this ain't over tonight. Um, tomorrow, we are going to have more severe weather out there uh, in the uh, Ohio Valley, essentially. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know they made those. Me and my dad's hail covers for the cars. How does that work? You just blow them up and they tie around the bottom of the car. That's super cool. We got to get those. We, we got to get those. That's so cool. 
I'm already thinking of like how I'm going to put some sort of obnoxious radar pattern on it. <laughs> I, I can't come up with a name. I was sitting here trying to think of a name. Hey, Ryan, we may have a tornado on the ground. Uh oh. All right, let's go check him out. Where is, what is he on? Number one. All right, Chaser. Number one, this is a live view from Brad Arnold here. Of course, it's choppy. Um, let's go over to radar. And let's check out where Brad is. He's saying we might have a tornado on the ground. Obviously, uh, we'll keep his video feed above me. Uh, but let's come over to radar and let's see what we're looking at here. Definitely a stronger um, rotation signature coming in here through near Pickin, Picton in Texas. Okay. Um, I don't know. Have you guys seen anything through his feed? Definitely a lowering big wall cloud there uh, behind the trees. Uh, but uh, not noticing anything uh, substantial uh, just yet. Uh, but guys, this, is, um, this doesn't have a warning on it. This does not have a warning from the National Weather Service on it. If you um, live out here near Picton, uh, or I, I believe that's what it was called, uh, or just to the north of Winsboro, uh, you got to get ready for this one because that is definitely trying to produce a tornado uh, probably harder than any of the other storms out here right now. Oh, look at that. That actually is producing a tornado right now. Hey, Ryan, confirmed tornado on the ground. Somebody needs to report that. We're on it. Uh, somebody on our team is going to get that over to the National Weather Service. We've got a, a, an unwarned tornado on the ground. Um, I don't think anybody knows about this other than us. So once again, if you guys watching right now um, know anybody down here near Winsboro, Pearly, Mount Vernon, uh, any of these places in Texas, you got to let them know. There's no warning or anything out there right now. Uh, we've got a tornado on the ground. Wow. And this is a bad, this is a pretty bad sign too, because I, it, we saw on the radar how not impressive really uh, this, uh, this storm looks. So if we can get other storms to show similar attributes tonight, as they move up into this area, we're, we're probably going to see multiple tornadoes now. This has been the atmospheric breaker, I guess is what you can call it. Um, for tonight. And so unfortunately, this is probably going to be the kind of storm that will produce multiple tornadoes and it's going to move up towards Mount Pleasant and Mount Vernon in Texas. Look at that. Guys, this is a live view from just to the north and west of Winsboro. This is happening right now uh, near Picton in Texas. Still no tornado warning. Uh, from the National Weather Service, from what I can see. This is going to go right across the road here. Let me see here. Yeah, this is going to go right across the road between Winterfield and Pine Hill. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is Highway 269 that we're looking at right now. Um, it could also be uh, Highway 11. Yeah, this is Highway 11, uh, and it's going to cross the road right there. Uh, and then it's going to move up towards Pine Hill and Morris Grove. Pine Hill and Morris Grove. Hopefully somebody on our team is in contact with the National Weather Service. A new tornado warning has been issued. We've got a new tornado warning, but that one's for up there in Oklahoma. And of course, that's an extension. Okay, it looks like we lost Brad's feed. Um, that's an extension of the warning that we saw uh, that was originally issued for Bryan County. Now that's also included Atoka County. Dang. Okay, we've lost Brad's feed. Um, so we're going to go full radar view. And guys, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts how 
unsuspecting this storm looks on radar. Okay, so we've got the tornado warning um, indicated, um, but that, as as you guys know, that's a confirmed warning on our end, uh, and that's going to include uh, Hopkins County, Texas, uh, Winterfield, Pine Hill, and Greenwood. You're next in line on getting this uh, potential. Uh, well, I don't know if it's still on the ground or not, but let's assume that it is. We got a tornado on the ground moving up in this general direction. This is where Brad Arnold is. Let's see if we can't see him in Radar Omega. And by the way, yeah, you guys can l watch Brad's feed in the app. There's 150 of you right now trying to watch it, but it's he's in a dead zone. Uh, he's fine, guys. He's fine, but uh, he's just not able to get the, the signal out here. So there's your new warning polygon. As um, we saw uh, the tornado uh, move over uh, Highway 11 uh, up towards Winterfield uh, in Picton. I believe it went right just to the north of Picton, I, I'm pretty sure. Brad, you're in a dead zone a little bit there. Uh, we, okay, we just got your feedback. Is this thing still on the ground? What are you seeing now? Hey, Ryan, definitely still on the ground. We should have service now. Uh, we're going to cut right in front of it again. You're going to get a great view of it. Okay. Wow. Once again, I, I, Brad Arnold, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold, the, the MVP of MVPs out here, um, going against the grain, being out here uh, and, and finding probably the only tornado of the day so far um, and allowing us to give, I, I don't know, probably 10 minutes of early warning before any other warning source uh, was able to come out. So huge props to Brad Arnold, and hopefully everybody in uh, Winterfield and Pine Hill and Greenwood is in their safe spots right now because this is still on the ground, according to Brad, and it's coming right for you there. You, and, and one of the reasons why you, this is probably not, uh, it wasn't warned right off the bat is because... Um, <laughs> You can't see it. You can't see it on, on radar. Uh, you can't see it on radar. It just doesn't look that impressive on any of the radar sites that you could view it from. Unbelievable. Another radar hole that will hopefully be serviced by Durant whenever we get that new radar. So this is still on the ground. It's coming up to the north and east. Uh, let's look at Radar Omega for a better map. I don't know. I don't know if we're having data problems or what here, but the tornado is uh, probably in Winterfield now, moving up towards Greenwood. Tornadoes always love to happen in places where the service isn't great. Uh, if you guys didn't see it, if you're just now tuning in, this is what we were just looking at live through Brad Arnold's feed, okay? Uh, this is a live look at the tornado there. Hopefully somebody on our team is getting a video of, of this up on Twitter and, and Facebook as well. Hopefully we can do that really fast. Um, because once again, I don't think people are down here are thinking about a tornado warning right now as uh, I don't think there was even a tornado watch in place. The, the unfortunate part of all this is, is if this maintains a tornado, it's going to go through uh, Mount Vernon or really close to it. So we, we want everybody to in Mount Vernon, Texas, to be hyper aware of this approaching twisting storm. Hey, Ryan, it's coming right at us. You should be able to see it. A new tornado warning has been issued. Okay, we got a confirmed tornado warning now for Red River County in Titus County, Texas. And um, holy smokes. This thing's getting bigger, too. Oh, boy. Okay, so we got a confirmed tornado 
warning now. Um, this tornado warning. This is uh, this is going to be a pretty dangerous situation if we're in Mount Vernon, Texas. Please take shelter. You got to take this one seriously, y'all. This is turning into it's it's trying to turn into a big tornado here. Um, as uh, wow, as it crosses uh, near uh, Winterfield and Greenwood. This is a live view of the large uh, rotating storm um, uh, that's definitely causing damage on the ground. Look at how big it's gotten, guys. Remember when we saw this just, what was it, five minutes ago, we had a little small funnel making contact with the ground. Now we have a much larger rotating area. If this becomes any more organized, this could cause a big tornado here. Yeah, so we finally got our tornado warning for Mount Vernon um, and uh, Talco, Maple Springs, and Lakeview. Guys, please uh, take shelter uh, now if you haven't already. Wow, that's literally going right in front of him. <laughs> Brad gets awfully close to these things, man. Phew. All right, so obviously we still got a ton of uh, rotation here. We've still got a lot of uh, inflow going into the storm. I don't see anything still in direct contact with the ground. I don't see any debris flying up back there, um, but that's probably going to change. He's zoomed in for a reason. Um, I don't. Uh, nevertheless, this is probably, um, if it's not putting a tornado on the ground right now, it's going to do it again here soon. This storm is strengthening, um, and it is still moving up towards Mount Vernon. Brad, he smelled it from a mile away, son. Actually, from 100 miles away or however far he drove. Okay, let's keep it. We're going to keep his camera up above me. And uh, we are going to uh, come back to radar here and, and try to get an idea of where this thing's going to go next. I, it's crazy how much it looks like there isn't a tornado right now on radar, but there definitely is. And it's moving up towards Greenwood. Okay, uh, then it's going to go to Union. And then it's going to go to Mount Vernon. And once again, I really hope um, we've got a video, a clip of what just happened on our Twitter here soon or in, in my downloads uh, so I can show people and remind people what this looks like so that we can hopefully get people in their safe spots uh, up here near Mount Vernon. Wow. I don't like the look of this. Obviously, we don't. I don't think we have anything making direct contact with the ground now, but this is becoming a much stronger storm, and that's not good. That's not good. This might try to produce a big one here uh, as this goes up to the north and east. Hey, Ryan, as far as a fully condensed funnel, we do not see a fully condensed funnel right now, but there is still debris getting swirled around aloft. There's still debris being swirled around aloft. So this is, this is still doing damage, whether we see the thing on the ground or not. Yeah, this is going to go right across the road between Winterfield and Pine Hill. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is Highway 269 that we're looking at right now. Um, Here's what that looked like just moments ago. Watching a tornado form live on TV. Wow. Right Unbelievable. That's another one. I, I don't think that we, I don't think anybody would have known other than the people getting hit by the tornado if it wasn't for Brad right there. Because <laughs> you can't, that, if, looking at radar, you don't know. You, you, you can't tell that this is producing a tornado. Uh, so this is going to continue to move up north. Also, um, this is going to issued. impact Interstate 30. All right, uh, between Weaver and Winfield in Texas, this is going to in, in, eventually go right across um, Interstate 30. So hopefully we can get everybody 
to if you're going west from Farmers uh, Academy or if you're going east from White Oak Junction towards Mount Vernon, I wouldn't, um, especially if you're not in the storm. If you can see the storm in front of you, uh, let it go. Let it go by and then keep going afterwards. If you're approaching from the west. Okay, there's another new tornado warning that was just issued as well. And that's going to be for this one down here near Walker's Mill. And this storm looks way more impressive on radar than the one that Brad's on. So it might produce a tornado here soon as well. Look at this. Little shrimp. Little shrimp right there near Walker's Mill. I'm telling you guys, this is probably going to produce a tornado too. We got to get to shelter in Macedonia, Kellyville, Jefferson, and all these places. And look at this. Look at that. Guys, I think we're approaching a worst case scenario here where these storms are actually interacting with the environment in a way that's going to allow them to produce several tornadoes tonight. I think that if I'm in the Texarkana area, if I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana, um, if I'm in Dangerfield, Lone Star, New Boston, um, Mount Pleasant, any of these places in uh, pretty much this zone right in here, uh, I am being hyper weather aware tonight as these two storms have broken the mold now for what will become um, the standard for how these storms perform as we go forward. And they're all kind of separated and uh, discreet in nature, which is double bad news. Guys, all right, here's, a a, here's what happened earlier. From just to the north and west of this Winsboro. is likely what it still this looks like too. Right so now, as it approaches uh, Mount Pleasant, Picton, maybe even bigger. In Texas, still no tornado warning uh, from the National Weather Service, from what I can see. This is going to go right across the road here. Amazing. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we do have a tornado um, uh, warning for Mount Vernon, uh, Texas, Lakeview, and Maple Springs. Uh, we have uh, a storm chaser who's following this storm. We've seen the tornado on the ground, okay? So this is not a, a, a precautionary tornado warning. This is the real deal. You got to get underground or you got to get into the most interior room of your home and you got to take shelter right now. Looks like Brad's got another good view of it. Man, but those twisty, turny roads. <laughs> All right, and I want, to, I want to update you guys as well on this other storm down here near our Walker's Mill. I don't know for sure if this one's producing a tornado, but it sure looks like it might. This looks more impressive than the storm that Brad's on, actually, and that's moving up towards um, Jefferson in Texas. And then look at this. Just to the east of Marshall over here near Scottsville in Texas, we do have a new area of rotation that's trying to pop up. That might try to produce a tornado as well as it moves up towards Karnak and Uncertain. There's no warning for that, but you guys are getting an early heads up as we watch this storm develop. Let's go back over to Brad. Goals. I mean, that, that, that is, it's going to produce a, a big tornado here. And I'm trying to look at the trajectory. It still looks like it's going to go right towards Mount Vernon. I'm hoping that it goes a little bit to the west, a little bit to the north and west of Mount Vernon. That is still an option. That's still a, a potential uh, outcome here. But if it doesn't, uh, you know, hopefully everybody's in their safe spot anyways. Brad is driving through the literal jungle here uh, to give us a view of this tornado. Yeah, if I'm in um, uh, Hawkins County, Texas, Franklin County, Texas, um, uh, Titus County, Texas, any of these places, I would be uh, getting a shelter now. That these we're all under tornado warnings here, and all these other little beans. 
have to be watched incredibly closely, including the one that's going into Shreveport right now. A new tornado. Okay, we got a new tornado issue. warning uh, for Brown and Coleman uh, County, Texas. We have six, six total tornado warnings um, as things have really ramped up here in the last little bit. Guys, uh, once again, if you're just now tuning in, we're watching the beginning stages of a very significant severe weather outbreak here. We're seeing tornadoes drop down left and right on the east side of Dallas. We're seeing hail up to the size of baseballs just north of Dallas, Texas, and we're seeing a strong line of storms capable of producing tornadoes and hurricane force winds formed to the west of, of Dallas. It's all moving east. OK, so the storms that are producing the tornadoes right now are moving up towards Shreveport and Texarkana. The storms producing the monster hail are moving into southeastern uh, Oklahoma. And then the final round uh, that's also producing tornadoes and very strong damaging winds is moving towards Dallas right now. Um, we've still got our eyes on this storm that's producing the, the tornado um, uh, from Brad Arnold's point of view. It looks to me like it. It's not producing. Actually, I, I think it is. Yeah, you can see the, the, the funnel over there. This thing is just, it continues to grow. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with it uh, as this moves off to the north and east. I would stay in my safe spot in Mount Pleasant and in uh, Mount Vernon over here in, in Texas, as this is definitely going to continue to cause major problems. We don't see a condensed funnel on the ground, but the last report that we got from Brad was that we're still seeing debris being picked up. So tornadoes can do damage whether they look like a, a tornado you've seen on TV or not. That doesn't matter. Uh, you know, sometimes the wind field down near the base is invisible. It's not condensed. It's not dark. That's actually more dangerous because you can't see it coming. So that's why we want you all to get to shelter right now. And then our, that newest tornado warning is actually for down here uh, near Lake Brownwood and Brownwood and Bangs in Texas. This is uh, south and west of Fort Worth. This is south of Cisco, uh, north of Brady, uh, near Coleman. Uh, that's our latest tornado warning down here. And that's going to also bring around two inch in diameter hail up towards Lake Brownwood. Y'all need to take shelter uh, as well. These storms are getting nasty. The ones that are approaching Dallas... Oh, boy, that, those are definitely producing some big hail there um, as they are getting dangerously close to Weatherford. And, of course, uh, places like Gainesville, Denton, uh, and Sherman, you guys are all going to get hit again um, as this second round comes through. So we've been watching these storms in more eastern Texas all day saying, man, if these storms get their act together, they are going to produce tornadoes. And guess what? They got their act together. It happened. Um, and we saw the first tornado through Storm Chaser Brad Arnold's feed. Um, Please. There's 500 of you guys in the Radar Omega app right now watching along with me. Um, and I think we're going to see se probably several more tornadoes over the next couple of hours from these storms. Uh, in fact, this one right here is already warned that's moving right towards Jefferson. Uh, we have a potential tornado trying to develop uh, just to the north and west of Nesbitt and Marshall in Texas. That's moving up towards Jefferson, and it's getting there fast. Take shelter now. Now, there are, there's another storm down here that I really don't like the look of that is also trying to produce a tornado. This is down here near Grand Cane. This is south of Shreveport. You see that curve. You see the hook. You see the inflow. See the, uh, this is a rotating storm. Now, it's not showing up very well on radar yet, but we definitely see the rear flank downdraft. You see the inflow, and you see what's happening here. This is, if it continues to expand and strengthen, which it likely will, um, this is going to cause a problem here uh, between Stonewall and Kingston uh, in Louisiana over the next little bit. You guys are getting an extremely early heads up here. 
Um, so just know that we're watching it. And if we need to cut to it, we will um, as these storms continue to uh, ramp up in intensity tonight. Can we get that? Here's an update from the National Weather Service, uh, Fort Worth. Severe threat through 6 p.m. Um, damaging wind threat in the red shaded area with gusts over. Um, uh, 70 miles an hour uh, in the red area. Head for sturdy shelter in an interior room away from windows as these storms arrive. Yeah, this, these are going to be very strong. Um, over here near Dallas. I, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about that. Yeah, multiple supercells forming out here in the warm sector is exactly what we didn't want to happen today. And in fact, it was what was forecasted to not happen today. So the fact that it is happening is just, it's not good. Uh, we just got to hope that there's some other uh, factor here that's going to keep these storms at bay. These two are looking the most intense now um, over here uh, between Macedonia and Jefferson. And then we've got the one near Baldwin and Karnak. Um, as far as reflectivity goes, though, this one, <laughs> this one looks really, really nasty. But we don't see, we're not seeing any new uh, warnings over there just yet. And, and of course, we've got the live feed from Brad above my head. Um, we'll continue to check back in with him. He'll holler at us if something happens. But I do want to update you on the situation between Texas and Oklahoma over here as well because I know you guys are watching. You're interested in what's going on. Guys, a massive hailer is getting ready to move into New Oberlin and M Bunker Hill. This is going to be a huge hailstorm. You're going to see baseball size hail maybe. Um, and it, if you don't see that, you're, you're going to see like a sheet of golf balls in your front lawn by the time this thing is over. Uh, that's going to cause flash flooding. That's going to cause damage to cars and, and roofs and stuff like that. So make sure you're, if you're downstream a little bit, like near Slate Shoals, Powderly, uh, Hugo, any of these places, you're taking precautions. You get in the car in the garage, whatever you need to do, because this is a nasty storm. You see the black? That's not normal. All right. That, that, that's a tall storm with a ton of hail in it. And that's going to ride the Red River here to the east between Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, we also have a similar kind of storm up here to the north moving towards antlers. Y'all get ready for that as well. Uh, let's check in on our huge line of storms, which now has made it all the way down to Mexico uh, with some showers and storms down here near Rock Springs. Uh, there's a severe thunderstorm warning just to the north of that along uh, Highway 377 south of Telegraph. Uh, that line of storms ramps up a little bit near Brady, Texas, where there's a severe thunderstorm warning for 70 mile per hour winds. Brace for impact there in Brady. We do have a tornado warning back here for um, areas near Bangs, Thrifty, and Lake Shore in Texas. Uh, but the main threat right now, I think, is going to be that 70 mile an hour winds and a one inch in diameter hail that's coming through. And that's getting ready to come through May, Owens, uh, Blanket, and early Texas as this continues. Uh, to move east and then of course the biggest strongest part of this line right now is making a beeline i think right towards dallas fort worth we uh we just looked at that national weather service update and it had the area of greatest impact kind of outlined like this and i tend to agree but i also think the southern side is going to continue on that right progression that it's on right now 
and really downtown Fort Worth and Dallas are probably going to get hit by one of the strongest parts of this line of storms as it comes through. So this is rapidly approaching. If I'm in Dallas or for Fort Worth or Mineral Wells, Weatherford, I'm getting ready now uh, to take shelter and gathering up anything outside that could be easily blown away or significantly damaged by hell because this storm is going to have... Um, Is that a different color? <laughs> the storm's going to have 70 mile an hour winds um, with it as it approaches the area. Then let's go back over here to the east of Dallas. Uh, the storm that Brad Arnold is on continues to fly farther and farther into a radar hole. So there's not a lot that we can do there for you. Um, other than just keep in touch with Brad and see what he's looking at. Uh, Chris Hall, Storm Chaser Chris Hall is right here near Talco. So he's also going to be able to give us uh, an eye on this uh, storm as well. Uh, Chris, I know uh, you probably know that Brad Arnold saw a tornado on the storm that's coming right towards you there. I'm wondering if, since you're on the forward flank side, if you can even see the base right now, um, or if you've got to get a little bit closer, or if you're just going to wait for it there as it comes towards you. As of right now, we're sitting here with emergency responders. Uh, right now, I can't see nothing. Uh, some light rain also the sun is starting to shine through the storm uh not sure if that may enhance a little bit or if it's just going to completely fizzle out um but right now we're sitting here with emergency responders uh, near talco all right all right that's uh, an update from storm chaser chris hall who has given us a live view uh, of this storm as it approaches. Uh, this is the one that had the tornado in it. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's still on the ground, but it is now passing Mount Vernon, okay? So hopefully everybody in the town of Mount Vernon got to shelter. Um, I would say give it another five minutes and you're good to come out. Uh, but if you're in Lakeview, uh, Hagensport, Talco, Daphne, Johntown, or Bogota, or Bogota in Texas, you are next in line to get hit by this thing, and uh, I would stay in my uh, safe spot if I were you. Down a little bit farther to the south, the storm near Jefferson, Texas, continues to look more and more impressive. Um, I would actually be surprised if this one doesn't put down a tornado because it looks more impressive than the one that Brad was on. Um, and a Andy has an update, so let's talk to him. Hey, Ryan, finally have something to relay to you because you're masterfully handing, handling the updates of all, all these storms before I can really say something here without my lights. <laughs> but the one to the south of uh, Jefferson's tornado warning in East Texas near Tatum and Darko, uh, that one's ramped up rapidly in the last scan alone from, you know, 10 to 90. So I think uh, along Highway 43 and eventually Marshall, Texas, will be next in line for this warning uh, or a warning. So y'all watch out as this supercell heads into the environment that is supporting the current tornado warnings as it goes to the north. Thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill, drawing our attention down here where we've got another area of spinning air at the bottom of this storm. And unfortunately, this one is also lining up uh, with another uh, city. Uh, Marshall, Texas, get ready. Y'all, heads up. There's no warning yet, uh, but there probably will be one. Um, go ahead and take your uh, precautions or start getting ready uh, for what you're going to do when that warning does officially come through, okay? Uh, we've got a bunch of uh, spinning supercell thunderstorms out here. Um, we've seen at least one tornado uh, because we saw that one, we will likely see several more tonight. So hopefully, uh, everybody's getting ready for that down here. Um, now all of this area is under a tornado watch. Okay. Uh, Texarkana is under a tornado watch. Um, uh, and, and Ida Bell, places where these storms could eventually uh, get up towards, uh, are under tornado watches. Um, however, I would suspect that we might see um, an expansion of that maybe a little bit farther to the south and east. 
as these storms continue to look more and more impressive down there in Louisiana. Nice. A new tornado warning has been issued. A new tornado warning for Brown County, Texas. And um, yeah, we're going to see a lot more of those pop up as well as each one of these little circulations will probably eventually get a warning on it. Just waiting on that polygon there so I can zoom in on it and show you. Brown County, Texas. Um, and uh, then we'll move on and we'll talk about all the rest of these storms that are moving in as well. It looks like there has been a new... Um, yeah, considerable severe thunderstorm warning there uh, for Weatherford and, and Parker County, Texas. Uh, that's a considerable because 70 mile per hour winds are now making a beeline for the I-20 corridor around Weatherford, Texas. That's eventually going to make it into Fort Worth. So make sure you all are ready for that. Uh, okay, that newest warning there in, in Brown County, Texas is for Brownwood and Blanket. This is inside of the other considerable severe thunderstorm warning with one inch in diameter hail and 70 mile per hour winds. And now that we think there could be also a tornado here near Blanket and Brownwood, take shelter immediately. This line goes all the way down to Mexico, y'all. Everybody in Texas is going to feel this one tonight. East of Wichita Falls and um, Midland, uh, there's no escaping it. Uh, we're going to see uh, storms sweep across the entire state. Maybe down there in the southern tip, you guys will escape the uh uh, the madness tonight, but Waco, Austin, Brian, Tyler, Dallas, y'all are in for a rough night of severe weather as I think we are actually just now getting into uh, the beginning of the, uh, the, the, the heightened part of this. So the rotation here near Jefferson continues to get more and more impressive as this storm is likely either producing a tornado <coughs> or about to as it moves up towards Kellyville. If we're in Kellyville, Texas, we got to take shelter now. Uh, that new area of rotation that we're watching that Andy just brought to our attention. Hey, Ryan, uh, I just spoke to one of the emergency responders. He said that they uh, put out an all call here, uh, whatever, I don't even know what county I'm in, just near Talco uh, for this storm. Looks like the storm may have died down, but there was a report of a rotating wall cloud still yet. Uh, so we're going to go on north with this. There goes some more emergency responders down towards Talco. Um, they was reporting that it was on the ground. Um, he was unsure if there was any damage, however. A new tornado warning has been issued. Okay, so the tornado warning up here north of Mount Vernon that includes Bogota and Talco has been allowed to expire because... Once again, we can't really see anything happening on radar, and Brad Arnold isn't telling us that there is still a tornado down. So we're going to continue to watch that one. I think that we will eventually see um, a new tornado warning get issued for the storm at some point. Has been but for right now, we're getting a little break um, in the, uh, the tornado warning uh, situation there, and that's great news. But we're about to see uh, some new ones down here to the south. The, the one... Directly south of Shreveport continues to impress me uh, with its uh, rotation there. Um, give it a couple more scans of ramping up like that, and it'll get a warning. Uh, so we're going to see this pop off. And there we go. We finally got the warning for Marshall now and uh, Darko in Texas. That includes Nesbitt and Scottsville as well. Uh, take shelter now as we have uh, tornado warnings for Harrison County, Texas, um, Cass County, and Marion County in Texas. Brown County, Texas, Coleman County in Texas, all of you guys are under tornado warnings. You got to get to shelter immediately. Let's check in on all these storms again, one by one. Severe thunderstorm uh, moving south of Telegraph down here in Texas. Brady just got hit by a very strong storm uh, with 70 mile per hour winds. And that's moving over towards San Saba and Richland Springs. We've got this culmination of uh, uh, tornado warnings kind of all happening around early in Brownwood right now with this really Hey, Ryan, it's uh, Brad. Crazy. It's on the ground again, and it's more violent than it was the first time. We have horizontal vortices on it now. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. We're going to – we have to bring our attention back over to this one, y'all. The National Weather Service did allow – 
the tornado warning to expire for this storm that's near Lakeview. But now we've got confirmation from our storm chaser that it is on the ground again, and it is even more violent than it was the last time that we saw it. Unfortunately, he is still in an area where um, it looks like the, the service is not It's uh, Brad. It's on the ground again, and it's more violent than it was the first time. We have horizontal vortices on it now. Morning, buddy. Yep. Before that. Okay. Okay. Actually, I don't think it's frozen. I think that uh, he's just staying still. Ryan, you're going to see it come in on the left side of the screen. Okay, sweet. All right. I thought we were frozen. Okay, here we go. Um, guys, if you're just now tuning in, uh, we've got a very dangerous situation unfolding here uh, near Lakeview. We've got a tornado producing storm that is invisible on radar. So the folks at the National Weather Service can't see it. Uh, but we've got a storm chaser here that is uh, constantly giving us updates on what's happening with it. He's on the ground. He's following it. And uh, this had a tornado on it. It lifted. And now it is producing another tornado somewhere near Lakeview, Texas. And we need everybody to the north hey, and the east of right this. pointing the car right now. Horizontal vortices. Oh, wow. Whoa. There it is, guys. Once again, this is happening right now live near Lakeview, Texas. We are looking, um, Brad Arnold is in Lakeview. We are looking to the north and west of Highway 37. The storm is going to continue to move north and east between Lakeview and Hagen Sport, and then it's going to uh, continue to go up towards Highway 71 between Talco and Hagen Sport. i got to update Chris on this. Chris, this thing is back on the ground, and it is bigger than it was before, and it's coming right up there towards Talco. So uh, this is a live view of what's happening here in Franklin County, Texas. Once again, there is no tornado warning. Copy that, um, Ron. I'm pulling into a school. We're getting like that there's word a lot of people here. The, I'm going to go ahead and warn them. There is no sirens going off, nothing. Uh, there is cops here. I'm going to advise them of this. Uh, but, yeah. Okay, apparently we don't have sirens going off in these towns or anything. Uh, this is going to come up towards Talco and Bogota in Texas. Guys, if you know anybody out here in this general vicinity, please let them know what's going on. As um, Once again, this is invisible on radar. You, you would never know if it wasn't for Brad Arnold here showing us this, um, uh, this feed. So uh, this is what's uh, happening as the storm approaches Talco. Uh, once again, uh, John Town, Talco, Texas, um, uh, all the way over to uh, Hagensport, and mainly the Highway 71 area between Hagensport and Talco. You guys are in immediate danger as this is going to come uh, over your area within the next couple of minutes, all right? You want to get underground preferably. If you can't get underground, you got to get into the most interior room of your home, and you've got to uh, put as many walls between you and the outside world as you possibly can, okay? Uh, you want to protect your head. Put on a helmet, um, and then hopefully um, we'll get through this together. Bring me with you. Bring your phone. Bring your tablet. Um, and uh, once again, we'll, we're, we're going to get through this, and we're going to let you know as soon as the, the thing gets past you or it lifts or whatever, we still don't have a warning. <clears throat> my goodness all right uh so i know we've got a lot of new people pouring in i'm going to repeat myself a lot if you're just now tuning in we have a live view here of a big tornado uh, that is uh doing damage it's a damaging tornado near lakeview texas and it's moving off to the north uh, through Hagensport up towards Johntown and Talco uh, in Texas. And uh, there, is, there is no uh, warning. The, the sirens aren't going off or anything. Uh, so we're just trying to do our best uh, to uh, help uh, people uh, you know, downstream know what's coming here. This tornado, this storm has produced multiple tornadoes today. It might lift again here in a second. We might see it go away, um, but it's probably going to come right back. And that's something that we have to keep in mind uh, as this storm continues to go up towards Johntown and Talco. And yeah, this is what it looked like just moments ago. Confirmed tornado via live stream. Um, 
And this is in Franklin County, Texas. And hopefully we can um, get that one up on the uh, on Twitter very quickly as well. We don't want the, to to waste a single moment uh, with getting the the, the imagery. Hey, out. Ron, it's Brad. Tornado has lifted um, the uh, mezzo, and the uh, there's a funnel aloft that are spinning pretty violently, though. All right, so the tornado is off the ground for now, but it's not going to be for long. Okay. Um, we're, we're going to continue to watch this thing, uh, try to produce a, a new tornado. And, uh, I still think that people in Johntown, Bogota, uh, and Talco need to be, uh, taking shelter and, uh, preparing for this thing. Just wait for the storm to pass. If all it does a new is drop a, has been a, you know, uh, some hailstones and some gusty winds on you, what did you lose? But if it looks like it did just moments ago, as it goes over you, you're going to wish you were in your safe spot. And now we've got the warning. Um, <clears throat> By the way, we still have this incredibly strong storm coming towards you there in Dallas. Weatherford, Fort Worth, Dallas, you guys are getting ready to get slammed. Hey, Ryan, uh, it's going to miss uh, whatever. Sorry to interrupt, Ryan, but we do it's have a tornado. It's going to miss the school. They did say that there was a school bus heading this way, but they have stopped the all the incoming school buses in the morning. school for games. We're going to go on north towards Bogolia, I think, and get back in front of this case and drops again. Uh, Andy, could you repeat that? Debris signature on the Beria tornado warning in Marion County, northwest of Jefferson, Texas, and very far east Texas. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so it looks like we've got another tornado on the ground. We've got another tornado uh, on the ground over here north and west of Jefferson, uh, Texas, near uh, B B Berea, I believe. Uh, that's going to uh, be moving up towards Prospect and White Oak. Um, uh, yeah, that's definitely um, not a good sign there. Strong rotation. Uh, and this is uh, another damaging tornado here near White Oak, Prospect, and Pruitt. Now, it's not happened yet, but we will likely see here very soon um, a, a confirmed or observed uh, tornado warning come through. Let's go ahead and pretend like that's already happened and take shelter um, like you like you know for sure that it's coming. If we're in White Oak, Pruitt, Prospect, Fairview, or Lanier in Texas, this is a dangerous situation. All of these storms today are um, interacting with an environment that is just super primed for producing tornadoes. I'm also increasingly concerned about this, um, uh, you know, a tornado or this uh, rotation that's approaching Marshall. Marshall, Texas, you guys are under a tornado warning, um, and this storm is approaching you. If it ramps up any more than it currently is, that could be a pretty bad situation for Marshall, Texas, okay? So y'all, take shelter now. All right. Currently have six tornado warnings. Most of them are, are over here in eastern Texas. Uh, but a lot of them are, um, or a couple of them are back here in central Texas near this big line. Uh, we still got early blanket at Antioch, 10 mile crossing. All of you guys are under a tornado warning out here in central Texas near Brownwood. And then we've got that very strong, large hail and damaging wind situation getting ready to blow through Weatherford and then Fort Worth and then Dallas. If you know anybody in any of these areas, please get the word out because I don't think words traveling very fast today about the severity of the situation um, in some of these areas. I appreciate you all uh, for helping getting the word out there on Twitter and stuff. Um, I do want to make sure, because uh, I, I know we got a ton of new people pouring in. I, I am going to have to repeat myself a lot. 
um, because I just want to make sure everybody knows uh, what's going on, what what's happening here. Uh, if you are just now tuning in, uh, this is a live, continuous severe weather coverage on a uh, an outbreak of, of severe weather that's happening uh, in Texas now. All of this is moving to the east. We're, Dallas is going to get hit here soon. Uh, we're going to cover that uh, all the way down towards uh, maybe even as far south as San Antonio, Austin, uh, and, and Waco. Uh, we're going to cover that as well. Uh, but we're kind of focused in right now on this group of storms uh, on the eastern side of Texas because th- this is the warm sector. And uh, we knew from the beginning today that there was going to be a lot of really ample ingredients uh, in place for tornadoes today in this region. But a lot of the forecast models told us that there would be no storms that formed out here, or at least not many. Well, it looks like they were wrong, and we've got storms breaking through the cap, and they are interacting with the uh, high space uh, parameters for tornadoes, and they are producing tornadoes now uh, in and around Shreveport and Texarkana, and that's going to continue to happen for the next several hours. So once again, I'm very concerned about uh, southwestern Arkansas, northwestern Louisiana, northeastern Texas, and southern and southeastern Oklahoma, uh, as this is going to be a real hot spot uh, for tornadoes over the next little bit. You know anybody in that area, please let them know uh, what's happening here. And uh, here's just a, a quick look back at is, the, guys. the Brad Arnold Again, situation. This is happening right now live near Lakeview, Texas. We are looking. This um, was 10 minutes ago. Brad Arnold is in Lakeview. We are looking to the north and west of Highway 37. The storm is going to continue to move north and east between Lakeview and Hagen This was 10 minutes ago. Sport, and then it's going to. Uh, continue to go up towards Highway 71 between Talco and Hagensport. I- and hopefully we'll get that one on Twitter too here soon. I think the more imagery we get out like that, the more seriously people will uh, take these storms today. And this is just not a good sign. Look at all this. Like a lot of just really in like good looking supercells, all perfectly spaced out from one another, discreet in nature. And now the rotation is ramping up on the southwestern side of Marshall. Hopefully, everybody in Marshall, Texas, is um, in their safe spot right now um, because there could be a tornado coming into the southwestern side of town right now. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's uh, not on the gr- if that's on the ground. Uh, so, Marshall, Texas, get ready. Uh, you could be the next place that uh, gets a direct impact from a tornado here, especially on the west side of town. I think that if this is um, on the ground right now, uh, it's probably it's probably going to be somewhere around where the Bex, the best of Texas barbecue smokehouse is. So if you guys know where the the New Hope Church, the National Evangelism uh, Church is, and the Roseville Bed and Breakfast is on the west side of town, that's a big area, right? That the tornado is not that big. But there's a big margin of error as to where this thing could actually be. And I think it's somewhere in there. Um, And it's going to move up towards the El Pacino Supermarket uh, Center Point Energy. And then uh, maybe even as far east into the town as the the East Texas Baptist University. Okay. Um, Now, let's hope that it stays a little bit farther to the west between Parker Fence Co. and Urban uh, Safari Savannah and Bingle Cats and the Ready RV R, the Ready RV Park, but um, it could be anywhere in there. The radar doesn't tell us exactly where it is. But we want everybody in Marshall, despite which Walmart this thing might roll by, uh, to be in their safe spot. Wow. Okay, so it's been a minute since we've heard from Brad Arnold. I believe that storm, that tornado might have lifted. And we, I don't think we're having a, uh, any 
any more trouble out of it right now. Uh, but of course, Brad will let us know um, if that changes. Brad, just keep us updated on what you're seeing out there. You, I, I think you know this, but like you're basically our only eyes. Uh, that storm's pretty much uh, in, invisible on radar. So um, thank you very much, and, and keep hollering at me if you see anything else. All right. So we're, I'm, I'm watching this storm closely near Marshall, Texas. Oh. Brad's on the phone with Fox Weather right now. I might have interrupted his call. Sorry, Brad. I'm, I'm scouring uh, Twitter right now to see if, if there's any uh, pictures or videos coming out of Marshall. Uh, I'm not seeing anything yet. I'm not seeing anything yet, but that is a, an incredibly uh, dangerous storm there. We, I, I, I would be so surprised if that's not producing a tornado or if it's not getting ready to. So uh, Marshall um, and uh, Gainesville, are there two Gainesvilles in Texas for real? Is that legal? There, yeah, there's two. Okay, so the Gainesville down here near Marshall... <laughs> Um, uh, is in the direct path of this uh, potential tornado here. Make sure you get to shelter now. Um, hey, Ryan, uh, just got your message. Has been uh, we are, we, we're bailing on this storm. The radar doesn't look good, and visually it doesn't even look very good anymore. Um, so we are actually going to be starting to head east. Uh, it looks like the cap has eroded over there, and those are some pretty significant circulations coming up right on the te uh, Texas, Louisiana Arkansas uh, state line right there in that in the three corners right there. All right. Perfect. Um, so Brad Arnold uh, is going to bail on the storm that has produced multiple tornadoes today uh, between uh, Mount Vernon, Greenwoods, uh, Lakeview, uh, and then Bogota. It looks like this storm is kind of falling apart, which is great news. Uh, you're still under a tornado warning all the way up to Clarksville, Texas. Now, it looks like this storm's not going to produce another tornado, but it could. So we want you to stay into your safe spot until you the storm has passed you, okay? Uh, Brad's then going to go through Clarksville. He's going to come down Highway 82 towards New Boston, and then he's probably just either going to continue to go east or sit around this area around Texarkana as these storms work their way up to the north because it's very likely, guys, that this is only going to get worse like that as, especially as we get closer to sundown that lower level jet's going to kick up even more we're going to see lots more nadir juice out here um if we continue to see isolated discrete supercells like this i think that we're in for um uh, a, 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 a pretty bad situation here so let's hope for the best but prepare for the worst Let's make sure uh, we get those videos uh, that we've got on Twitter, on Facebook as well. I hope if we're not already doing that, we should. And uh, Instagram, because like I, 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 it's blowing my mind um, how many people are, are popping up in chat here saying that they had no idea anything was going on. Remember, if you guys are sending reports in to me on Twitter, no matter what it's about, uh, please also tag the local National Weather Service as well. They could use that stuff too.
All right. All right. So back into uh, radar coverage mode here. We're going to look at a loop of these storms. And, and one thing that I'm noticing is that there's so much shear. There's so much shear in place that all the tops of these things are getting flung like 100 miles away from the base of the storm very quickly, um, which is obviously like one of the reasons why they're spinning, but it could be something that also uh, might uh, destabilize or, or just kind of uh, not allow the storm to get, uh, mature as much as it needs to, which is something that we can hope for. I'm just looking for like good signs here, things that we are positive that we can look for um, as these storms continue to try to uh, produce tornadoes. Uh, we've got a pretty concerning one working right up towards Shreveport. This storm's moving almost due north. Uh, so uh, Shreveport, I would definitely be watching out for this one. It's not rotating a lot just yet, but it's got that look uh, like these other ones to your west did before they produced tornadoes. Uh, so well, that's what we're looking at now. So uh, the storm has moved past Marshall, Texas. We've got a new tornado warning for Jefferson, Smithland, and Lodi, Texas now. Um, I, I haven't seen any reports from Marshall saying that there was a tornado down. So maybe, hopefully this one isn't. Uh, but it, uh, it's something that we should definitely continue watching. That. That's one of the craziest radar loops. You can see the exact spot where these storms are getting smeared off. By that just insanely strong uh, wind layer just ab uh, above the surface and in the upper layer. Look at that. That's crazy. Fascinating. This is the most concerning rotation signature on the map right now, though. The one that just went past Marshall and now it's working up towards Jefferson. Well, again, there was one that was near Jefferson earlier that produced a debris signature. Um, that one has kind of faded out a little bit. But this one is new, and Jefferson also needs to be watching out for that one. All of East Texas really needs to be hyper aware right now. Okay, let's use the Radar Omega uh, app here. Um, and by the way, if you guys have the Radar Omega app, there's three storm chasers right here along this storm. So you can literally see it from every angle. You can click on Brett Adair's feed. And he's heading, uh, I believe he's going east now. Uh, you can look at Brad. Sorry, I know that was probably really loud. Uh, and you can just click on these guys and keep up with the storm as they move off to the east. The storm that is approaching Dallas still looks very, very strong. There's a big gust front in front of it. You see this? Um, you see this? How you can kind of see something trying to pop up out in front of the line here? That's where the, some of the stronger winds are actually happening, way out in front of the storm. That's interesting to see. I'd switch to velocity here. Yeah, very strong winds way out in front of the actual precipitation. So as this moves into Fort Worth and Dallas and uh, Denton, which just got a new severe thunderstorm warning, uh, it's going to, you're going to get the big gust of wind first. The sky is going to get real dark. Uh, you'll see the lightning and then it'll start raining and hailing. Oh my God, why didn't nobody tell me about this? There's a daggone camera in Marshall that we could have been looking at. Come on, chat. Where you at? I think that was the, the, the smokehouse that I called out to. What was that?
Bear Creek Smokehouse. can't find that i found their website but it like it just wants me to buy meat but honestly i'm interested i'm, I'm gonna bookmark it i'll come back but <laughs> i'm more interested in the uh the camera A new tornado warning has been issued okay so we got a new tornado warning for choctaw county oklahoma Choctaw County, Oklahoma. That'll include, um, I believe, Hugo. Yeah. So this one, this one's rotating uh, very, like it's got a huge rotation signature on it. Um, and it's going to continue to move east uh, towards Valiant. Um, but the, I still think the biggest problem with this one's going to be the large two inch in diameter hail. Time to start updating y'all's insurance policies and lowering those deductibles. Crazy weather season here. It, yeah. Uh, Chris, thanks for becoming a, a, a moderate risker. Ryan back at it again. Thanks for taking care of y'all. Uh, Tracy, thanks so much for being a member for 14 months. Uh, 71 mile per hour wind gust on the severe just west of Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, Ryan and crew virtual virtual rail fan has cameras in Fort Worth and Big Sandy. Oh, uh, can we get well? We're all good on on chasers right now, aren't we? Where, where which one? Where is he? Oh, Brandon Clements in Marshall, Texas. Okay, so here we go. We've got a storm chaser on the storm that is producing the big, uh, big rotation signature there. And I definitely saw a lowering. Uh, um, that we definitely saw something there. I don't know if that was a, a nader or not. So... Okay, that's great though. We've got um, uh, Brandon Clement on the board here. And if he sees, he's following this storm near uh, Marshall, Texas, that uh, might be trying to produce or just did produce a tornado uh, as it moves up towards Jefferson. So we're going to keep him. Um, actually, let's probably put him in the number one spot. Can we do that? Okay, yeah. Uh, Sarah Z says, hey, Ryan, I'm watching you from Rhode Island. Thank you and the team for all you do to keep us safe. I hope you never have to do a live about my area. But I'll know I'll be watching from my bathtub if you do. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Guys, if you're just now tuning in, uh, we're, we're, we've had a, a couple of tornadoes uh, out here in East Texas. And we're, we're tracking all these storms that have been causing them. They look, they, uh, it's hard to track these with radar. Uh, because some of the ones that look like, okay, that one's going to produce a tornado, they don't. And then some of the ones that look like they're nothing are then producing tornadoes. So we're getting a lot of help today uh, from, a, um, uh, from our storm chasers who are on the ground and giving us live video of the tornadoes as they happen. Brad Arnold has been the MVP today coming up uh, a, a, a hair, literally a hair's distance away from these things 
and allowing us to see the exact streets that they're on as they uh, move on. Thankfully, I don't think any major uh, residential areas have been hit. I haven't heard any major damage reports just yet, but there was definitely a strong tornado on the ground with one of these storms earlier, and they continue to look like that they could make that happen again. So I'm watching uh, this storm uh, up down here south and east of Atlanta, Texas, and to the west of Rodessa, Louisiana. That one is looking a little gnarly to me. That's going to move up into Arkansas. Um, and then the one just to the south of Shreveport continues to look uh, like it's trying to rotate uh, more and more. One thing that I'm noticing, though, is if I put this into motion, let me pull the radar pull here. If I pull this um, into motion, I mean, these storms are trying to kind of explode, right? But <laughs> they're exploding into um, a, a river of just incredibly fast winds that's kind of tearing the storm apart and sending the majority of it off to the east. Do you guys see that? That's helping the storm spin uh, to some extent, but it's also lowering their ability to become really uh, established, in my opinion. So, um, Hopefully that keeps these storms at bay, but man, this one coming up towards um, uh, Jefferson still looks pretty concerning to me. I hope everybody in Jefferson uh, to Texas is in their safe spot right now. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, go ahead, Riley. Just going to let you know that I just issued a PDS thunderstorm warning for Fort Worth, Texas. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. So... The main show is getting ready to um, happen here in Fort Worth, Texas, guys. They just issued a destructive tornado, uh, I'm sorry, destructive severe thunderstorm warning uh, for Fort Worth. This includes Kendall, Mansfield, Richard, uh, North Richland Hills, Lakeside, and Keller. The destructive severe thunderstorm warning is for 80 mile per hour winds, which is a lot of times... Um, what the uh, what a, a smaller tornado is. So th we basically got tornado force winds in a very large area, getting ready to hit a large uh, metropolitan area. So hopefully everybody out here is prepared for this. It's going to come through quick. It's going to ride the I twenty corridor into the western side of town, swipe through Interstate thirty five, probably producing damage. In fact, I've got reports now that we <coughs> we're seeing <coughs> sorry power flashes in Weatherford right now um, as this is uh, crashing through into Fort Worth and Dallas. Uh, so, I mean, we, you guys have, ho hopefully you've known this is, this one's been coming uh, for a while. We've been talking about this. Um, but uh, if you, if you're just now hearing about it, you've got about 30 minutes, maybe. Um, uh, uh, who does? Okay, go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I wanted to tell everyone in chat who may be watching in this area because I know we have a lot here. They will probably sound the tornado sirens for this destructive severe as they do with with uh, the upper level tiers of severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, but the, the tornado threat in this line is going to be rather muted in comparison to, you know, the consistent damaging winds that it will bring and possibly wind driven hail as well as it moves into the metro uh so that will be true for both uh, fort worth and eventually dallas if this line maintains its strength which it probably will uh, so uh if you are in fort worth area you'll probably be hearing those tornado sirens pretty soon if if you can hear them from inside they're meant to be heard when you're outside so don't rely on the on hearing them to let you know what's going on when you're inside you need uh multiple uh, ways to receive warnings and updates of course but i just wanted to give a heads up that you'll probably hear those sirens going off that's a good thing that's what we want uh people outside to take shelter in a dangerous or a uh, p particularly dangerous situation severe thunderstorm warning so that's what i wanted to say about that where they are but i want to have a window that i can pull browser for the fort worth camera <clears throat> hey ryan we have brian allen intercepting the gust front right now with his anemometer on he says the winds right now are 63.5 miles an hour wow uh repeat that 60 what 63.5 is the gust he just got okay all right 
So, uh, guys, uh, Brian Allen, uh, one of our storm chasers here, let me show you the multi view. Um, it is recording uh, 63 mile per hour winds out ahead of this uh, storm that is moving uh, very rapidly uh, towards um, uh, Dallas and Fort Worth and Denton. Yeah, so uh, Brian is just to the north of Fort Worth as that moves in. All right, I'm going to try to give us a, a, a ground view of Fort Worth. Where do I go to log in there, Carly? Okay. All right. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a yeah around rush hour traffic here in the DFW as well. Not going to be a good situation if this thing maintains strength. And guys, our, our good friends at Virtual Rail Fan, awesome YouTube channel. You guys should subscribe to them. There's a link in the description. Um, they're allowing us to look at their cameras. So Virtual Rail Fan has a ton of uh, cameras all around the, the United States that kind of like watch trains, but they also have the sky in them. So, like, we're, we're, we're able to utilize that to help us figure out what's going on with these storms. A new tornado warning. So, has huge been shout out to Virtual Rail Fan. You guys should subscribe to him. Uh, what do, where do I go, Carly? <laughs> Watch trains now? Oh, okay. All right, give me just a second, guys. I'm gonna, I, I just want to make sure we have a camera here. Um, Fort Worth. All right. Okay, we got it. We're, we're in. Uh, so we'll be able to, to keep up with this um, as the storm moves in. Uh, and I believe it's ETZ operated too, so if it needs to be moved... Uh, it will. Okay. I'm going to keep it down here uh, for now. All right. So uh, if you're just now tuning in, we've got a considerable, or I'm sorry, a destructive severe thunderstorm moving into Fort Worth. Um, it just went through Weatherford, and we've got a storm chaser on the ground out here who is uh, telling us that they've already recorded a 65-mile-an-hour wind gust before the storm even got there. This is along the gust front. Uh, you guys are going to feel this, if you haven't already felt it, um, very soon. Um, uh, that is, uh, it's getting ready to come through Fort Worth, and it's probably going to cause damage and power outages on its way through. Okay? Uh, we're getting all, watch has been issued. all kinds of reports of uh, very strong um, damaging winds coming in from the Weatherford area, including power uh, flashes. 18 wheelers are down are flipped over all up and down interstate 20 here uh, and this is exactly what's coming in to fort worth right now <clears throat> and uh, brian allen is out in front of this thing so we should be able to see the shelf as it gets closer Keep forgetting I need to view Twitter through Edge. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be a really ominous view when this starts coming through, guys. Um, a shelf cloud. <laughs> if some of the pictures that I'm seeing of it, um, if that's what it looks like as it comes through Dallas, that's going to be uh, quite the sight. A new tornado watch has been issued. Oh, wow. Brian uh, M. Finger also uh, caught that tornado today. 
uh, south of Linden, Texas. And I'm retweeting that video. He got drone video of it. If you guys want to see that, uh, at Brian Enfinger on Twitter or just go to mine and look at my retweets. Uh, there is <laughs> there is a lot of people talking about sirens going off uh, in uh, the the DFW area. Uh, Andy just came on here and he uh, he explained it very well. Okay, this is what's getting ready to happen is we've got a destructive severe thunderstorm coming in with potentially up to eighty mile per hour winds. That is warranted to to sound the tornado sirens. Okay, um, so there's not a tornado warning, but it's just as bad. Okay, so take shelter just as if uh, there it, there was a tornado warning. If you're in the the Fort Worth area, the Dallas proper is not necessarily under the warning yet, but this storm will eventually make it to you. And also, we do have that new tornado watch. New tornado watch here for um, uh, Arkansas in northern portions of Louisiana uh, until midnight tonight uh, a few tornadoes likely scattered a uh, hail up to tennis ball size likely um and then uh widespread gusts up to 80 miles per hour likely new tornado watch here for this uh, more eastern area this includes 1.1 million people if you know anybody out there please let them know what's up Hey, Ryan, if you look up uh, feed number one, Brandon Clement has damage. Okay. Uh, Brandon Clement, um, Storm Chaser from um, Live Storms Media in Jefferson, Texas, does have damage here. And uh, I, I don't know if he's in the path of the, uh, the, the tornado that produced that debris signature from earlier or if this is from the more recent storm. Or not, but definitely uh, just further confirmation uh, that we've got these uh, tornadic storms uh, trying to cause problems out here tonight in um, eastern Texas. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm going back and I'm looking at the radar <laughs> over here, and I think that these storms are, are getting just absolutely torn apart by uh, the winds aloft. Uh, I, I look at all the energy that was put into these storms and then immediately swiped away. Um, I think that might keep us from having a big tornado outbreak out here. I, 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 I really do. But the, the fact of the matter is, is these, the storms that are still here in any new storm that decides to pop up is going to be uh, rotating, just like we saw earlier. And uh, we have to be hyper vigilant and we have to watch these uh, as they move up towards Texarkana, Hope, Camden, and El Dorado. We can't let our guards down, all right? This is going to continue to be a big problem tonight as that warm sector still exists. The, the favorability uh, for the conditions to be there for tornadoes still exists. Any new storm that pops up is going to be a new problem that we have to deal with. Uh, for now, though, we are kind of focused on the Dallas Fort, Fort Worth area. By the way, Denton, Texas, the it's right on your door. You're probably getting 60 mile an hour wind gusts right now, intermittently at least. Uh, and the, the rain and the hail is going to start right here in a little bit. Uh, Tracy Lee, thank you for the very generous super chat. Take care, y'all, in the danger zone. Uh, thanks to Ryan for his weather know-how and uh, commitment to keep us updated, along with the amazing storm chasers watching from Connecticut. Thank you so much, Tracy Lee. Kevin's been a member for 23 months. Thank you, Ryan, and, you, and to your team for keeping us safe. Janet, gifted five memberships. Very generous of you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Rilquin, Nicole. Uh, and Taryn says, I'm in Fort Worth right now. I just got home and the tornado alarms went off and, and the wind is rough. Uh, Grandma loves you, says, keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Grandma. 
Yeah, the sirens are going to be going off in Fort Worth, guys. They're sounding the sirens because this is a destructive, severe thunderstorm. All right, this is not your regular, everyday, um, average thunderstorm here. Let me... Uh, Okay, this is a view of the storm as it comes into Fort Worth from Brian Allen. I've got to refresh my place files. WS3, there we go. Brian, what's it looking like out there, buddy? A new tornado warning has been... Hey, Ryan, it is getting real windy. It's bearing down on us right now. Um, I had a 52-mile-an-hour gust on the ammometer. Uh, they got reports of 80, so we'll see what we get here. But uh, we moved away from the power lines because I'm not sure if I trust them or not. Okay, so, guys, we have a new confirmed tornado warning. I'm getting absolutely rocked right now. Um, somewhere over here near Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana is in this warning. Uh, I don't know if, um, uh, if we can see it through radar or not, but let me read the text here. Uh, tornado warning for Webster Parish, Caddo Parish and Bossier Parish in Northwestern Louisiana. Uh, at 5.49 p.m. Central, a confirmed tornado was located over Foster's or uh, over Bossier City, moving north at 30 miles per hour. Weather spotters confirmed a tornado at 5.40 p.m. Central. The tornado was spotted southeast of Shreveport. Who are these weather spotters? And do we have visual on this thing? Uh, because this is in a, a pretty... Uh, populated area here. Uh, so once again, Shreveport, Louisiana, y'all, is under a tornado warning right now, a confirmed tornado warning. And apparently we've got a tornado on the ground somewhere around Bossier City, or Bossier City. I hope I'm saying that right. Bossier? Bossier City? Okay, sorry. Bossier City uh, in the Shreveport area. The the radar, I mean, you really can't tell nothing about it, man. Uh, but, it, you know, this is where we say respect the polygon. Everybody in this uh, purple box here needs to be in their safe spots. Halton, Shreveport, Bosher City, and Cotton Valley um, in Caddo, Webster, and Bosher Parish in Louisiana. Take shelter immediately. Yeah, it's confirmed. 210,000 people are in that um, warning, by the way. I can't... I... Yeah, I can't see much of anything. Uh... Okay, this is, is looking pretty concerning too. Bryce Shelton, is he with us? Is he on the screen? Can you see his video? Is there anything on it? Okay, can you pull him up? Probably, I don't know. Right. Why don't you just send me the, his RTMP link? Um, uh, Bryce, are you seeing anything out there, buddy? The radar looks really convincing. All right, by the way, so we've got Brian Allen in this storm that is uh, getting ready Nothing to go through. Nothing at the moment. Trying to get out of these trees. 
We've got Brian Allen that's in this storm that's going through Fort Worth. Um, and we've got a couple storm chasers who are facing storms farther to the east that are producing tornadoes. I'm sorry, guys, but we have to be all over the place. So many things are happening. Um, Riley, go ahead. Uh, okay, so he's currently yelling wind speeds in my ear, but I've heard 76, 72. He just had a power flash, two power poles down. The power is currently out, 78, 79. Oh my God. So th there's a lot of wind here. He confirmed power flashes. Unfortunately, his feed went out during the 81. His feed went out during the power flashes, but this is a serious thunderstorm and he's hoping he can keep up with it to keep covering it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Riley, uh, who is in contact with our storm chasers here. Um, Brian Allen is uh, taking the brunt of the uh, severe thunderstorm moving into Fort Worth right now. His current location is uh, somewhere between Sansom Park and Hazlitt on the northern side of Fort Worth. And uh, he's reporting uh, maybe over uh, hurricane force winds uh, moving into the A Fort Worth area right now. Has been issued. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so this is coming into Fort Worth. Remember, Fort Worth has a destructive severe thunderstorm warning right now. And... That is uh, for 80 mile per hour winds. Guys, that, that causes major damage. Uh, some tornadoes have 80 mile per hour winds. All right. Uh, so this is getting ready to cross over I-35 as well. So this is going to cause a huge mess out here. We've got a storm chaser on the ground confirming these wind speeds as it moves into the DFW area. We're going to see power outages for sure. And uh, we do have a, um, a storm chaser now on the storm that is, looks to me like it's producing a tornado, uh, or it was there for a second near Atlanta, Texas. And we just got a new warning on that as well. So, dang. So things are getting nuts out here once again. We still got that confirmed tornado warning down here uh, near Shreveport. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I, I don't see it on radar, but we're just going to take those storm spotters words for it and get in our safe spot in Red Shoot, Princeton, Crouch, Couchwood and Cotton Valley in Louisiana. Okay, Denton, Texas just went destructive. Okay, so we've got a new, oh my goodness, we got a new destructive severe thunderstorm warning now that includes uh, Denton, Texas, Louisville, Double Oak, um, and Corinth. So this will make the tornado sirens go off again. All right, the, the tornado sirens are going to go off in Denton. They're going to go off probably in, into Hebron and Carrollton and Richardson as well. Uh, maybe even as far at, over as into Plano, Texas, and Frisco and Proper. I'm sorry, Prosper. Um, this is a destructive severe thunderstorm warning for 80 mile per hour winds as this comes into Denton. Riley, who's this from? Is this Brian? Yes, this is Brian Allen, and that's the power flash. This is a. This is just moments ago as the storm enters Fort Worth. The power flash is the very beginning oh, of the video. Oh, okay. Wow. Dang. So as you can see, uh, an incredibly uh, dangerous situation unfolding here for the DFW area as hurricane force winds are moving into the area right now. Uh, and guys, as always, if you want to send stuff to me, uh, at Ryan Hall, y'all on uh, Twitter, make sure you tag your local national weather service, but please don't do so unless you can do so safely. Okay. Um, if you want to send damage reports and pictures after the storm, that's just as fine as sending the stuff while the storm is going on. Okay. We don't want to put anybody in danger here. Um, uh, trying to get uh, footage of, a of, of strong winds. 
We've got plenty of ways to get that. And, and honestly, there's only so much you can show with, with high winds. We, we just got to hope that people take this one seriously and they take shelter. But I do see y'all uh, helping me out on Twitter. I really do appreciate all of the uh, all of the the uh, the support. I'm trying to see if this uh, rail fan camera, we're zoomed in on a train right now, and that's fine because that's, that's what it's for, right? <laughs> but you can see the, the trees are starting to sway a little bit more. Uh, we're definitely getting some stronger wind gusts here in, in Fort Worth, wherever this is. But this is, I don't think that this is a underneath the storm yet, if you know what I mean. Uh, it looks like there's 15,000 people without power in Parker County right now. Uh, Wise County's got 3,000 people. Uh, Tarrant and Dallas counties uh, only have about 2,000 people without power combined right now. I think that number is going to increase exponentially. Yeah, so Denton, Louisville, Fort Worth, Lake Worth, Benbrook, Arlington, Texas, Mansfield, all these places are under a destructive severe thunderstorm warning, and the, the tornado sirens will be going off because of that. Oh, and here is some of the first uh, damage uh, pictures I've seen from Picton, Texas. This is that little town that Brad Arnold was near uh, when that tornado came down without warning um, and uh, just kind of uh, went through this area here. It does look like there was some damage to homes and trees. Uh, Pi uh, Pirate Titan, thank you so much for sending that in. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we're watching a destructive severe thunderstorm move into Dallas and, and Fort Worth, Texas with 80 mile per hour winds. At the same time, we've got uh, storms producing tornadoes uh, over here uh, to the east uh, around the Texarkana and Shreveport, Louisiana area. All right. Uh, we, this storm up here where Bryce Shelton is, um, I mean, <laughs> it looks like it's trying really hard to produce a tornado. A new tornado warning has been issued. And we've got another confirmed tornado warning in uh, Bossier Parish, Louisiana. So we've got a confirmed tornado down here near Shreveport. That, that was confirmed by weather spotters. So, like, we can't see it on radar. Uh, we just have to take their word for it and, and get to shelter uh, all the way up to Cotton Valley and Red Chute. Um, we think that there's a tornado happening or about to happen here near Folk and Texarkana. 
uh, as well. And then we also have a big tornado warning up here in Oklahoma that's going to go all the way over towards areas just north of Broken Bow uh, over the next 25 minutes or so. There's just so much going on. And, and Carly, if you see anything pop up on Bryce's feed, just holler at me because he, he, I've got a feeling he's going to cut the corner here and there's going to be a tornado right in front of him. Okay. Currently have three tornado warnings. They're all to the east of Dallas, but Fort Worth, Denton, all these places here are currently getting hit by a destructive severe thunderstorm. It's not in Dallas yet. Uh, it's still uh, several minutes away from Dallas, uh, but as it approaches Dallas, um, things are going to get uh, a little feisty out here for sure. Got tornado sirens going off in Tarrant. Remember, uh, pictures and videos uh, at Ryan Hall, y'all. Uh, we got more storm pictures in the middle of Picton, Texas. Not my images shared with permission from Nathan Bailey. Yeah, Picton, this is that uh this is where the tornado first formed that Brad Arnold caught. Are we um up to date now, Carly, with Bryce's feet on my end? Okay. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take this over here and and just show you some of the reports that are coming in uh because they're, they they are substantial. This is a very damaging wind event uh that's happening here. Uh we got a 70 mile per hour wind gust. Um in, in Fort Worth, we got a 70 mile an hour wind gust also on the top on the northern side of the city. It's measured at the National Weather Service office in Fort Worth. So this is probably causing pretty significant damage PBS right thunderstorm now. thunderstorm warning for Dallas. Okay, and we've got the, the new PDS warning, and this now includes Dallas. We have a, a destructive severe thunderstorm warning uh, for Dallas, guys. Here's a look at that, um, that imagery. Um, winds up to 80 miles per hour, small hail. Guys, 3.8 million people are in this warning. And here's why it's important, I think, that we communicate this message uh, in a way that's more than just, oh, there's a severe thunderstorm warning. Because this tag right here, a lot of people don't pay attention to this. This is a life-threatening situation. Seek shelter now. A lot of times when you get a tornado warning, people at least pay attention. Severe thunderstorm warnings, a lot of people write off as something that's like, okay, well, whatever. This is different. A destructive severe thunderstorm warning means that this is a life-threatening situation, and we need to treat it as if it's a tornado warning. I want you to get to your tornado shelter right now if you're in Dallas, Texas, okay? Um, please get to shelter as if you are under a tornado warning. If you are in Dallas, McKinney, Allen, Frisco, um, uh, Hutchins, uh, Duncanville, or Farmersville, any of these places in uh, the Texas that are under this warning, treat this as if it is a tornado coming for you because it essentially is, all right? 
In fact, this, this could be worse than a tornado. A lot of times tornadoes affect small areas, right? They, there's just like one row of houses that get hit. Well, this will, this is, you know, 50 miles long of 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. And it's going to cause a much more widespread area of damage. So, uh, please don't write this off as just another severe thunderstorm warning. This is a very significant line of storms getting ready to come through the Dallas area. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. Bryce Shelton has a blocked road on his feed. Okay, it looks like uh, storm chaser Bryce Shelton um, has come across some tornado, uh, maybe some tornado damage, certainly some wind damage here. As uh, in Miller, uh, I believe he's in Miller County, Arkansas. Yeah, he's just south of Texarkana. And I believe that was probably caused uh, by a tornado, that thing that we've been watching uh, for a while on radar over here. By the way, guys, we still got a tornado warning for Rocky Mount, Ivan, and Cotton Valley in Louisiana. Uh, we still got a tornado warning for Texarkana and Mayton and Dooley over here in Arkansas. And we still have a tornado warning for Mount Hermon in Oklahoma. Y'all need to be in your safe spots, okay? Uh, Katie... Pausch. Uh, Katie uh, says, I have been uh, texting everyone I know in the DFW and surrounding areas. Uh, that is great. Please continue to do that. I don't think, once again, I know people, uh, they take the, the tornado warning seriously, and I'm very glad that they are sounding the tornado sirens right now in Dallas because, um, it's important that everybody knows that this destructive severe thunderstorm warning is this pretty much the same thing as a tornado warning. And we need to all get to our safe spots. In fact, radar, and, and this is just blowing my mind here, uh, radar is showing some areas of over 100 mile per hour winds, uh, only a few hundred feet above the surface near Fort Worth. This destructive line of storms is moving directly towards the DFW Metroplex, and it's already halfway through it, uh, at least on the Fort Worth side. Yeah, don't be scared. Be prepared. Um, you've still got time in Dallas. Um, if you're in Carrollton, Irving, Duncanville, or Cedar Hill, uh, you've, you've got some time that this is moving pretty quick, but you can still kind of gather your, you know, if you if there's anything that you've got to do to prepare for 80 mile per hour winds, I don't know your situation. I don't know where you are, what kind of building you're in, what you have outside. You know what I'm saying? So whatever you've got to do to prepare for 80 mile per hour winds, start doing it now over here in Dallas because you don't have much longer. Hopefully you've already done it because we've been hollering about Dallas all day. I don't know how long we've been live, but we've been calling this out since we've started. Um, and but if you if you've got last minute um, arrangements you need to make, do them now because this is getting ready to come through Dallas here. And of course there is a live camera. Um, on the Radar Omega app that we'll be able to check in with as well um, uh, on, in the app here. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, Ethan, or yeah, Ethan Galvin sends this video in from Lake Worth, Texas as some of the strong winds on the front side are starting to come through. You can see that gust front. The rain hasn't even started here, and we have huge um, surges of wind coming in.
new information this tornado warning has been up okay so we've got a confirmed tornado warning now for miller and bowie counties in texas and lafayette county in arkansas man my my lights aren't working but we're sounding this the alarm anyways and guys i think we got um yeah, so I think we have a couple of uh, storm chasers on this confirmed tornado right now. I know Bryce Shelton's on it. I believe Brett Adair is too. Is that what we're seeing there on Brett's stream? Yeah, this is a live look uh, from storm chaser Brett Adair near Texarkana, Texas, at uh, what looks to me like a, a developing tornado. If that's it might actually be on the ground right now. All of our storm chasers pretty much are converging on this storm. Oh yeah, I think I see it. I think I see it on the ground there. Maybe. Yep, there we go. Guys, this is a live look uh, from Storm Chaser uh, Brett Adair uh, just to the south and east of Texarkana. I don't see his locator dot anymore. Brett's dot has not been working all day. Uh, hey, Brett. Uh How's it going? <laughs> Give us an update whenever you get a chance. <laughs> I don't. Can you send me a link? <laughs> what? Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah. Guys, uh, if you're just now tuning in, there's a whole lot going on right now, and, and I'm trying to adequately cover both sides of this. We've got a tornado on the ground here um, near Texarkana, and we've got storm chasers that are approaching it and that are on it. I'm trying to uh, cover that, but we also have a very significant damaging storm moving through the Dallas-Fort Worth metro, um, and I'm also trying to make sure that we, uh, we adequately cover that. Tons of wind reports coming in, 70 miles per hour, 77 official National Weather Service observation of a 77 mile per hour uh, wind gust in the DFW area, okay? Um, and my goodness, uh, Brett, I think Brett Adair is like right next to uh, this thing. His locator dot still not working on my end. Oh, but there it is. You can see it in, in Radar Omega. Why didn't I think about that? Yeah, so uh, Brett Adair is literally right underneath the uh, rotation. Um, if you guys want to keep up with that too, you can just click on Brett Adair's little icon here in the app. Uh, there's 400 of you in here watching this right now. Um, he's... a uh, about to, I think he's trying to point this at the tornado for us, but obviously the, the, there's trees in the way. As soon as that um, isn't a thing, uh, we will likely see um, uh, the tornado here. So we have a confirmed tornado near Texarkana um, moving up towards uh, Boyd, Giona, Lakewood Estates, Artex, McKinney, Dooley, and all these places in Arkansas. Can you give me a refresh on Brett's on our end? Because I'm he's way ahead of that. Or actually, oh, the names are just switched. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm, a, I'm ahead of you. Okay, so this is a live look over here at Texarkana. Um, uh, yeah. It, I mean, it's kind of in both, right? Texarkana is... Like right on the border. 
Uh, anyways, uh, we've got a tornado down over here. We're watching that move off to the north and east. Uh, but we, at the same time, guys, we've got um, a very si serious situation unfolding here uh, in um, um, uh, uh, Dallas as well as we've got a basically a big land hurricane getting ready to come through <coughs> uh, and, and possibly cause some significant damage here. I'm hoping that it dies out a little bit before it gets into the DF or into the actual Dallas Metro. But from what we're seeing, um, it, there, it's causing damage in Fort Worth. So it's probably going to do the same thing out there in uh, Dallas. Wow, there's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people on Radar Omega. Right? I've never seen that many. There's almost a thousand people watching Brett's feed in the Radar Omega app. <clears throat> Go ahead, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, the extent of this line that's headed through the DFW Metro right now, all the way down to the south. We're about one county out in terms of severe thunderstorm warning coverage here uh, from Austin and uh, and to the north of Austin. So Austin and north is about to receive a, a row of severe thunderstorm warnings from these that these storms that are expanded all the way down south here. Some of them are also, you know, reaching the considerable severe thunderstorm warning level, which may spark also um, tornado sirens, depending on the county and the emergency management there. However, even sa further south of that San Antonio, you guys will still see very gusty winds. And the reason for that is because uh, this uh, cold front that's passing through, there's still non-thunderstorm wind gusts of 65 miles an hour or greater all the way to the Mexico border. So that is going, without a doubt, going to sweep through the San Antonio metro, even with or without rain. And it's going to sweep through the Austin metro, whether you get rain and hail or not, along with those winds. So this line of thunderstorms is going to bring conditions, uh, gusty conditions, rather, to those metros as well down the I-35 corridor. So I figured I'd give you guys an, uh, a, a, a warning beforehand. Uh, Y'all watch out. Okay, thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill. Uh, and our Fort Worth, Texas rail fan camera has lost power, it looks like. So um, lots of people losing power out here. That's going to continue to happen. Uh, last we checked, I think we had like 15,000 people without power out there in Parker County. Now we've got 20,000. Um, and in Tarrant County, we've got 51,000 people without power, putting us over 100,000 people without power in Texas now. Um, we are still watching our uh, tornado uh, warned storm near Texarkana through storm chaser Brett Adair's camera. Um, and I believe we've still got it there. It's right in front of him. Um, a, we've, we've got this huge rotating storm. Uh, I believe it's still producing a tornado and it's going to continue to do so as it moves up towards uh, Mandeville and Genoa over here in Arkansas. Okay. Uh, so this is uh this is this one's been doing the the thing for a while. We've been watching this since it was born, basically back here uh, in in southeastern Texas, and now as it moves into Arkansas, it is uh, actually producing a tornado. So uh, we've got a tornado warning here uh, for uh, Lafayette County in Arkansas. New information. Uh, this we've got uh, Bossier Parish and Webster Parish in Louisiana. And then we have a um, uh, a new tornado warning, a PDS tornado warning from McCurtain County, Oklahoma. <clears throat> All right, man. Okay, so now we have three or four different places to uh, to kind of hone in on here. Let me take you guys down to McCurtain County. Air thunderstorm capable McCurtain. Okay, so yeah, this storm right here up in southeastern Oklahoma is now prompting a uh, PDS uh, tornado warning. And um, more than likely, uh, this is somewhere around Mount Hermon right now. Mount Hermon right now. So we have a PDS tornado warning in Oklahoma. 
Uh, that means it's a particularly dangerous situation. This is a life-threatening situation. You have to take shelter. Um, the National Weather Service only issues these kinds of warnings uh, whenever uh, there is a significant uh, a tornado on the ground that is capable of, um, uh, you know, producing uh, tornadoes. Uh, it, it, and, and we've radar, it, that's radar indicated. So we, I don't think we have any other sort of a con, uh, confirmation. All right. Uh, mesocyclone potential in the radar hole. This is a problem that we have out here. This is the radar hole. You've heard me complain about this before. I think we have a lot of people watching right now. If you don't know about this issue, these guys down here where uh, maybe a huge tornado is happening right now pay the same amount of t taxes as the uh, people closer to the radar, but they can't know if there's a tornado near them because for whatever reason, they don't have a radar. They're going too soon, uh, but this is a problem that needs to be fixed across the country, um, and uh, we should all know that and repeat that as much as possible. Anyways, that's, that's happening. If you're in McCurtain County, Oklahoma, anyone out there, anywhere out there in McCurtain County, Oklahoma, you got to be running, not walking to shelter as a PDS tornado warning is one of the highest level warnings that you can get. Do not blow this one off, okay? Um, let's see here. Back down south a little bit. Still seeing that uh, rotation over here near Texarkana, and I think we can still see the base of the storm. Um, uh, up there through Brett Adair's uh, feed. I don't know if it's still producing a tornado, but we're going to uh, pretend like it is if we're in Texarkana, Dooley, Mandeville, Pop, or Clear Lake Junction uh, because, uh, hey, what do you got to lose? Bring me with you. Bring the phone. Bring the tablet. Let's go down into the cellar, the basement, wherever, the interior room of your home. Let's throw on a helmet just in case, and let's let, let's watch, and, and I'll tell you when it's time to, to leave and, and come out of there. We're going to get through this. We just want to be extra cautious about the potential, uh, you know, bad situation that could come out of this. Now, back over here to the west. In Dallas, um, we still have a destructive severe thunderstorm warning for Dallas. This is going to bring in 80 mile per hour winds uh, or around there to McKinney, Fairview, Allen, Plano, Dallas, Irving, and Duncanville and Cedar Hill within the next couple of minutes. Please take shelter as if you're under a tornado warning in Dallas. And we have tons of considerable severe thunderstorm warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings all up and down this line. Uh, once again, even Austin, Texas is going to get slammed by some, some strong storms here in the next couple of hours as this moves off to the east. All right. Lots and lots of stuff happening out here, guys. Oh, what did I do? Panels. I want one panel. A new tornado warning has been issued. Oh, boy. Okay, well now we've got a, a tornado warning for Dallas County, Texas. Uh, this includes downtown Dallas. Um... All right, let's go zoom in on that. Let's see what's going on there. Once again, I hope that everybody is already in their tornado shelters, right? Because we've been telling y'all for who knows how long to get there because of the incoming damaging winds. But now on the front side of this storm, uh, we are seeing uh, some uh, convergence. We're seeing some areas where we could see spin up tornadoes and we can add to the threat uh, that we originally had with the widespread damaging winds. Now, not only do we have a large wall of hurricane force winds getting ready to come through the Dallas area, somewhere in there, we could have a spin up tornado and add to the uh, potential uh, damaging storm as it comes through. So this is going to go right through one of the more populated areas of Dallas on the south side, um, Crockle Hill, Oak Cliff, uh, Ledbetter Hills, Duncanville, Hutchins, uh, Lancaster, Wilmer, Patrick, uh, Riley, Kleberg, um, Sand Branch, all these places in Dallas need to be getting to shelter right now. Uh, what is this, Carly? Okay, all right. And all right, 
We have a camera in Austin, Texas that we can pull to if we need to. Well, this is certainly popped off uh, today. Um, thank you to everybody for who's tuning in. Hopefully, uh, we're getting the word out to as many people as possible uh, because, uh, there, I mean, there's just some really intricate and interesting uh, things that are happening with these storms. The wording of destructive severe thunderstorm warning and all that stuff is, is different, and um, I, I just hope that we're able to communicate all the hazards here. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, we do have a, a tornado warning in Dallas. We have a tornado warning in Dallas. Uh, please take shelter now if you're in Dallas, Texas. Um, and it looks like we've got uh, some damage out here near Shreveport. Yeah, uh, near LSU uh, in, in Shreveport. Pretty significant damage here. Uh, from the the tornado uh, that we saw earlier, that tornado warning that came through that we couldn't necessarily see on radar. So a pretty significant damage from that one coming in uh, there. And uh, that's Daniel uh, Jovic. I'm going to retweet that one. Man, things have really uh, went from zero to 100 here very fast. Uh, and lots of you guys are sending me pictures and videos of trees being down in Dallas. Lots of trees down in Dallas. Power outages left and right being reported in Dallas. Yeah, you got to get to shelter. You got to get to shelter if you live in Dallas, y'all. We are now, uh, we still have 100,000 people without power in, in, in Texas, uh, but I think that's going to go up pretty fast. If you're just now tuning in, uh, this is live severe weather coverage. We've got a tornado warning for Dallas, Texas. Uh, we need everybody in Dallas County, Texas, to take shelter immediately. Uh, this is a huge line of storms that's coming through the area right now. Sherman, you're getting in on it. Plano, Texas, you're going to see it here in the next little bit. This whole line of storms could cause anywhere from 60 to 80 mile per hour winds. But inside of that line, right around Dallas, there could be enough rotation to actually add a spin-up tornado on top of that. Uh, now, down here towards Waxahachie, um, and uh, Hillsboro, Texas, you guys are also under a, a, tor a severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile per hour winds all the way through the next hour. Uh, so basically anybody that gets hit by this big line of storms here as it moves off to the east is going to have the potential to receive uh, damaging winds, okay? Yeah, uh, we're also getting reports of windows being blown out of businesses in the Weatherford area. So that was even before the storm came through uh, Fort Worth. And yes, there are uh, tornado sirens going off right now in Dallas. from Katie Schultz sending this in uh, from uh, downtown Dallas as they are they originally started s sounding the the tornado sirens uh, because we had that destructive severe thunderstorm warning and that still applies uh, but they're probably going to start sounding them again uh, because of the actual tornado warning uh, that we've got issued here uh, both at the same time
Holy smokes. Glenn McLennan says, Ryan, thanks for the early warning. Tornado missed my house in Shreveport by two streets again. Holy smokes. Glenn, I'm glad you're okay. That is, um, so this is uh, once another video here of the tornado near Shreveport, uh, Louisiana earlier. Wow. Wow. This Ryan, thanks for the early warning. Okay. All right. Uh, back over here to Dallas. Uh, we have uh, a significant uh, severe weather situation unfolding here uh, in Dallas. You're, the, the sirens are going off. I know. Um, we want everybody to get in their tornado safe spot. We want everybody to take shelter uh, right now. And it doesn't even matter if you're in the polygon. Okay. Uh, you, the whole city of Dallas is under a destructive, severe thunderstorm warning tornado or not, that's going to cause problems. Um, let's come back over here, uh, to this, uh, Matt is sending me this video from the DFW airport. And as you can see, things are pretty wild out there, uh, with once again, 70 to 80 mile per hour winds, hail lightning thunder all that and then somewhere in there there could even be a spin-up tornado you never see it coming um but that's why we want you in your safe spot and not looking for it okay so some of the stronger winds are getting ready to actually move into the downtown dallas area now within the next couple of minutes um richardson you're feeling it plano texas you're feeling it garland mesquite riley uh, Wilmer, you guys still have a couple of minutes. And notice how some of the stronger winds are actually happening right here out in front. There's a gust front that's uh, occurring here. Uh, the rain, <laughs> the heavy rain really won't start falling until uh, possibly several minutes after the winds start blowing really hard. Uh, we're, I'm getting reports of major damage in Fulbright and Red River County, uh, Texas, seven miles off of uh, Highway 37 and Highway 411. Uh, I did see that the, the person that's sending this report said they, they saw a tornado touch down near Bogota, Texas. And that was from that earlier storm that we were keeping an eye on. Yeah, I really appreciate everybody that's sending me uh, or tagging me in um, uh, updates. There's a lot of them out here. So uh, please continue to do that. Remember, if you are sending in reports and they're novel, please also tag your local National Weather Service. And don't do anything unless you could do so safely. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. I just spoke to Brian Allen. He was back there in that PDS Severe, and he's saying that he's boxed in by power lines. There's multiple roads. There's nowhere he can go. They're all live still, so he's just stressing that there should not be people walking around. Don't be walking through these puddles because there's live lines down issued. everywhere. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Riley. Uh, one of our storm chasers, Brian Allen. I guess his feed's still down, or did we just put somebody else up there? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Chris, right? Yeah. Um, so we've got one of our storm chasers, uh, who actually intercepted this storm as it was, it was approaching uh, Fort Worth. He's got power lines uh, down all around him. They're still live. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're just waiting to see, uh, what's going to happen next there. Uh, Carly, Maybe Brandon Clement, is that, is that frozen there? Or is that just pointed towards a light or something? Okay. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Um, we still have uh, two tornado warnings. Uh, the newest one's going to be for Coriel County and uh, Lampus, L <laughs> Lampus County in Texas. Um, and then we also have the existing tornado warning for uh, Dallas County, Texas as well. Uh, we, we definitely have some strong winds coming through Dallas now. I'm assuming that we're going to see them uh, in the Radar Omega app here soon. There's, there's one camera um, in the Radar Omega app here that is in Dallas. Now, I don't know how well we'll be able to gauge the winds from this. This looks like somebody's back porch. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what this usually it's like tower cams and stuff, but the the gust front uh, that's uh, causing some of the, the power flashes and, and the, the, the damaging winds is literally getting ready to go through this area. So hopefully that little doggo there uh, gets to shelter that's walking around. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we do also uh, we can see Dallas from the, the, the skyline camera here. And uh, you can see that the wind is definitely picking up out there as the storm approaches the city. Remember, it's not there yet. We're seeing the original, the initial gust front here. But look at how much it's rocking that camera back and forth as the storm gets closer and closer. Uh, John Wells, John Wells says we've got quarter size hail and measured 65 mile an hour winds northeast of uh, Gunter, Texas. Northeast of Gunter, Texas there. So that's actually, that, that's in the, obviously this is a strong storm that we're looking at here, but that's in a weaker part of the storm uh, than that's getting ready to happen here in Dallas. Yep, and things are picking up pretty quickly here on, our, on the Earth Cam. Remember, if you're just now tuning in, we have a uh, tornado warning in Dallas. And that's kind of what we're focused in on right now. Um, but there's also a lot of other things happening. Uh, that newest tornado warning is actually quite a bit to the south uh, near Kemper, Texas. Um, we have a pretty good... Uh, area of rotation trying to show up here and there could be a tornado trying to form somewhere near topsy and books crossing and that's going to move over towards a uh, Com uh, comanche village and saint elijah village in texas this is north and west of killeen uh, this is actually quite a bit south of dallas as well so this is a big line guys this is a huge storm it's not just affecting dallas but we're kind of focused on dallas right now because that's where a lot of the damaging wind is, is happening. Uh, but we're going to be tracking this throughout the night, even after it gets past Dallas. All right, I'm going to take our uh, radar over here, take a look at some of the more recent uh, wind reports that are coming in. Uh, looks like on the northwestern side of Dallas, we had a 71-mile-an-hour wind uh, report. 80 miles per hour on the northern side of um, Fort Worth not too long ago. Yeah, so uh, some of the places where uh, some of the stronger winds are going to start to happen now. So he here's how this is going to work. You're going to get hit by a wall of wind pretty much in places like Garland, um, uh, down here near Hutchins and Lancaster. 
things might calm down for a minute, but then as soon as the precipitation starts back here in this part of the line, winds are going to ramp back up. So you have diff two different opportunities of really strong winds, but it's going to be a sustained kind of thing for probably 30 minutes or so. And that's why we think there's going to be so much wind damage. Oh boy. Oh boy. Guys, this house, once again, I told you this looked like somebody's back porch. They've got a fire going and it's, it's blowing all over the place. Son. That is not good. Uh, this is a live view of a, 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 a camera here in the Radar Omega app. You can see that the winds are really starting to pick up. Uh, but unfortunately, somebody was sitting out there enjoying the evening uh, with their roasted marshmallows. And now uh, the winds are starting to blow that uh, the fire in the fireplace around a little bit. Uh, this is a great reminder. Um, for anybody that's watching that is out ahead of this storm, if you've got anything outside that you need to take care of, you got to put the dogs in the kennel, you got to put the, uh, uh, or you got to bring them inside, you got to put the cover over the car. I don't know what, what, what do you got to do? You got to put out the fire in the fireplace. Go do that now because you don't want to wait until the big winds start coming through. Right now, we're only seeing 13 mile per hour gusts apparently in this exact spot. There you go. You can see how much uh, worse that's actually getting um, as the winds continue to uh, get stronger and stronger. My goodness, y'all. <laughs> I don't know whose back porch that is, <laughs> or I would call them. <laughs> I, th these guys are probably in their tornado shelter, right? Maybe they forgot. I don't know. <clears throat> That's a power line? That's not a power line. That's a, literally a little fire pit. I saw it earlier when it was daylight, I think. I don't know. Is it a power? It could be a power line. but I could have sworn I saw a fire pit earlier. <laughs> Anyways, the, the, the point here is that if you've got a fire going on outside, it's going to get blown all over the place. So go put it out, daggone it. Uh, wow, more tornado damage um, near Shreveport, Louisiana. This, this actually looks pretty significant down here. Uh, thank you to Ryan uh, for sending this in. Uh, my goodness. Bro. <laughs> I guess the good news is the the winds haven't gotten here yet. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's in the radar omega app. There's a thousand of you watching in there. Um, <laughs> but I've got, I've got to get back to the radar here. We've got a new destructive severe thunderstorm warning for Kaufman County, Texas. Uh, and here's a look at Melissa, Texas, north of McKinney. And this is a video from uh, Chris Dyer. Wow. Here we go. By the way, not recommended standing with your garage door open and in a destructive severe thunderstorm.
It's definitely a fire pit. We, we watched the guy put the logs on. Oh, I, I thought I, I knew I wasn't imagining that. Well, hopefully the rain puts it out before the winds get much worse because they are going to get much worse. Um, that first little gust front came through, and now the real deal is going to move right towards that area there. So. God. Uh, by the way, that new destructive severe thunderstorm warning it does include Terrell and Oak Ridge along I-20 uh, to the south and east of Dallas. And here's an update on the Dallas skyline camera. We really can't see anything now. Okay. That was a glitch, I'm pretty sure. I don't think the lightning's that intense, but definitely some frequent lightning here in Dallas. You can't even see the skyline now uh, as uh, the heavy rain is starting to, to kick in. All right, we got an official report from Dallas of a 76 mile per hour wind gust. This was an official National Weather Service observation. Dallas Love Field uh, measured 76 miles per hour. Guys, that's going to cause very significant damage here. Those winds haven't made it uh, the old boy's house yet with the logs and the fire. Uh, yes, yeah, so Fort Worth, the worst is past you now. Uh, this, we're now focused on Dallas here. Um, some of the stronger winds are getting ready uh, to come up into uh, Midlothian, Oakleaf, DeSoto, um, Dallas, uh, Highland Park, Mesquite, uh, and then Garland uh, and Sash and Murphy over the next little bit. McKinney, you just got them. And now Princeton and Farmersville is next in line, okay? We still got a tornado warning down here uh, for areas south and east of Dallas now. That includes Hutchins, Riley, and Kleberg, and Wilmer and Patrick. So uh, please uh, take shelter now if you guys are in that vicinity. We are up to 189,000 people without power now in Texas. Most of those coming around uh, Denton County, Tarrant County, Dallas County, and Parker County. Dallas County had 10,000 people without power just five minutes ago. Now it's got 20,000 people without power. That number is going to continue to go up dramatically as these strong damaging winds uh, continue to cause major problems here. And we've got a down truck on 820 heading into Dallas. So that's a, probably a pretty common sight that we're going to see along uh, I-35 and I-20 with flipped over semi-trucks. Uh, this was just now. All right, this was just now at Dallas Love Field from Jackie Fryer. Wow. This is where we got that 76 mile per hour wind gust report too. Hey, it's reminiscent of hurricane footage. Holy smokes. Uh, 
Uh, this was 15 minutes ago in Glen Heights, Texas. Uh, Escoto, thank you so much for sending that in. Okay, things are ramping up here in uh, this Radar Omega cam, the back porch cam. The good news is the fire hasn't spread, but I think it is being put out by the heavy rain now. Hopefully that'll continue to be the case uh, and the, the winds don't impact it too much. The DFW tower was evacuated. Yeah, and I, I see them like there, there's all kinds of reports uh, coming in, guys. I, I see all of the reports of the power flashes, lots of power flashes on the leading edge of the dangerous winds that are just worked into Dallas and now are moving past Dallas. Uh, we're going to continue to see strong winds and, and a very uh, impressive thunderstorm uh, uh, through Dallas for the next several minutes. But now it's the eastern suburbs that we've got to worry about, like Murphy. Uh, Garland, Rockwall, uh, Forney, uh, Mesquite, Heartland, Card uh, Crandall, uh, Ferris, and Scurry, and Palmer, Oakleaf. All these places are next in line to get some of these incredibly strong winds here as the storm continues to crank off to the east. 63 mile per hour wind gust observed um, at Dallas Executive Airport uh, just moments ago. And then we got a 76. At Dallas Love Field. Um, so it looks like the northern side of Dallas might have gotten a little bit stronger winds than the southern side. Nevertheless, everybody is getting in on some incredibly strong winds tonight in Dallas. Um, Dallas, uh, Highland Park, and Murphy over the next little bit. <laughs> hey, Ryan. And Sosh and Murphy. Over the next little bit, Nikita. <laughs> hey, Ryan. I'm also Ryan. It's sexy, not soft. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> I love this new trend where you, you guys are just like sending me videos on how to pronounce it. That's actually super helpful. I've already forgot those, so I have to watch it again. Sachi, right? Sosh and Murphy. Tosh, I said Sosh. <laughs> hey, Ryan. I'm also Ryan. It's Saxy. Not Saxy. Sosh. Okay. Thanks. For All right. <laughs> well, hey, man, you're getting ready to get hit by some really strong winds here up there in Saxy um, in, in Texas. And thanks. <laughs> thanks for the, uh, for the help with the pronunciation. I have a lot of a uh, 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 hard time with that sometimes especially trying to cover the weather for everybody across the U.S. Sometimes there will be a place that spells it exactly like that, and it's actually pronounced Sakaheezy or something. <laughs> and people are like, wow, why didn't you know that? Uh, but anyways, uh, things are about to get pretty wild up there with some of the stronger winds. You're under destructive severe thunderstorm warning, and uh, we still have this tornado warning just to the south of uh, Balt, uh, I, I guess that's Balt Springs and Mesquite, and that's going to continue to go through uh, Riley, Kleberg, and Siegelville in the southeastern Dallas area over the next little bit. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. I'm watching Waxahachie, I believe is how you say that, to the south of the Dallas metro. There's a, a, Once again, I'm watching the entire line here, and I still think there's a good chance that some gust natives, uh, literally you know, land spout tornadoes that spin up on the leading gust front. And it looks like that's an area of uh, concern and low-level rotation as it passes over the city there. In addition, we also have those con considerable severe thunderstorm warnings all the way down uh, through Austin, Texas now. 
uh, and areas to the north of that, Round Rock and Georgetown. And I think that also want to reiterate that San Antonio, Texas Metro is going to see strong winds, whether or not you have heavy rain with that or not. So it's going to be very, really gusty out there for the I-35 corridor uh, as it comes up here. So um, watch out for gust natives. Take this line of severe thunderstorms uh, seriously. Um, those gust natives are probably going to be weaker than any you know possible tornado would be, but um, they're not to be messed around with. So I would recommend taking us with you to your safe spot. Take some shoes and your pets too and uh, hang out for a while. All right. Thank you very much, meteorologist Andy Hill, for the update there. Uh, taking us south uh, to uh, take a look at what's going on over here near San Antonio, strong storms forming off to the west. Um, strong storms forming off to the, the west, and those will continue to move east. It's We're unsure if these will actually impact the, the greater San Antonio air, area, almost certainly on the northern side. But even if they don't, like Andy said, this huge front is going to uh, bring about some very strong winds into San Antonio as we go later into the evening. We have a considerable severe thunderstorm warning uh, for um, uh, Austin, Texas. Get ready. It's coming. Within the next uh, 45, 50 minutes or so, you're probably going to start seeing some of those winds. We could get up to 70 miles per hour as the storm moves through. Now, Temple, you're also under a considerable severe thunderstorm warning in Temple, Texas for 70 mile per hour winds. Waco, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, and then all the way up here towards Waxahachie and Dallas, where we're watching this incredibly powerful storm come through, uh, we are still under our considerable and destructive severe thunderstorm warnings. And on top of that, we are watching areas of rotation uh, on the front side of this that could lead to gust nados. And that is something that we want to try to point out to you because... It's not all wind. It's not all hails. It's not all just tornadoes. There's multiple different threats that are coming out of the storm. And we want you to be prepared for absolutely all of them. Um, I really appreciate everybody for helping me get the word out tonight. Super huge shout out to Zach Z for the very generous super chat. It says, thanks for all. Thanks y'all for what you do from Taylor, Texas. Guys, everybody say thank you to Zach. I really appreciate that. Uh, Tenor River Fishing says east of Medina, Texas, looks like something's about to go down. Well, something is about to go down, and it's I, I, there's nobody that can escape it, really. Uh, this line right here, everybody east of that um, is going to get whacked tonight uh, by a significant uh, severe weather event. We, we could be talking about tornadoes, damaging winds, hail, something is, is going to happen tonight. And there's no avoiding it. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind as the this line of storms continues to march off to the east. Seeing some strong storms start to pop up around Fort Smith and Little Rock as well. We'll have to watch these uh, for the potential for some of these to try to rotate. Um, but for the most part, these are just bringing heavy rain right now and lots of lightning. I'm very impressed by this fire pit. Didn't cause any problems. Uh, the winds are still going to be picking up around there, though, for the next little bit. Um, also, I'm hearing a lot of schools are closing in and around Tennessee and Kentucky tomorrow due to the threat for severe weather. I, actually, a lot of the schools in my county here are closed. Oh, my goodness. There's a uh, 
light pole in the tr street? Look, everybody's having to drive around it. Weather is th making things dangerous. A light pole is down on 35 East uh, near the merge with Airport Freeway in Dallas. This can happen anywhere right now, so do yourself a favor and stay in. Yeah, imagine the you're the first one to come up on that. That's a pretty dangerous situation if you don't see it. Obviously, the rain's like crazy. Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. I uh, just wanted to let you know we are headed west right now. Um, we are headed towards the Paris, Texas area. It appears like there may be a little bit of a kink in there, maybe even an embedded supercell um, headed towards the uh, city of Paris. That would line up with uh, possibly producing a tornado. It's right there on the boundary, uh, so that needs to be watched pretty closely. It looks like it, there may be even a little bit of low-level rotation in it, but we, sh uh, we should be in Paris pretty soon. We're headed west right now. Okay, so that was Storm Chaser Brad Arnold. He's in Texarkana. He's heading west. Remember, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold is the tornado whisperer, so we always listen when Brad speaks. He says that he's watching this storm um, uh, near Bonham uh, in Texas. A little kink in the line there. A little bit of low-level rotation. That is going to move up towards Paris, Texas, and we'll keep an eye on it for you. Uh, and, of course, Brad Arnold's on his way to actually show the tornado to us if there is one. Um, as it moves through that area there. What an incredible active evening tonight uh, of severe weather. Uh, let's see. Uh, Spitting Facts says, thank you, Ryan and y'all on his team for being lifesavers to so many. Andy, thank you. Thanks for the round rock call out. Yeah, um, uh, thank you, Spitting Facts, for that. Kaiser, please learn how to say Terrell. Am I saying it wrong? Please learn how to say Terrell before the storm hits Terrell. If I said it wrong, let me know how to say it right. K-Web, thanks. How much longer until it's past Cedar Hill? It feels like my roof is going to come off. If you're in Cedar Hill, um, here, Cedar Hill, it's almost over, okay? Now, whenever this line of storms gets past you, there's still going to be an area of winds that are going to be pretty intense, okay? It's not directly correlated with the, uh, the, the brightness of the colors on the radar here, but things are about to start um, uh, calming down for you there in Cedar Hill, okay? Uh, so... Um, and just bear, uh, bear with us. Stay in your safe spot. It'll be over soon. And we got a new tornado warning, I believe. A new yeah. tornado warning. That's going to be for Bell issued. in Coriel County in Texas. Bell in Coriel County in Texas. That's, our, that's farther south down the line. It's hard to keep up these days. Uh, okay, so... Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be for this area right here near Mound, Cold Springs, the Grove, uh, and these areas. Let me show you the actual polygon. That's your newest warning there. This is south and west of Waco, north and east of Killeen. And we've, that's our new tornado polygon right there. Please take shelter if you're in any of those areas. Got a 64 mile per hour wind gust report from McKinney, Texas. Terrell. 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 Okay. Black Wolf uh, says from North Carolina, uh, but thank you for the lives you saved. Black Wolf, thank you. Thank, thank you for the. You didn't have to do that. Uh, Kathy says. Uh, well, she's been a member for seven months. Thank you for the information on gifting memberships. When I click, I get uh, stickers, super chat. Absolutely love the group and everything. Ryan, uh, hey, Kelly or Kathy, sorry. <laughs> Thanks so much for the support. I really appreciate y'all. Um, I do want to get back into uh, the, the radar coverage here, and I'm hoping we can find a second 
for me to um, uh, uh, look at the forecast for tomorrow because I know there's a lot of people concerned. They're closing schools in Kentucky ahead of this thing tomorrow. All right. So I, I do want to look at that for y'all uh, here in a second. But I mean, there's just so much going on right now. Kim said, uh, this is my sister's place in Bedford, Texas. It looks like a tree came through the house in Bedford, Texas there. That's, this is why we ask you to, to get to um, shelter in a destructive severe thunderstorm warning because this is what can happen. It doesn't take a tornado to do this, y'all. It does not take a tornado to do this. Oh boy, this is from uh, Shreveport earlier today. It looks like that this one and the one that Brad Arnold caught uh, were probably the the most significant tornadoes that we've seen today, um, and both of them were happening in uh, like without a warning for a while, which is nuts. Scary to think about. New tornado tornado warning for Fannin and Lamar counties in Texas. And that's the storm that Brad Arnold is after. That's the one that he called out earlier. And that's the one uh, that I'm going to show you right now on the radar through the Radar Omega app. It's going to be hard to do that, though, because there's a radar hole up here. And thank goodness for Brad, because if this does end up causing a tornado up here somewhere between Paris and... Uh, and New Oberlin uh, or Monkstown or any of these places, we ain't going to be able to tell you much just from these colors on the radar because we're going to lose it. Uh, but Brad Arnold may be able to give us a, a, a sense of what's happening here. Here's the Polygon, Honey Grove, Roxton, and Sumner uh, in Texas, all under tornado warnings. Please take shelter now. We got tornado warnings down here uh, in South Central Texas as well for Killeen and Oglesby. Oglesby? <laughs> Oglesby? Uh, and then we got this considerable and destructive severe thunderstorm warnings all up and down I-35. Interstate 35 south of Dallas to Round Rock right now over the next hour is about to be the worst place on earth. I, I would hate to be anywhere along that uh, interstate corridor over the next little bit, we've got hurricane force winds, quarter size hail, potential tornadoes getting ready to cross the interstate over a three or 400 mile zone. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan, my next area of concern approaching the I-35 corridor is just to the north of Georgetown, which is north of Round Rock. It's headed towards Serenada and Williamson County. Uh, you'll see that little kink in the line there. That's got my eye. Okay, Andy, let's go check it out. Uh, near Round Rock, a um, little kink in the line here. <coughs> oh, yeah, I see it. That right here near Hunt Crossing is going to be a problem, I think, um, near Georgetown. So no warning yet, but let's go ahead and give a heads up for places like Gravis, Strickland Grove, Gerald, and uh, maybe even the I-35 corridor between New Corn Hill and Weir in Texas. Uh, okay, uh, get ready. There might be a spin-up tornado that tries to happen here and uh, over the next little bit. And every frame looks a little bit more convincing there. So definitely get ready near Sun City. This is a pretty populated area here. I see tons of cold to Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Um, do I happen to get brownie points for calling that tornado warning before it was actually warned on that one headed to Paris? Just asking. Brad, I, I can't even tell you how many brownie points you have. How many more do you want, man? <laughs> I mean, just like one or two would be fine. <laughs> then I could go home being happy. <clears throat> That's uh, Brad Arnold, our MVP storm chaser there. 
on his way to Paris, Texas, where there is also a, a tornado worn storm heading towards there. I think that uh, we, we might see a new warning pop up down here near Georgetown. Whenever we get the notif notification for that, we'll come back down here to it. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a tornado warning for the Grove, Moffat, Whitehall, and Pendleton in Texas. This is north and west of Temple. We're watching this one closely. Waco, Texas, you're getting ready to get hit by 60-mile-an-hour uh, winds. This will This will probably happen within the next 45 minutes or so. Just make sure you are prepared for that. We've got a strong storm going through Waxahachie right now. Um, and then uh, Turrell, uh, <laughs> you're about... 15, 20 minutes out uh, from uh, seeing a, a, a dangerous uh, storm come through with potentially 80 mile per hour winds as that destructive severe thunderstorm warning is still in place. All right. And then, of course, we're watching this a tornado worn storm up here near Honey Grove um, and Roxton and High and Wyndham in Texas. Please take shelter if you're anywhere in Fannin or Lamar counties in Texas. And that's not all. There's more. Let's zoom out. My goodness, uh, we've got a lot of weather happening tonight. Heavy rain, extremely heavy rain up here in northern Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma. It's probably going to cause a pretty significant flash flooding uh, risk here uh, over the next little bit through the I-40 and uh, 30 corridor in um, uh, Arkansas up towards Memphis. I know uh, we had a pop-up on the screen earlier about the Weather Prediction Center's moderate risk for excessive rainfall. Can If somebody can drop the graphic for that in the, uh, in the chat, uh, I, would, I will show that. Sorry, it's getting about that time of stream where I lose the ability to talk. We got an... Um, A mesoscale discussion here. The risk for substantial damaging winds and a few tornadoes will continue across central and northeastern Texas and far southeastern Oklahoma this evening. And here's that risk for excessive rainfall flat if you're in the red or the yellow there i would be very concerned about flash flooding over the next 24 36 hours there's there's going to be a lot of rain here guys a lot hydrate Good idea. Good idea. I'm going to get me a, a gallon of water. I'll be right back. Andy, if you got anything, floor is yours. You got it, Ryan. In fact, uh, you know, Brad issued. Arnold's getting brownie points, but there's just a new tornado warning issued about to come through if it's not on top or right next to me already uh, for that Williamson County uh, spin up tornado. I called out just to the east now of Serenata. It's about to pass over Interstate 35. So, where or we're Granger, Circleville, and Jonah, you guys are in that tornado warning uh, to the east of I 35. It's probably going to track straight towards Granger, Texas. Uh, so, that's what I'm looking at now. All right, guys, <laughs> we got two Nader whispers on the team. Let's go. All right. In addition to that, um, I think. <laughs> If you're still watching in Fort Worth, you should be fine now. There may be some slightly gusty winds behind the line in those uh, in that moderate rain, so make sure you're paying mind to that. Uh, but for the most part, except for the southeastern side of the Dallas Metro, you guys are looking fine, getting out of the gustiest winds there in the Metro, especially the northern edge of the Metro. So um, Rockwell, Ka Kaufman, and uh, areas around there, to the east of I-45 and south of I-20. We'll continue to see some heavy winds for a while now, uh, gusty winds for a while now. And of course, we still got that tornado warning up north. Honestly, props to Brad for calling that one. It doesn't look that great on radar anymore, though, so I think he got lucky with the frame he called, just by the way. But that tornado warning includes Honey Grove and areas just immediately west of Paris in Lamar County. So Paris, not yet directly in a tornado warning, uh, but you guys, your county is, and you will likely be in the path of the next warning should the National Weather Service 
uh, opt to continue that warning. So that's what I expect uh, for that area up there along Highway 82 running to the east of Honey Grove and Bonham. How's that water, Ryan? Oh, yeah, I'm back. Hi, one <laughs> second. <clears throat> Okay. Um, you guys told me to hydrate. So I, I ain't going to play around, you know. I'm hydrating the right way. Straight from the gallon. Because um, I'm going to need it, man. I feel like we're going to be here for a little while longer as uh, things are continuing to look um, more and more uh, concerning. All up and down this line. I, I mean, I think we're going to have a, a, an entire night here of spin-up tornadoes and um, damaging winds uh, all the way through the moderate risk area and even extending much farther south than that, uh, including into this new uh, severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued here near uh, Mexia, uh, Gun Barrel City, Fairfield, all up and down the I-45 corridor there. Uh, between um, uh, Fairfield and Rice in Texas. So get ready for that. Dallas, Fort Worth, you guys are, it's exiting the area now. You're going to, there's still going to be some strong winds and some uh, lightning and some heavy rain for probably the next hour or, or more. But um, the things are going to start winding down a little bit. We got mer emergency managers reporting a 68 mile an hour wind gust in Dallas. We've got a 76 uh, mile an hour wind gust in Dallas and a 63. So I don't know, um, I don't know uh, if there's any more reports or any damage reports coming in just yet from Dallas, but it certainly looks like Fort Worth so far has a lot more of those kind of reports coming in. So we will keep you updated on that as well. Uh, Williamson County, Texas is under a tornado warning. Here's that one uh, north of Round Rock. Uh, this is uh, including Granger, uh, Keelersville, Friendship, uh, Elm Grove, and Laneport. Central Williamson County in Central Texas. This is the one that Andy called out earlier, and um, this is now you're under a warning. If you're in Granger, Texas, take shelter now. This is north of Round Rock, but in Round Rock, you guys are going to get um, some very strong winds here, probably in excess of 60 to 70 miles per hour over the next little bit. So make sure you're getting ready for that. Gerald, Texas, we called that town out earlier. It looks like a strong line of storms is going to go through here, but the tornado warned section of the storm is going to stay south of Gerald, okay? And then the storm that um, the storm that Brad Arnold is on his way to near Paris, Texas, the tornado warning up here. Um, it, once again, we can't see it really on radar, and and what we can see of it, it doesn't look that great. Uh, it doesn't look that concerning, I guess I should say. But as we saw earlier, <laughs> it doesn't have to uh, for it to produce a tornado. So uh, we'll see what happens whenever um, uh, Brad gets there. We got damage to buildings in Celeste. Uh, that's in Hunt County, Texas. Uh, that's a report coming in. Man, that smells good. God. <laughs> Carly got dinner. <clears throat> and I can, and she's offered some for me. But I ain't that hungry. Well, I wasn't until I smelled that. Phew. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> I wonder if I can take a brief moment here to look over the uh, the the models for tomorrow. Just briefly, I I, I will, I'm going to jump right back into the the live watching the radar mode. Obviously, uh, are you guys okay with that? If we look at the forecast and then jump back into this, I know how many people do we have watching in like Tennessee, Kentucky, Alabama, Georgia areas east.
Okay. Because these storms are going to continue to move east tonight. And um, they're going to cause problems um, and tomorrow. And I, I, I want to update you guys on those problems. Uh, also, look, there's snow. I forgot about that. We got a whole snowstorm uh, that we need to update people on. Um, uh, John says, thanks from Elgin, Texas. We love all y'all. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you, John. Um, wow, All Elite Racing is now an official sponsor. Thank you so much. That is, uh, that's a big deal. Thank you for that. Um, hey, Ryan, next time someone catches you on how to pronounce something, you ought to hit them with on, on how. Okay, yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, there's some there's some uh, places in Kentucky that uh, y'all definitely wouldn't get right on the first try. I, I really appreciate all the support. Uh, Becky says, appreciate your channel very much. Shout out from Abilene, Texas. Thank y'all. Okay. All right. Let's look at uh, the, the forecast. Then we're going to jump right back into covering this extremely dangerous current situation. But we, we have to forecast. We got to now cast and we got to forecast. We got to do both. We got some her data coming in. The high resolution rapid refresh model. Oh boy. Okay, so what the, this is essentially what the radar could look like um, as we go into the future, all right? We could uh, obviously see um, this around 10 p.m. tonight. This is Eastern. This is Eastern. We're going to see the very strong line of storms obviously continue on its current trajectory. We're going to see the warm front continue to cause storms and extremely heavy rain over here in Arkansas. And by the way, we got a brand new tornado warning uh, for Bell, Coriel, and Falls County in Texas. That's just south of Waco. So I, I, I do want to go look at that for y'all. Give me just a second. Yeah, so now we've got um, Bruceville, Eddie, Moody, and Troy under tornado warnings areas just south of um, Waco in Texas. So that's your new tornado warning. I, I don't see anything crazy, uh, anything to like zoom in on here on the velocity. So I'm going to just say respect the polygon. Everybody in that warning, please take shelter now. Um, but uh, I, we are going to come back to this as soon as we're done with our little forecast here. So, yeah, tornado warning for Bell, Coriel Falls, and McLennan County in Texas. Take shelter now. All right. Now, let's come back over here to the models. This is what the radar could look like tonight around 10 p.m. Watch what happens as I push it into, let's say, 2 a.m., all right, we're going to see the storms continue to push out of Texas. It's going to be over for everybody in Texas by at least 2 a.m. tonight. It'll be moving into central Louisiana and Arkansas. But at this point, the tornado threat and the damaging wind threat is going to start to go down a little bit. All right, uh, and at this point, I think the number one thing that we're going to have to be watching out for is rain, like just flooding. I think Arkansas up there into southern Missouri I mean, this is going to be a flash flood hot spot. Okay, so make sure you're prepared for that. And then let's let's move over to the east as we go through the overnight hours into the early morning hours on Friday. Things calm down a lot on the severe weather side, but we still have strong winds possible from central Arkansas down into Louisiana, and of course we have a, a, a chance of tornadoes anywhere in this warm front zone. Okay. It doesn't have to be a discrete supercell. It doesn't even have to be a QLCS squall line tornado. Like things can happen in the, these kind of systems that cause tornadoes, especially as new storms build up in the warm sector and then throw themselves up into this big mass of rain that's happening up here. We will see probably a couple tornadoes in that transitionary period somewhere in the Arkansas area, maybe even over towards Memphis. But for the most part, the severe threat goes down 
the farther we go into Friday morning. But what happens as we go later into the day on Friday? Here we are around 10 a.m., 11 a.m., um, a very sharp cold front is going to start forming here. Cool, cooler air is going to start piling in on this huge warm sector, all right? We got huge amounts of uh, increased dew points and temperatures uh, piling up over here in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas. And then we have colder air forcing that up and causing thunderstorms. And those thunderstorms are going to be capable of producing damaging winds and tornadoes as they move up into Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. And now, once again, it looks a little bit more concerning for northern portions of Georgia. I see more convection this time, um, and even into the Carolinas, where, my goodness, we could see, once again, more significant severe weather. This is a, I, I, this is not good. Hold on. <laughs> my goodness. Look, this is the significant tornado parameter here. And once again, it's high, man. It's way high. Uh, basically, what this is showing us is areas where the atmosphere is capable of producing tornadoes. Um, and the really dark reds and the bright purples and stuff, it's more than capable. It's actually favorable uh, for tornado genesis. What was that? Did y'all hear that? I thought I'd, something happened there. Anyways, um, this is a, a pretty significant signature here for um, uh, maybe having some tornadoes tomorrow. We've got a big uh, warm sector getting cleaned out. Uh, let's see here. What else can we look at? Uh, obviously, we can look at the lower level jet. That's going to be nuts, of course. Shoot, man. Like this, this, this could. Here's the thing. It's also. Um, it's also pretty, you heard the beeping? Okay. I don't know what that was. Did I turn that on? Okay, that's coming from, that's coming from the Radar Omega app. I don't think I meant to turn that on. Oh, it's definitely off. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, anyways, um, uh, th this is basically tomorrow is looking pretty daggone uh, concerning. I, I don't want to sugarcoat it, but it's conditional, right? Uh, it's one of those things where the ceiling is very high. It could be a pretty significant severe weather day. It could, I mean, this could be a tornado outbreak kind of day, it, but it also could be um, similar to what we saw happen out in East Texas, right? Where the parameter space was really high for uh, tornadoes today, and there were a few, but the, the, the real, actual, like, worst-case scenario uh, didn't happen for one reason or another. There's a lot of different factors, low instability, um, uh, quick motion of the, the, the storms, and, and it's pretty much the same thing that happened today. Maybe too much wind shear uh, could be uh, something that keeps tornadoes from happening tomorrow, uh, but if things fall into the right place and the right storm forms, I believe that this kind of environment uh, will definitely produce uh, a couple um, uh, the big tornadoes tomorrow somewhere in Kentucky, Tennessee, and maybe even into northern Alabama, um, down into Georgia, and, and then uh, maybe even into the uh, Carolinas, uh, into the Piedmont area. Has been issued. So we got a new tornado warning uh, for Bell County, Texas, in Milam uh, County, Texas. We're going to take a look at that right here in a second. Uh, but I also want to quickly note the snow, uh, the heavy snow breaking out on the backside here. This thing has shifted way south, man. Um, I think this was bullseye in uh, Chicago last night. Now it looks like Chicago is going to be on the northern side of this. Still a ton of snow. Probably likely here for portions of northwestern Indiana into southern Michigan. That's going to continue into Canada. Uh, and, of course, we do think there's going to be a good uh, amount of snow up here in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine as well.
All right. So let's take a look at that newest tornado warning. North of Round Rock, we've got another one. Um, there's a couple different areas of rotation trying to spin up here between Granger and Holland. So we've got a new tornado warning for De, De Villa, Val Verde, and Rogers and Buckholtz in Texas. Please take shelter now. Still got a tornado warning in Moody or for around Troy and Moody moving up towards Lorena and Mooresville as well. Waco, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning. You're getting ready to get hit by 60 mile per hour winds. Get ready for that. Mejia and Corsicana and Gun Barrel City, you guys are under a severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile per hour winds. Um, and t t uh, Terrell, you guys are getting ready to get hit uh, by some strong winds as well. I don't know where or why. That beeping is happening. I've got this. This is the sound, right? That's the sound. It's turned off. Ryan, do you have it on for winter storm warnings, perhaps? Uh, winter storm warning. No. That's not even an option. Maybe I do on this instance. Oh, I don't know, man. I'll try to, I, I closed one of the instances of the program, so maybe, maybe that'll solve it. We'll see. And we do have a tornado warning still in effect for areas just west of Paris, Texas. And Brad Arnold is on his way. To that one. Uh, Philip, Philip, thank you so much. He says, thanks for all that you do, Ryan. Keep up the great work. Which Radar Omega subscription would you recommend? Uh, so first of all, if you download the Radar Omega app, that's all you need. You don't need a subscription. Um, but uh, if, you, if you want the extra features, if you want the models, the smoothing, the this, the that. Oh, my God, that didn't work. <laughs> Um, if you want all that extra stuff, um, any of the subscriptions are fine. Obviously, I have the top one, and it's awesome. It's great. Uh, but uh, just read through the list, pick what you want, and go with that one. <clears throat> a lot of people think you have to have a subscription, though, but you don't. It is a one-time purchase. Bro. All right, I'm closing out of the program. <laughs> And we'll see if it still happens. Maybe, maybe I'm playing a video somewhere of a radar loop. Closing out of everything. If you're just now tuning in, guys, we're doing a continuous severe weather coverage here of a very dangerous line of storms that's tracking across Texas. Um, we've got multiple tornado warnings. In fact, we have four right now. We have a huge tornado watch, a severe thunderstorm watch, multiple considerable severe thunderstorm warnings, and flash flood warnings starting to come out now. We also have a team of some of the most, some of the best storm chasers on earth. Uh, giving us live feeds here. We've seen multiple tornadoes today form right in front of our eyes through these guys. Um, and now we're kind of waiting to see what happens next with this line of storms. Uh, it's continuing to produce damaging winds as it moves towards Texarkana, Tyler, uh, and Brian, for example, in Texas. Um, but we still think there's a pretty good chance, especially around this bend here uh, in south, uh, I guess, eastern Oklahoma, central portions of uh, Arkansas, Northeastern Texas, I think there's still a pretty good chance that we see another 
or a couple more tornadoes here before the tornado threat completely dies down. Then, of course, all along this line, we're going to see those continued spin up tornadoes as well. Uh, so we're going to be here with you throughout the night, really uh, giving you updates on what's going on out there. OK. And we do have storms uh, coming through the Austin, Texas area as well. And um, Shane RWX has sent us this camera uh, so we can keep an eye on those. It looks like it's frozen right now, though. We currently have, wow, we currently have 332,000 people without power in Texas. Uh, a whole lot of those are coming out of Dallas County. There's over 100,000 people just in Dallas uh, County. Um, uh, that don't have power. Uh, Collin County, we got fifty three thousand. Uh, Tar Tarrant County, we got ninety nine thousand. Parker County got thirteen thousand. So a lot of places over here in Texas around DFW are without power. You're sitting on a beeper? No. No. Omega won't show multi-radars unless you sub. What does that even mean? What's a multi-radar? <clears throat> like you can definitely switch between radars. Let's uh, do another radar breakdown, by the way. We still got a tornado warning for Rogers and Buckholtz down here. I I, oh my God, there it is again, bro. What am I doing? Uh, you guys said check new scan audible alert. Uh, it's off. It's already off. That's off. That's off. That's off. That's off. That's off. 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 What if I turn all weather alerts off for a second? Oh, we can't do that. We got to see the polygons. We got to see the polygons. And we also might just have to live with the, the beeping. Maybe that's a good thing. Hey, pay attention. We got a new a severe thunderstorm warning um, for Mejia and Gun Barrel City. 60 mile an hour winds possible with that. The newest one is actually up here for Sulphur Springs. Um, and that's going to be for 70 mile per hour winds as the storm moves east out of Dallas. Storm chaser Brad Arnold is visible right here in the Radar Omega app moving on Highway 82 towards Paris. He thinks that this storm right here could be the one to watch now as it might be producing a tornado just to the west of town. Uh, tomorrow is March 3rd, and Middle Tennessee has an enhanced risk. March 3rd, 2020 is when Nashville got the historic tornado. Stay, stay safe, everyone. Um, yeah, it does look like tomorrow will be a pretty significant day in and around the Nashville area. Um, don't know if it'll be a repeat of that, obviously, uh, but definitely something that we've got to watch out for. Jackson says, I wonder if they will upgrade to moderate risk tomorrow. The winds are going to be crazy tomorrow. Um, it's, it, it's possible that we see a moderate risk tomorrow. I, I, I don't know for sure if that's going to happen or not, 
but um, we could uh, that could definitely be something that uh, we have to deal with here. Try new scan audible alerts in radar settings or satellite settings. Yeah, it's off. It's all off. On, off. And the, the audible alert for the new scan, it, it sounds like somebody's uh, sneezing. It doesn't do the beeps. It's like, phew, or something like that. Uh, do we have anybody watching from uh, around Lexington uh, or Elgin, Texas? I think that you guys are, are going to also get in on some pretty strong winds here, and you'll see most of them before the line of storms actually comes in. You can see the uh, outflow uh, boundary a little bit, kind of the gust front getting way out in front of these storms near Round Rock. Huge uh, severe thunderstorm warning here uh, for Cameron, Texas. Uh, uh, Calvert, uh, Thornton, Grossbeck, uh, all these places in Texas, please uh, get ready for a very strong bout of winds that's getting ready to come in. And they just issued another <laughs> severe thunderstorm warning all the way out towards Mount Pleasant and Tyler, Texas. So that's going to be, that's going to be something. Uh, something else to watch uh, over the next little bit is stuff like this uh, up here in Arkansas. Remember how I was talking about this bend, right? Um, whenever the, the storms are more oriented this way, uh, they're able to ride along the warm front, right? And this could be something that happens with a storm like this. So we'll, we'll have to watch it. Uh, it is trying to rotate a little bit. It's not doing anything crazy just yet. Uh, but this is something near Buck Knob that we have to watch very closely um, as we go into the near future. That actually might be something that we have to watch extremely closely here. Uh, good idea. I can mute the app in my settings and just through windows boom boom yeah it's probably something that i just don't that i'm just not paying good enough attention to Uh, Ryan, please shout out BPW Logistics. We need freight agents that watch your channel. <laughs> Eric, uh, Ryan, the buzzer is going off when people send super chats. No, that can't be right. I am moving to San Antonio this year from South Dakota. Cody, get ready for some big hail. We saw it last night. March 2nd, 2012 with the Eastern Kentucky tornado outbreak. And now 11 years later, we have another chance. I don't know if it's going to be that. I, I really don't want to overhype uh, tomorrow. I, 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 I mean, definitely there, there's a huge possibility that something happens out here uh, in the Kentucky, Tennessee area. But I, 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 it, we're, we're getting dangerously close. Talking about the Nashville 2020 tornado, the March 2012 tornadoes, we're getting dangerously close to um, overhyping the situation. I, what I don't want to do is ha has, have a bunch of people talking about that. Schools closed down, you know, uh, hospitals closed. I don't know. They, they close the roads. <laughs> and then, you know, the worst case scenario doesn't happen because then maybe the next time we have some high space parameters, maybe a high risk or, or something like that, uh, people won't take it seriously either. So 
There's definitely a very good chance that we see a significant severe weather uh, event tomorrow. And um, I'm going to do everything I can to keep you updated on that. But um, can't we can't make any predictions as to how significant it's going to be. Is there a tornado near Waco? There is a tornado warning near Waco. Is there a tornado near Waco? That's hard to say. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. What they're doing here, what we're seeing, is that we've got a really strong line of storms moving through Waco, and there's all these little kinks in the line, right? Little areas where air can get out in front, and start rotating with the inflow and the the outflow coming out of the storm, um, and and they're getting ahead of those by issuing tornado warnings, which is very smart. It's a life saving move from the National Weather Service, uh, but I'm not sure if those are actually producing tornadoes or not. This one's a little bit more significant uh, right here, so uh, significantly south of Waco near Davila, over here uh, towards Cummings Crossing. Uh, you guys got to watch out for that one for sure because that is uh, a big punch out. That's going to try to produce a tornado there. Even if it's brief, could be uh, pretty significant uh, as that moves up towards, once again, um, Buckholtz in Texas. Looks like a lot of our storm chasers have moved up to the north and up here along this warm front. Remember, uh, like I said, uh, there's two, there's there's a couple different areas to watch for tornadoes as we go through the rest of the night, but they're all up in this general vicinity. Um, the warm front's going to provide uh, an opportunity for that, but then also this this part of the uh, cold front coming through is also going to be another area to watch. So I'm highly concerned about that zone right now. Yeah, that's probably going to produce a tornado. guys see in this right there tons of air coming in I don't like the look of that this is near sharp in uh, Texas that is um, you're under a tornado warning already in sharp but that was issued a while back for a completely different uh, rotation area So, not sure if they're going to redo the warning or not. But if they don't, just know that you need to be you need to stay in your safe spot for sure. We're up to three hundred and fifty thousand people without power in Texas now. Looks like there was a 60 mile an hour wind gust reported out of uh, Garland, uh, Texas, up here towards Greenville, also 60 miles per hour. Um, we had damage to buildings in Celeste. So still a lot of damage reports coming in. Uh, character says, are you going live tomorrow as well? My whole family uh, lives in the Carolinas. So there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to go live tomorrow, but it might not be in this format. Um, I might actually be the storm chaser uh, because I live up here in Kentucky. So not very often that I get a chance to go, uh, but we'll, we'll still try to have somebody 
hopefully we'll have Andy around. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to um, uh, have something worked out to where if I do go storm chasing, uh, obviously I can go live from the vehicle, uh, but we'll, we'll have more than just a, a, a view out my dash. You know what I mean? What's in the forecast for Memphis? Um, Chris, the forecast for Memphis is mostly rain uh, and, and heavy rain and, and flooding. I think that's going to be the biggest problem that we see up there. There is a conditional threat for uh, tornadoes and, and some strong winds tonight into the early morning hours tomorrow. But the main thing is going to be uh, flooding rain, I think, in the Memphis area. A new tornado warning has been we got issued. a new tornado warning in Texas. What is that, Milam or Milam County, Texas? We'll wait for that polygon to pop up and we'll zoom right in on it and we'll get hydrated again. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan. Actually, I wanted to talk about that new tornado warning. It's for that area you've you've circled, highlighted, where you're like, oh, this could definitely produce a tornado. And that's for the sharp Texas area headed towards Minerva and Cameron. But something that's really cool about that that you can see from the – since it's so close to the radar site, KGRK there – um, you can see actually where this is beginning to sort of bulge outward. We see a rear inflow jet that's pushing this part of the a line of storms uh, further issued. along faster than the rest of it. And so the outflow boundary, that gust front that's uh, to the south of it is actually just kind of getting wrapped up into it as a result of that because it's outpacing the rest of the line. So it's kind of riding on a boundary just because that uh, part of the line has the most powerful dynamics pushing it out ahead. Uh, and that's kind of why we're seeing this uh, tornado genesis occurring on or a potential tornado genesis occurring at the northern part of where this is bowing outward. Uh, so some pretty cool dynamics that we're able to see because we're so close to the radar. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Andy, for the update. Um, and uh, just uh, an incredible storm overall. You can see what he's talking about here uh, with the gust front being kind of pulled around up into uh, the the big divot uh, in, in, or the kink in the line here that is prompting our new tornado warning. This is the, what we uh, talked about several minutes ago. It does look like this might try, this might actually try to produce a more significant uh, area of rotation that's trackable um, and, and, and maybe it lasts a little while as it moves up towards uh, uh, Minerva, Cameron, and Maysfield in Texas. Please take shelter, y'all. Um, if you're in the path of this thing, because that looks like it could be pretty dangerous there as um, this is going to try to curl up and cause a, a, a tornado uh, down here in Texas. So there are other tornado uh, warnings as well. Um, uh, actually, no, there's not that they all just <laughs> were allowed to expire. <laughs> so this is going to be our main focus now until uh, something happens up there with a more northern storm. I did want to check in on that though, um, just to see what's happening up here. Man, that is a, a this is just a really strong storm up here to the south and east of Fort Smith in uh, Arkansas. It is rotating, but it's like huge. It's just, it's just this huge rotating area. I don't think it's actually um, compact enough to produce a tornado, but it's definitely a sign of uh, if something a little bit more discreet can come together in this area, we have to watch it very closely. Look at all those wind reports from around Dallas, though. All right, time to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll never get tired of that. <clears throat> An area between Nashville and uh, Louisville, Kentucky, I think would, would probably be the best spot, uh, maybe, I guess, to I, or worse, as far as like a tornado uh, potential goes for tomorrow. raining here okay I think I'm here in the the air conditioner or something something just sounded like rain over there Uh, can we ask the chasers where they're going tomorrow? Sure, let's do that. Chris Hall, y'all. Man, uh, what's your plan for tomorrow? Let us know. Well, right now I had to stop for uh, maybe a classic double steak burger here at Flying J. Haven't figured it out yet what I want, but... We're gonna sit around and uh, wait until this squall line hits around Texarkana and see if it may interact with the outflow boundary here and maybe uh, ramp up just a bit as it moves on off to the east. If not, I'm gonna be making a long drive back to Kentucky tonight, pull a little all-nighter for tomorrow's storms. All right, uh, let's ask Brad. Brad, I see you're almost uh, to your target area there near Paris. Um, uh, I'm assuming you're gonna stay parallel to this line or are you going to let it hit you what's your plan <clears throat> and then also the chat is interested in your plan for tomorrow uh are you planning on coming up uh, into y'all country uh, or are you going to be down in alabama what, what, what's going on with your plan for tomorrow have you thought that far ahead <coughs> I think Brad's in a pretty sparse service zone, so it might take him a second to get back with us. Let's see what Bryce Shelton said. Bryce, uh, give us an update, and uh, also let us know what your plans are for tomorrow. Are you chasing tomorrow? Are you coming to Kentucky? What's going on out there? Guys, I live in Kentucky. Yeah, right. Not much going on in the way right now for severe weather in central Arkansas. So I'm actually about to find me some supper and uh, head up I-30 towards Little Rock. But yes, I am coming to the great state of Kentucky tomorrow to chase some storms. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, we are just pretty much in between Paris and Clarksville, Texas, right up here on the Oklahoma-Texas state line. Um, we're going back towards the area where we have seen a couple of embedded circulations within this QLCS squall line, uh, where it's it's one of those kind of things where you're looking for the needle in the haystack again. We've we've caught we've 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 gotten lucky a couple of times this year with that. Um, so we're going to try it again. Ma main thing is we want to stay in front of it. Uh, if there's an obvious rotation, then we will we will obviously jump into that circulation. But right now we're kind of trying to stay in front of it a little bit. Um, as far as tomorrow goes, unfortunately, no, I will not be chasing tomorrow. Um, I wish that I could come up there to y'all country and, uh, and chase that area. Um, in fact, my home, uh, area is actually going to be under, under the gun tomorrow with a 5% tornado risk. Um, I've got prior commitments that I've got to be to, so that comes first, but, um, yeah, I will not be chasing tomorrow, but we're going to chase this line as long as it, as long as there are tornado warnings and as long as there are severe thunderstorm warnings, we're going to stay in front of this line and try to report back to you the best that we can. 
Awesome. Awesome. So Brad Arnold uh, won't be in uh, Kentucky tomorrow. So that, that, that means there won't be tornadoes in Kentucky tomorrow. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> they seem to always be where he is, though. So. <clears throat> We, uh, so Brad Arnold, uh, his exact location is right here and he's going to follow this line, uh, on highway 82 back into Texarkana and, and just see what's going to happen with it here. And boy, uh, does our line down here to the South continue to look impressive. So we got that tornado warning for Min, uh, Minerva, Cameron, Maysfield, and Gauze in Texas. And uh, hopefully everybody's still in their safe spot because this still could be producing a tornado here. That huge uh, circulating area right in there is where the tornado would likely be. Massive storm system tonight, y'all. Uh, Lori says that uh, thanks for keeping us hey, safe Ryan, across uh, the just board. I'm going to let you know, looking at or out of the Shreveport radar, um, that cell that is near Sulphur Springs is likely, um, that's very suspicious, right on the edge of the radar right there. Um, I would be extremely worried that there's a tornado on the ground with that one near Sulphur Springs. All right, so Brad is uh, calling out this storm down here near Sulphur Springs. Um, it does, uh, there's definitely something, uh, happening here on the radar. Obviously this is in the middle of a radar hole. We can't tell a whole lot about it. Um, but, uh, there is something suspicious going on there near Sulphur Springs. So we're under a, uh, considerable severe thunderstorm warning. So we should be in our safe spots anyways, in Sulphur Springs and areas near it. But we, we might have a sneaky little tornado trying to happen, uh, out here. Uh, and so we should. We should get to shelter if we haven't gotten there already. It's hard to see. This is another area that is just underserved by radar coverage for whatever reason. Hopefully that Durant radar uh, is really going to uh, keep us from having problems like this in the future. But Sulphur Springs, Texas, y'all watch out. And, and also areas east of that, Hatchetville, Mount Vernon. Um, man... How many towns are named the same thing in Texas? I guess it's such a big state. They're like, ah, that ain't going to cause a problem. <laughs> but it does. Uh, anyways, um, uh, Sulphur Springs, wind, uh, uh, over towards Mount Vernon, Oakdale, Lakeview, Eureka, all these places. Watch this line of storms closely as it comes in. We had problems over here earlier with tornadoes. Looks like it, it's not over yet. I can't believe that the the kind of severe weather uh, situation that we're going to be having tomorrow in Kentucky. That's uh, blowing my mind. We currently just have that one tornado warning right now. It's for this circulation south of Cameron, Texas. Cameron, you're getting ready to get slammed by some strong winds, okay? Um, but the tornadic circulation is to your south, and it should stay to your south. But let's get in our safe spot regardless. 
Um, we need to be getting there in Minerva, Hoyt, Liberty, Hanover, Marlowe, Maysfield, and Branchville in Texas as well. Zach and uh, Frankie. Uh, are y'all in Wendy's? Sorry if I'm uh, interrupting your dinner, but uh, what's your plan for the rest of the night? And are you chasing tomorrow up here in y'all country? Let us know. Um, a lot of people in chat are asking if I'm going to go chasing tomorrow or if I will stream. I am going to go chasing and I am going to stream. How about that? An incredibly active day of severe weather today. Our slang is Texarkana. So don't focus on the er, but say it fast. Texarkana. I know Texarkana sounds proper, but those of us that are from here, our slang is Texarkana. So don't focus on the er, but say it fast. Texarkana. I know Texarkana. Texarkana. I can do that. That's easy for me. That sounds right. <clears throat> Uh, as expected, as the line gets farther and farther east, I, I, I do think that the, uh, the winds are, are becoming less. Now, they're going from 80 miles per hour to 60, so it's still going to be a big problem, <laughs> okay? But the, the, the force of this line is getting a little bit less impressive. Um, we are seeing a big storm in San Antonio, though. Um, that's going to move down towards Stockdale and Seguin. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, College Station, Brian, you guys are going to get in on some of this uh, stronger uh, storms too. Mejia, it's getting ready to come through. And then um, up here on the northern side, you see how it's just kind of, it's not necessarily falling apart, but it's not as stout. And I think that's going to continue to be the case. And we're going to start to focus on the tornado threat a little bit more up here in, in this vicinity rather than the damaging wind threat. But like things, things are, we've passed the the climax or the the the, the biggest part of the storm system for today, uh, and we're going to go into a little bit of a lull. There will still be several severe weather events that happen tonight into tomorrow. But once we get into tomorrow around noon, things are going to ramp up really fast again. Peter R says, "Why is this happening? I need answers." It's weather. Weather happens. Sometimes there's big storms. Sometimes there's little storms. This is a big one. If you really want to know why this is happening, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch all of our videos because we, we explain it pretty thoroughly, sometimes a week in advance. The, the way this channel works is we, we talk about the forecast and start to narrow it down and then we go live and then i take a break I, sometimes i go fishing and then i come back and we do it all over again uh do
or if there's anybody on LSM that is good, like that's got something going on, we can do that as well. Town to the east of San Antonio is Seguin. Town to the east of San Antonio is Seguin. Seguin, okay. One of these days I'll be good at this. <laughs> I don't know when. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Ryan and team, for the coverage. And thank you to the National Weather Service from Sulphur Springs sent for my bathroom. Where do you think uh, Georgia will be the most active for tornadoes? I think that the northern part of Georgia would be the, the, the place where tornadoes would be more li most likely. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, LS. Thank you, Oscar. How's Louisville, Kentucky looking for tomorrow? Um, Louisville is in the zone uh, to potentially receive uh, tornado, tornadoes. Um, it's a pretty big zone, and it's, it's going to happen so fast. Uh, it's hard to, to really nail it down. Like, okay, here's, the, here's this circle where we've got to watch out for tornadoes. Um, I, I, but I think that right around Nashville, up to, to Louisville, draw a line there, right? And then draw a line from Louisville up to... Huntington, no, Moorhead, Kentucky. Draw a line from Louisville from, to Moorhead, Kentucky, and then draw that back down towards Knoxville and connect all those lines. You've got a box, and that's where I think that we have the, the best chance of uh, potential tornadoes. I'll, I'll show you that box. Something about like this. Now, there was going to be some really favorable conditions for tornadoes down here into Alabama and Georgia, but there's going to be less convection. There might be more of a cap, but as we saw today, that's not always going to, that's not always going to keep the tornadoes from happening. Wow. Wild says trucker here again. That was a wild drive. Um, I'd say it was. It went by Valiant, Oklahoma, and Hugo. It was a very nasty storm. Thanks for keeping me safe. I would say that was a nasty storm to drive through, man. I'd hate to do that in a big truck. Shoot. Uh, Marty Smith says, what uh, part of Kentucky are you thinking about um, chasing in tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> I'll probably drive out to, uh, I'll probably drive to, that's, you know, that is a great question. That is a great question. I'll pr probably drive. Ugh. There's not a great option. 
maybe Bowling Green. Is in there a highway here? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is my state. I know nothing about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I would probably go to Glasgow, Kentucky tomorrow early, right? I want to be there before the storms get there and then fall, try my best to fall back and either go up towards Elizabethtown or maybe down towards Cookville as the storms approach. But that could change completely tomorrow. Obviously, we'll be on the fly looking at that. Uh, checking back in on our tornado warning down here near Cameron. The, the rotation has really kind of um, died off a little bit, which is great news. But it's still there near Hanover and Liberty. We want you all in your safe spots down there. Uh, thoughts on Clarksville, Tennessee tomorrow. Um, you're, you're in a spot that could get uh, tornadoes. Um, you just got to be weather aware. That's going to be, what time will that be? Yeah, so we'll start to see problems in and around Clarksville probably as early as 11 a.m., uh, the problems will be over, though, as early as 1 p.m. Uh, the, the line of storms is going to go through pretty quick. That's why I've got to kind of get in front of the storms and let them come to me rather than trying to chase them down. Because these storms are going to traverse across the entire state of Kentucky in five hours. <laughs> and, you know, you can't, you can't drive that fast. But my goodness, there's even a, a decent chance. I, I got to show you guys this. There's even a decent chance for tornadoes, uh, even into eastern Kentucky. Look at that increased significant tornado parameter there. That's like over my house. And um, this is what the simulated radar uh, looks like there. I mean, you literally got a curved bean right here on the simulated radar. That, that'd be something. I, I'm going to drive out here to try and see a tornado. It, it, it's going to blow by me probably. And then on my way back home, I'll be about right here. And then there'll be a tornado <laughs> somewhere near the house. I hope that doesn't happen <laughs> for multiple reasons. And don't worry, uh, even though I will be um, uh, uh, chasing tomorrow, you guys will still be able to tune into the channel here for updates. Hey, Ryan. Hey, it's Brad. Just wanting to let you know we may have a developing circulation, possible tornado west of Mount Pleasant in Texas. We're north of that right now in Clarksville. We're waiting to see a couple scans to see if we need to drop south or not. Okay. All right. That is uh, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold bringing our attention back over here to Texas where it's. Is that in the garage? You go check. Make sure nothing's on fire or something. <laughs> we just had a, a loud noise here. Everything look normal? Okay. It's not just the weather house anymore, guys. It's the haunted weather house. <laughs> As uh, I don't know what that was.
Uh, is there any, if there's anything at all in Arkansas or um, around Shreveport, Louisiana, up to Memphis, Tennessee, like anywhere in this area? Um, beefy bell says I'm in sulfur Springs and it's bad. Yeah. It looks like the, the, probably the strongest part of the storm right now is moving through sulfur Springs. And, um, that's where Brad is concerned about m maybe a potential uh, tornado, uh, occurring. Uh, so we're watching that pretty hard right now. Uh, still looking at this area of circulation right here near Mount Vernon. So yeah, make sure if you're down here, you are uh, paying attention to alerts. I, I, this is, we can't really see what's happening on radar, but you can see that there is a kink, or there was, um, and now let's see what that looks like. It's just so hard to see because everything's so distorted. That's, but Brad Arnold's up here. He's going to go this way and go south and probably try to investigate that to see if anything's happening there. Nevertheless, if there's not a tornado in here, we're definitely getting 60 mile an hour winds all the way from Clarksville to Mount Pleasant here over the next hour or so. Uh, okay, real quick, uh, I've got to uh, take a, a brief uh, break. I will be right back. I think Andy's not here, but if anybody else wants to chime in, the floor is yours. Otherwise, give me just a second. Hey, Ryan, we may have a Q QLCS tornado just in front of us. Wait till the lightning lights it up. Oh. Is he on our? Okay, yeah, he's up. Can uh, can you pull him into one? Definitely some. Suspicious stuff happening here just south of his location near Clarksville, Texas. Um, <coughs> this is Storm Chaser. Sorry. <laughs> this is Storm Chaser Brad Arnold near Red River County, Texas. 
near Clarksville, and he thinks he might have a, a QLCS or a, a tornado that's occurring inside of a linear uh, mode occurring right in front of him here. But we'll just have to wait for the right lightning strike to see if that's actually happening. Also, we got to remember that if it's if we don't see it illuminated by the lightning strike, uh, we c it could still be in there just behind the rain a little bit. All right, there's definitely something going on uh, with what we can tell from the uh, velocity scans there just to your south. So uh, just holler at us if you see anything else. Copy that. We're going to go into Clarksville. It's extremely tough to tell at night. Um, we're going to see if it, uh, maybe we can get the power flash or something there, if there truly is something on the ground. Uh, live your best life says one hail of a storm in San Antonio with the hail storm there. Um, uh, pretty good size hail too uh, in San Antonio from what I can see there on the street. Oh, shit. That's each if we get one on the ground. <laughs> Are two tornadoes on the ground not good enough? We gotta have three? Come on now. Tough crowd tonight. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty good deal. Though. You get yeah. everybody doing it tonight, nice. All right, challenge accepted, folks. Just want to hear it most hands uh, if, if they do see something. audio lightly in the background if that's not too distracting. Mahaya. Yeah, I, I messed that one up once today, but uh, I think for the most part I, I had it. I, I, I had it figured out. Yeah, 350,000 people without power tonight in Texas, mostly around Dallas. Uh, here are the areas that the National Weather Service will be um, investigating for tornado damage in the coming days from our first round of severe weather. More damage will be possible with the line of storms moving across the area tonight. If you have damage, please let us know in the comments. Uh, I'm going to retweet that. Franklin County. So these are all the, the places where uh, they're going to be investigating tornado damage. And we'll probably get a lot of um, reports coming in about the uh, the magnitude of the tornadoes. Uh, I, I believe that one near Shreveport was probably an EF2 from just from what I'm seeing. Um, sorry, uh, from the uh, the photos and stuff. Obviously, you can't tell. Uh, we got to wait until they uh, they officially survey it. But that's what it looks like. Oh, here's that uh, here's that fire that we missed earlier. 
<laughs> hey, Ryan, um, it's Brad. We're, we're in Clarksville right now. Um, looking at the Shreveport radar, noticing two areas. I, I thought the initial one was side lobing. Um, get your opinion on that. We got two areas to our southwest that both, I mean, really look good, but it almost looks too good to be true, I guess you could say. Is that is that a case of side lobing on those two velocity couplets? We are going to respond to him as soon as I can get the daggone radar to work. And um, uh, we're also going to get uh, a, a, some input from, well, oh, Andy's not here. So um, the, these are the two areas. Oh, you guys can't even see this. These are the two areas of um, interest, I guess, that uh, Brad's talking about. And uh, I do think that there's some contamination there. Uh, so uh, I, that's what I'm going to uh, tell Brad. But there's also definitely rotation happening in these areas. Uh, so we'll get uh, we'll get some information from Andy or, or maybe one of the other meteorologists if they have it. Um, but I'm going to say Brad. Um, yeah, we're looking at that same thing. It does look a bit contaminated, especially because of the distance. But um, uh, that my personal opinion is that there's definitely uh, rotation there. It just might look a little exaggerated. I'm going to get uh, uh, an opinion from Andy as well and, and pass that on to you. I appreciate that. Wow. The, the HRRR wind gusts for tomorrow, even without thunderstorms, could be hurricane force. From Nashville through Lexington up into areas just east of Cincinnati. That's nuts. Guys, tomorrow's going to be a big day. I'm kind of torn now. <laughs> I yes earlier today I was telling the team I was like, "Hey, listen, if there's if there if it looks like there's going to be maybe some tornadoes, I'm going to go chase them. But if it looks like it's going to be like this big deal, like I pr I should probably stick around here." And I, I never thought that it was actually going to end up being like a huge deal, it, but <sighs> I don't know. What do you guys think I should do? Wow, some really strong winds moving into Clarksville here through uh, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold's camera. Ryan, I don't know if you saw the stream. We just had a roof fly off right in front of us, power flashes. I thought that's what I saw. I didn't want to say nothing, though. <laughs> I didn't want to be the guy. Debris! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah obviously damaging winds uh moving into the clarksville area here once again right they have a tornado right now power flash just knocked out the power to the west side of town yeah there might actually be a tornado, a tornado in there warning has been issued 
and we got a new tornado warning. Man, Brad, we got to get you, like, whatever Brad does that's not storm chasing, we got to make sure he doesn't have to do that. And this is all he ever does because he is good at it. <clears throat> Dang, son. Okay, so this is Clarksville. Uh, obviously, we've got uh, some strong winds and uh, a potential uh, tornado back in there, uh, literally uh, uh, causing power flashes. And, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing debris fly around here. Uh, but the tornado warning that actually just came through is for areas just a little bit to the south of this where we might have uh, another one uh, down here near Talco. Uh, so let me show you that. Oops. Uh, this is the uh, the new tornado warning. It's flashing there. Brad Arnold's up here. They should probably issue a warning for that as well. But um, this is where the actual new tornado warning is. For Talco, Maple Springs, Hearts Bluff, uh, Avery, Oak Grove, and Tr Tucker's Corner there. Looks like there's going to be another one, too, if you follow this east. Uh, new circulation down there near Talco just got warned all the way up to DeKalb. Ryan, we got debris hitting the car. Holy smokes. Y'all see that? In the car. Lots. Instant replay. Another power flash. Yeah, that was right in front of uh, where Brad is. And remember, guys, Brad is in Clarksville up here. Um, and this is, uh, you know, uh, there's a severe thunderstorm warning that goes all the way out to English, Reed Settlement, Harris, uh, Hallworth, Idabel. Uh, but there is no tornado warning. However, I believe Brad saw a, a tornado uh, go through the town a little bit down the road there in front of him. And that's going to continue up towards Reed Settlement and, and Briarly. But even outside of the tornado, what Brad is seeing now uh, is the uh, considerable severe weather that's happening along with this. Uh, so everybody along this line can expect this. But, man, um, I, I think that those areas of rotation that Brad was kind of pointing out that look to be uh, exaggerated uh, through the contamination are, are something. Like there's definitely something happening there. Um, so both of these uh, areas of rotation, I think, have tornadoes in them. We've got a warning on the southern one, um, but y'all watch out on the northern one as it's coming right for you, too. If you're just now tuning in, uh, Brad's in Clarksville, Texas. Uh, how do we get the color scheme for Radar Omega? Is there a file you can share? Yeah, it's in our Discord server. Um, if our mods can post a link to our Discord server in chat, that'd be great. We have a, a huge community of like almost 20,000 people in there, and somebody will give it to you. It's floating around in there somewhere. That's another cool thing you can do with Radar Omega. You can change the color tables. 
nasty storm that uh, Brad Arnold's in here. We just saw debris. We saw power flashes in, in the city of Clarksville. Uh, now he he's moving east. I think he's going to try to get out in front of this thing um, and then hopefully give us a view of the new tornado worn storm that's going to move up towards Oak Grove and DeKalb in Texas. Oh, that was another power flash right there, I believe. Was that another power flash? Dude, man, it, it might be right in front yeah, of Yeah, that right was another here. power flash. We've seen about four or five in this same area. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, oh, you'll, you'll see that in just smoke. a second. I'm not sure. Dang. Uh, so we can't really see what's going on out there, but you guys just saw the power flash. There's something ripping telephone poles out of the ground. Um, <clears throat> and guys, this is up here near Clarksville, moving up towards Dilworth and Reed Settlement and Briarly. There's another one. Ryan, I believe that that is uh, just a, a live line that is down uh, that's continuing to spark. I'm not sure what brought it down, but there appears to just be a down power line. Dang. So obviously a very dangerous situation here in uh, Clarksville uh, up there towards Dilworth. I, I do believe what brought that down was probably a tornado, if not just the, the, the very strong damaging wind. So we want y'all uh, to be in your safe spots all the way up there towards Briarly and Idabel. Um, as the storm continues to uh, move up towards you. Um, more importantly, we got a new tornado warning down here in uh, just south of where uh, uh, our uh, storm chaser Brad Arnold is. And that includes Talco, Maple, Maple Springs, Boxelder, Oak Grove, and Dalby Springs here. Uh, everybody on the polygon needs to be getting to their shelter fast because these storms still mean business, man. Hey, Ryan, we have debris, so there was something on the ground uh, crossed right in front of us. So there's there's something, I'm telling you, there's a tornado um, probably moving right towards Reed Settlement right now. Uh, please take shelter. There's not a warning yet uh, from the National Weather Service. But that's that's almost certainly a tornado there. And um, we saw a uh, roof. We saw the roof fly off. Holy crap. I don't want to this is what we were looking at earlier. Signs falling down. Yeah, that right there. Did you guys see that? That's what I saw out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> but I didn't want to. I didn't want to say anything because I thought I'm out of. It might have just been a glitch in the video. Oh, shit. Yeah, right there. Uh, here's some damage out of uh, Greenville, Texas, Hunt County. Dang. Brad has, yeah, he selected all the correct storms today.
Uh, somebody asked about Tyler, Texas. You guys are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Big line of storms getting ready to move through probably within the next 45 minutes. It's going to pack a punch with some strong winds. The tornado threat, I think, has gone down for, uh, quite a bit uh, down here, but still we got to watch it just in case. Most concerned about this northern extent of the line where Brad is right now, up here between uh, Mount Pleasant, uh, Dalby Springs, New Boston, DeKalb, uh, then up into Oklahoma and Arkansas, right around the Texarkana area. That's where things are going to be getting wild over the next hour or so. Lots of people are asking about tomorrow again. We will uh, go over that before long. Like it's going to happen, I promise. Sorry, looking through Twitter um, at all the damage. There's a lot of damage reports um, coming out of uh, around Fort Worth and Dallas of just general wind damage. There's a ton of uh, new damage reports coming out of uh, Louisiana from earlier today from the tornadoes down there. I'm just trying to take it all in and report anything extremely uh, relevant. And uh, Brian M. Finger, once again, um, <laughs> just uh, has probably the most incredible video footage of the day from the uh, tornado that Brad Arnold saw earlier, uh, but Brian was able to record it from the drone, and that's on Twitter. I've, I've retweeted that. Um, if you guys want to follow me over there, or Brian, um, and you, you can also send me stuff uh, through, um, you know, the uploading videos and pictures. Uh, it's at Ryan Hall, y'all. And I've retweeted that, that video from Brian. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're really just waiting on an update from uh, Brad now um, to see if there's anything else happening with this line as he gets close to Inanna. He's driving towards DeKalb. Uh, of course, we still have the tornado warning for Boxholder. Tucker's Corner, Hogsden, and Oak Grove. And we'll keep watching that um, as it moves. Like This is going to continue to cause problems. I just don't know if we're going to see power flashes and all that stuff um, as uh, Brad gets a better angle on this and he turns around.
I'm in Idabel, Oklahoma. We had a tornado on November 4th. I'm hoping tonight is not a repeat. I don't think it's going to be. Uh, I was there with you guys on November 4th. I remember that. And I don't think this is a similar situation. However, it, it is a dangerous situation, and we need to be taking it seriously. MDTT, how has it been so far today in terms of storms and naders? Uh, it's been busy. It's honestly been busy. I, we said yesterday that today was going to be the day, and it certainly has been. And um, now, you know, tomorrow also has the chance of being the day as well. So things are, are not slowing down anytime soon. Uh, six hours later, still streaming. You are the GOAT. Of weather, the goat of weather. That's what I'm changing the uh, the name of the channel to, weather goat. <laughs> Not really. Will you cover the snowstorm? The North is expected to see tomorrow. You see, if I go storm chasing, I'm not going to be able to do that as well as if I stay here, right? Um, if I go storm chasing, we'll have a really exciting live stream uh, of, but it'll be focused on Kentucky and Tennessee. Obviously, we'll have Andy around i think i i haven't talked to him about that yet uh we'll have um uh you know whoever else is available to be around to to add to that conversation um and we will be able to report on uh the weather outside of what i'm doing but we're not going to have full control on showing the yala meter submissions and this and that and whatever um so that that's another thing i'm keeping in mind is I might not go chasing tomorrow if this looks like it's going to be something that would be more beneficial for me to be here at the at the helm, you know. Yep, still got 336,000 people without power in Texas. Isaiah says, uh, you're the man, brother. I don't even watch the Weather Channel anymore. You're my go-to guy. Isaiah, thank you for that. Somebody buy Brad a steak? Hey, a steak? Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be getting Brad a steak tonight. Don't you worry. We'll get all of them. Something. But Brad, he gets two. Dang. There's so much crazy footage coming in of the uh, the Shreveport tornado. And I believe at this time, while this was being filmed, I don't believe there was a warning on it. That's crazy. That's, that's why uh, the that's why the messaging from the Storm Prediction Center and um, the buildup to these events, I think, is so important. Sometimes it, it goes against us because if you talk too much about a severe weather event before it happens, and then when it happens, it, maybe it's less than what you'd expect or one area didn't get anything, uh, maybe that actually makes people, um, you know, kind of disregard future updates, you know, and, and, and weather stuff. That's one thing, but... You know, if you're in Louisiana and, and the only way you know if there's going to be a tornado on any given day is waiting for a tornado warning to go off or a tornado siren, you, you're going to look at that. You're going to walk out of warm Walmart one day and it's going to be like that. You're going to just see a tornado and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Why is this happening? But if you if you if you are following along, if you if you know what the Storm Prediction Center outlook is, if you're, you know, watch if you already have a general idea of what's going on with the weather, you'll never really be surprised. Uh, by something like that that's why we are that's why we always try to say don't be scared be prepared 
being prepared is watching this channel. Just going to your local National Weather Service website, following the Storm Prediction Center on Twitter, um, downloading Radar Omega, checking it every once in a while. And, you know, that kind of stuff can can really hey, help Ryan, out Brad, even more we are than warnings. east of right now, still on U.S. Highway 82, pretty much in between Clarksville and Boston, um, in front of this uh, QLCS. Um, the reason we have stopped is because as we were driving, the windows immediately fogged up every single window in my tahoe fogged up meaning that we are literally on a boundary right now which um, tornadoes love boundaries are attracted to them and they can often enhance zero to one helicity uh, we're going to sit right here to see if anything can kind of kink out in this line um, but uh, definitely um, something we need to watch all right uh, brad is um in near Avery in uh, Texas, he's right along this boundary. He believes uh, that uh, could uh, maybe assist in tornado genesis here as this line of storms gets closer and closer to him. And um, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we're watching him closely. We're all on the edges of our seats here, uh, waiting to see what Brad has for us next in store. Uh, Ryan, is anything happening in Jonesboro, Arkansas? Um, yeah, yeah, big, big rain blob, big rain blob up here. Uh, this is going to cause problems tonight through a lot of Arkansas in the form of flooding. Get ready for flooding uh, in Danville, Russellville, Herbert Springs, Batesville, Jonesboro, up there towards Memphis, southwestern Tennessee. Um, and we did we did uh, uh, talk about the uh, moderate risk um, for excessive rainfall from the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, but if uh, Andy wants to give us a little bit more uh, info on that, um, he, he can. I will. Thank you, Ryan. Actually, you got me with the... I, I wasn't expecting you to put the cam up. <laughs> the Discord preview is so small, I didn't even know I was on the stream. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the cat content. His name is Midas. He has the golden touch. Thank you. Uh, I'll be sure to provide you more of that in the future, by the way. It helps alleviate the, you know, the stress. You know, it's always good to see some feline content there. All right, so that uh, weather uh, or that moderate risk for flooding there, as you can see, um, if Ryan pans back to, or pans back, if Ryan goes back to the radar, you can see literally our flash flood warnings are starting to cover every single part of that southwest uh, bit of the moderate uh, risk for excessive rainfall. And that's only going to expand north and east with the rest of that moderate risk as we go on and in, uh, into the night. Flooding will continue to be a problem. Uh, and we've got uh, Heidi telling me that meteorologist Heidi telling me that LaFleur County in Oklahoma is experiencing a lot of flooding with road closures and stranded cars. So that's why we see those flash flood warnings going out. And uh, it's it's quite probable that this will prove to be the most dangerous part of uh, this entire storm system as we go across these uh, the you know, the rest of tomorrow. Um the flooding risk is going to pose quite the big issue, even though we saw 80 mile an hour winds through a highly populated metro or two metros, depending on how you see it. Um, I, th I do think that the flooding will pose most of the uh, impasse to, you know, people's routines or nighttime adventures. So that's what I have to say about the flooding. We'll continue to see that spread uh, to the Little Rock area north and then into the boot heel of, of Missouri and nor in areas north of Memphis and west of Patica in Kentucky. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Andy, for um, updating us on that. that is, that's going to be a big problem overnight, especially the fact that we're already seeing warnings, uh, flash flood warnings make it as far east into Arkansas as near Russellville. And that area still has a I mean, several hours of, of heavy rain left. Um, that is definitely going to continue to become a bigger and bigger problem. I'd watch out for that. North of Little Rock, near Conway, Clinton, Batesville, up towards, uh, like Andy said, the boot hill of um, uh, Missouri. All these areas need to be hyper uh, weather aware tonight, especially if you are in a flood-prone area. Even if you're not, though, um, you want to pay attention to what's going on out there. 
Um, Andy, we, we always appreciate when Andy comes through with uh, anything that he has to say or his cat. Um, but just speaking of team members, uh, <laughs> we've got our traditional uh, picture of Riley set up <laughs> coming in. This is what uh, uh, Riley uh, it looks at whenever he's helping us um, uh, do the live streams. He is remote. He's way up there in Wisconsin or Minnesota or something. And um, he's also a, a, a part of this with all the screens. We got Carly right next to me with a similar looking setup. We got me with all the monitors. And then we've got Riley um, and Andy and everybody else. It, I think there's a total of like 187 monitors or something that goes into uh, creating these streams. <laughs> if you did the math, like that's probably what it comes out to. Here's Kenzie, uh, our social media person, our uh, merch manager per like uh, the, a lot of people wear a lot of different hats too on the Ryan Hall y'all team but he's got the monitor set up as well and uh keeping an eye on everything all of this information flows through uh all of these people and eventually comes to me or Andy and, and you guys get it uh for free on YouTube always and forever thank you please subscribe <clears throat> Uh, Crystal says, thank you, Ryan, uh, for all that you do. Uh, we get bad storms and tornadoes more frequently than we ever have before. Uh, I am one of the few who consistently are on top of the weather to help. Crystal, that's great. Thank you. Riley has an update. Go ahead. Hey, Ryan, I uh, just spoke with Brad Arnold. Believe it or not, he is um, positioning to intercept yet another possible tornado as we have the one tornado warning, and he's going right to it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Storm chaser Brad Arnold is right here. Uh, he's left Clarksville, uh, and now he's moving down towards DeKalb. He's on Highway 82, really close to Oak Grove. And I think what he's after here is uh, this little punch out. And I mean, he's, he hasn't been very wrong uh, many times today. That could be another area where we have a tornadic circulation. And um, uh, obviously the radar is not going to be able to tell us much because we're in a radar hole, but Brad will, if he sees something and you can look at his camera above my head, he will let us know. Changing Brad's name to Rad. It's W R A D. Major W R A D. Uh, Zachary says, I'm late to the stream. How bad is it going to be in y'all country tomorrow? I'm from West Liberty, Kentucky. Um, it looks like it's going to be pretty bad. Uh, I, I can't tell you exactly how bad it's going to be, especially not in West Liberty, Kentucky, but you're in the zone for uh, potentially experiencing a tornadic uh, conditions uh, tomorrow. If no tornadoes, then definitely some strong gusty winds, maybe an excessive hurricane force. Uh, with some of these storms as they come through. Does does mom have a YouTube account? Name of it. Oh. <laughs> well, somebody said uh, you should stay home tomorrow. This is your mother speaking, but I, I don't know if it actually is. <laughs> um, here I'll send it to you. I don't want them to get spammed with like, is, "Are you Ryan's mom?" But that would be so funny if I just randomly looked at chat and saw that.
Okay. Uh, so if you're just now tuning in, we've got a tornado warning over here for Bowie or Bowie, uh, Franklin, Morris, Red River, and Titus counties in Texas. Uh, Storm chaser Brad Arnold, Brad Arnold is right smack dab in the middle of it, and he's trying to give us a view of this tornado if it's still on the ground. And um, I think I can pull him up here. Yeah, uh, let's ask him if he's seen anything. Brad, you see anything else yet? No, sir. Nothing just yet. Uh, I've got my eyes peeled. No power flashes since we saw those in Clarksdale. Um, it definitely has a kink on it, though. And also, I'm noticing that we've got a renegade prefrontal cell that's going up just to our southeast as well. So keeping an eye on it as well. Yeah, that is um, definitely something that I was noticing uh, whenever uh, we were looking at the radar here. This little thing. Um, you, don't, you, don't, you don't like that. You, you don't usually want to see that. Um, that might cause some problems up there near DeCab uh, in um, uh, Texas. But for now, let's get to shelter anyways, despite the intricacies of what's going on out here. Um, I, I do want to briefly zoom out and, and look at this line way down to the south. San Antonio's had a couple big storms today. Lots of wind reports coming out of here. Um, 58 miles an hour, uh, 60 mile an hour all around San Antonio. Lots of hail reports too, one inch in diameter and about one and uh, one quarter inch in diameter hail reported in and around San Antonio. Those storms are moving along I-10 near Gonzalez. They'll probably make it all the way to Houston at some point tonight. Uh, strong winds are getting ready to move into the Buffalo and Centerville areas in um, uh, Texas. And uh, let's see here. We've got strong winds and, and definitely some uh, hail getting ready to move into Tyler, Texas as well. But up here near the northern extent of the line, uh, this is where we are kind of most concerned about potential tornadoes. We got that tornado warning north of Mount Pleasant uh, for areas like Avery and Decab, um, and that is going to be our main area of focus for the next little bit. But I think now also some of our big time flooding uh, is about to start happening here uh, in places around Little Rock. Uh, where I, I think we're going to have a life-threatening flooding situation try to unfold uh, throughout the night uh, between um, uh, Waldron, Russellville, Herber Springs, up there towards Harrisburg and Jonesboro. Please, if you live in, near a flood-prone area, don't let your guard down and be hyper-vigilant of these storms tonight. Uh, S Baker, uh, thank you for the very generous super chat. Thank you so much for your coverage tonight. We were able to get patients evacuated to safety minutes before the sirens actually went off. Thank you so much. Uh, your friends here in central Texas S Baker. Thank you for that. And, and, and thank you just for the note. Uh, that's unbelievable. I'm glad we were able to help, um, get patients evacuated to safety minutes before the sirens actually went off. Uh, Dragonheart, hey Ryan, thanks for being my go-to guy for weather. Uh, what, should I, what should I be expecting for Owensboro? We'll talk about that in detail here in just a minute, I promise. I promise. It's pronounced Kalb. The Kalb. Ryan, we got a tornado right here, QLCS. We have power flashes, I've seen the funnel. All right, we've got uh, Brad Arnold now with another, uh, uh, the fourth tornado of the day here. I don't know, is the screen black or are we just looking at night? Can you give me a refresh? All right, um, uh, Brad Arnold's saying that we've got a, a tornado uh, over here. He is, once again, I want to give you guys his exact location, halfway between Avery and DeKalb, and um, the, he's saying we've got a tornado. We've got power flashes uh, I'm going to keep that uh, above my head there. When he comes back up, we'll see him. Uh, additionally, we can check in the Radar Omega app. Um, it looks like he's working there. A 
Okay, is he back on ours? Okay. All right. We, <laughs> he might be. Yeah, I think so. We, we, he might be having some connection issues, and also he's like in a tornado, so obviously it's going to be dark, right? Okay, there he is. All right, he was pointing us towards the darkness because I'm guessing that there's, there's power flashes and lightning illuminating uh, the potential tornado over here. Uh, so this is a live view from Storm Chaser Brad Arnold. He thinks we've got another tornado approaching Oak Grove, Garland, and DeKalb. All right, um, and DeKalb. If you're in this area, there is no tornado warning now. They've allowed all the warnings to expire. They might need to issue a new one, uh, but even if they don't, okay, let's go ahead and get prepared for the worst uh, all the way up here to Woodstock, Texas. I said DeKalb, and then people said, Ryan, it's DeKalb. I said DeKalb and said, Ryan, it's pronounced DeKalb. I'm just going to say what I want to say. I'm, I'm going to stop even looking at chat. This is Brad's location here. I see there's about 500 of you in the app watching his uh, video feed with me. But look at the temperature 66, dew point 62 right where he is. Holy smokes, y'all. Hold on, brief intermission. NATO cast. NATO cast for tomorrow paints a 10% hatched across western Tennessee and western Kentucky. That's a 10% hatch risk for tornadoes, meaning that there could be, and this is just NATO cast. It's one model or one, one forecast. This forecast is saying there could be uh, EF2 or stronger tornadoes within uh, 25 miles of any given point in that yellow area tomorrow. audio from within the tornado no, sniffer, lights. which oh, is the name of Brad Arnold's vehicle now. Oh, no way. They got hit. This whole place would be breed. You guys have to, like, bombard like, uh, his social media and tell him that he has to wrap his vehicle it's not lighting and name it the tornado doing. sniffer. I know. I, I saw what you saw, though. I, I, distinct lowering, for sure. How am I looking right? You're good. Nine miles till empty. Fifty nine miles to empty. Probably have to fill up. Just take it easy. All right. So it sounds like um, the they haven't seen a power flash at least in a couple minutes. So that might be good news. But also, it, it you know we could see a transfer of this circulation here. If I'm in DeKalb or DeKalb, uh, I would uh, definitely uh, be. Just, just, I wouldn't be outside. I'd be in a safe spot over the next uh, 30 minutes or so. The Nader sniffer. Yeah, that's even better.
Um, his Twitter is Brad Arnold WX. I've retweeted a bunch of his stuff today if you want to look at it mine. Um, or you can just go to at Brad Arnold WX. <laughs> Everybody is, uh, the, the storm chasing community, I guess I should say, is pretty, pretty torn on tomorrow. Seeing people saying that there's, <laughs> they're going to drive out to Kentucky tomorrow because uh, there's going to be a ton of tornadoes. Seeing people say that nothing's going to happen, there's going to be a linear mode of sheared out storms. There's always two options. One of those is going to happen. So uh, we, we don't have any tornado warnings right now, but the storm that Brad Arnold is on is capable of producing more tornadoes as we go later into the evening. Yeah, there's going to be crazy wind tomorrow. Absolutely. Is the tornado in DeKalb yet? So the storm potentially producing a tornado is in DeKalb. You need to be, um, you know, not out in your living room. You need to be in a, a place away from windows and doors. Uh, or, um, you know, just get to your safe spot. But I don't think that Brad is currently seeing a tornado, and he is in DeKalb. That's, he's in the town right now. Yeah, there's schools closed all up and down. Um, uh, Kentucky here. My hometown or my county's closed. The county next to me's closed. My wife is a school teacher. So I wonder if she's going to get out of school and go chasing with me. Like, well, okay, so my wife isn't getting out of school as of right now. <laughs> uh, a lot of people in the chat are like, quit talking about Kentucky, talk about DeKalb. Like, there's nothing else I can say. <laughs> the storm is there. Uh, be in your safe spot. There is no tornado warning right now. We haven't heard any updates from Brad saying that there is a tornado. It's a dangerous storm. Take shelter. It'll be past you. In 15 minutes. Um, but there are thousands of people watching uh, a little bit farther to the east that this is still yet to affect uh, that I, I want to make sure that we're talking to as well. Um, 
We got a lot of people in Clarksville, Tennessee watching. All the schools in Clarksville and Montgomery County in that school system in Tennessee will be closed tomorrow due to the weather. They normally don't announce that they're going to close until like 5 a.m. So that's something. Hey, Ryan. Um, just want to let you know we are heading southeast uh, from DeKalb, headed towards Boston. Uh, I think we may have a gate to gear, uh, gate to gate uh, velocity scan or velocity couplet just to our south, and we're getting pelted by pea size hail. All right, so Brad is um, pointing out this uh, new area of potential circulation. Boy, he's good at seeing him through that con con contamination. Um, and that's going to be coming up right into his location. Um, looks like it might have uh, dissipated there a little bit, but of course that's why we have Brad. Uh, if he sees anything actually out there on the ground, he will let us know. And he's got pea size hail there near DeKalb. That's your circulation. That's where it's going, and that's where Brad Arnold is. So that's where we're watching. No tornado, as far as we can tell right now. There's no warning, but we want everybody along this line here to 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 take shelter as if there was a warning, because you might as well. We've seen what this thing can do today. Um, uh, Boston, uh, Red Bank, y'all go ahead and get to your safe spots. Strong storm just moved through College Station. Getting ready to get a pretty good storm with 60 mile an hour winds in Madisonville and Crockett, Texas. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we've got a very strong storm moving into Gladewater and Longview, Texas with 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, down here near Lone Star, uh, we got some rotation here on this line. That might be another area we have to watch for a potential tornado uh, near Center Point moving up towards Dangerfield. Uh, we got to keep an eye on that. And then, of course, the strongest part of this storm is where Brad is right now. And that's where we might see another tornado try to come through here in just a little bit. Brad's very close to it. So if it's going to happen, we'll see it here in a second. The chat is so torn. Stop talking about Texas. What about Tennessee? I'm talking about Tennessee. What about Kentucky? Replace every state and swap. That's every message in the chat. I will say that the STP, the significant tornado parameter values for tomorrow, are the highest I think I've seen in a very, very long time uh, for this area. That doesn't mean that there's going to be bad tornadoes all the time. Like that just means that the, the conditions will be favorable for them in a way that they haven't been in a long time. Uh, one of the things that might um, help us out tomorrow might be our saving grace, I guess you could say, um, is, is there's not a lot of, there's not going to be a whole lot of instability and there's going to be a, a ton of shear, right? So when these storms are bubbling up, they're going to hit that wall in the sky and get smeared off again, uh, kind of like what they did today in, uh, in Louisiana and in, in East Texas. But there's going to be more. There is definitely going to be more convection happening out there. So we'll, I don't know. It's going to be a, a now casting situation tomorrow for sure. Brad, I'm going to do another little walkthrough of the forecast for tomorrow for everybody that's watching in uh, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Uh, just uh, holler at me if there's anything at all that you think we should uh, turn our attention to back your way, okay? Um, so we're going to do that, and Brad's going to let us know if we need to look Copy back that, his Ryan. way. <clears throat> so um, yeah, let's let's walk through this here. Um, the forecast for tomorrow, one more time. I, I want to make sure I go over this um, because there's a lot of parents, uh, there's a lot of people concerned about tomorrow. There's no school. Why? What's happening? Well, um, 
we've got a big storm system coming through, okay? Uh, tomorrow around uh, 7 in the morning, actually, there, we're going to start to see new convection along this cold front uh, that might start causing problems in Arkansas. Uh, let me show you the current radar again real quick. This is the current radar, right? This is what the storm system looks like right now. We've got a huge area of damaging winds going all the way down close to past Austin, Texas. As this moves east tonight, it's going to weaken and it's probably going to, for the most part, diminish uh, before uh, it, it really gets, um, sorry, uh, before it makes it all the way through Louisiana. But tomorrow morning, uh, it is going to reform. It is going to reform. Uh, and uh, it's going to be kind of broken in nature. Notice how instead of one solid line of storms, we see a lot of broken up storms. We, we don't see a, a linear mode. Uh, we see uh, multicellular and possibly even individual cells uh, of storms moving through western Tennessee, western Kentucky, all the way down into Alabama and Mississippi. This is around the time when the uh, wind shear really starts cranking up and we could start seeing potentially some tornadoes here. Let's push this forward even more. Uh, let's go to 2 p.m. Now we've got mature cells, uh, potentially strong storms, and maybe even supercells uh, that are going to be uh, still mostly discrete, moving across into central Kentucky, middle Tennessee, into eastern Tennessee, uh, northern Alabama, northwestern Georgia. Uh, that's around 2 p.m. And then if we go into 4 p.m., we have multiple Potential supercells moving through eastern Kentucky, maybe even making it into extreme southern Ohio, down into southwestern Virginia, eastern Tennessee, uh, western North Carolina, and then into uh, northwestern South Carolina and northern Georgia. This area right here, um, at this time, 4 p.m., tornadoes possible in that zone. Watch what happens, though, as I take it this all the way out. Even into the Piedmont of South Carolina, uh, even into portions of North Carolina, there's a, still some isolated storms here that could try to produce uh, tornadoes maybe uh, all the way through 6, 7, 8 p.m. before this really kind of dies out um, before it gets off to the uh, East Coast. And then uh, <laughs> Saturday night or early Saturday morning, we're going to have a ton of water spouts out here over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, you know, that's a... That's an unfortunate situation for the fish out there, uh, but not uh, not really our problem anymore once this gets past uh, the East Coast. Look at that. ton of curved beans out here. <laughs> wow. We have to send Brad Arnold out on a boat. Try to get a view of those. Anyways, so that's one thing. That's what the radar could look like, right? Let me show you something else, something um, really interesting i guess with this Th this is the wind gusts all right so even without thunderstorms just the wind gusts around this super strong low pressure center are going to be around 50 to 60 miles per hour tomorrow in west tennessee and northern mississippi at 11 a.m tornado or not storm or not you're going to see very strong winds but look at how much they actually increase as they get in the middle tennessee 74 75 i actually the the maximum on here is 83 and and it, it, this is a huge wind field too this is all of tennessee all of kentucky even up into illinois 60 mile an hour wind gusts maybe at times as this thing just races uh, off to the north and east bringing those really strong winds into central kentucky and then up into ohio as well Holy smokes, guys. We could see 100-mile-an-hour wind gusts on some of the uh, mountain peaks here along the uh, West Virginia panhandle up into southern Pennsylvania. Wow. This is going to be a, a crazy weather day tomorrow, y'all. This is not your average storm system right here. This is definitely looking not good. Uh, on top of that, what's causing the storms, right? Well, we've got, we're going to have warm, moist air for everybody in the yellow and the orange as those are dew points. Watch how they get all the way up into the sixties, mid sixties into Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia. And then they immediately get crashed down to, uh, in the fifties and forties as the cold front comes through. That's the forcing. This is this colder, drier air is what's forcing this warmer air up into this, the sky and uh, up there in the sky, we've got a bunch of spinning wind right look at the 850 millibar 
heights or, and, and wind speeds. We're talking about close to 80 to 90 mile per hour winds just above the surface, maybe 100 mile per hour winds just above the surface. Um, and when that convection gets slofted up into the sky, it hits that. Um, and then right above that, we have uh, stronger winds, uh, even at the 500 millibar level, oriented in a little, slightly different you know, way to where the storms are actually going to curve with height as they grow upscale. Now, put all of that together, and we get something called the significant tornado parameter. Uh, this kind of tells us how favorable conditions are on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, and it paints it on a really pretty map for us. Pretty much the reds and the purples are where con conditions are hyper favorable for tornadoes, and you can see how that kind of expands into Kentucky, Tennessee, and it does go all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, but remember, we're going to see less convection down here. We're going to see less storms. In order for this to work, call, let's call this nadir juice for now, okay? In order for the nadir juice to actually make naders, there has to be storms that come to drink from it. Uh, if there's a bunch of nadir juice out here in the middle of Georgia but no thunderstorms, that doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a tornado. So most of our thunderstorms, remember looking at the simulated radar, are up here, and they are going to be able to drink from this nadir juice, if you will. And that's going to continue way out here. Yeah, I mean, that's, that has the potential to be a pretty significant uh, event for tomorrow, y'all. Uh, and then, of course, snow. Of course, there's snow. Uh, I do want to talk about that briefly. Um, we're going to see the snow really start to break out around Chicago, southern Michigan, uh, probably around um, 12 noon. I like to look at the NAM. Let's look at the NAM and see what it's saying. Yeah, I think that the HRRR has a little bit of a warm bias, and we're going to see that snow start off around Chicago, probably around 1 p.m., and last all the way through 10 p.m. tomorrow. Getting heavy snow up there in uh, portions of Ontario, all through Michigan and upstate New York, starting around 10 p.m. Friday. And then that's a full-on snowstorm for upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine as we go through 7 a.m. Um, the official forecast, um, the official forecast from the National Weather Service as far as snow totals go is going to be brought to you right here in a second. Oh, Ooh, <laughs> that's an ugly map. The weather offices look like they don't agree. Okay, it looks like three to six inches in and around the Chicago area, six to tw uh, eight, six to ten, essentially, through a lot of south central portions of uh, Michigan. The NAM, for example, shows a little bit more snow than that. Um, yeah, the, like the NAM shows a monster snowstorm here, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a t just like the tornado situation. This is gonna be a tough one uh, to, to nail as far as the, the snow forecast goes. If you're in this little strip, the, you have a chance of seeing a significant snowstorm, but it just depends on how much warm air is there when the snow first starts. Are you gonna get rain? Are you gonna get all snow? If it starts off as snow, that's good news, and you'll probably get a lot of it, maybe over a foot in some of these areas. But if it starts off as rain, cut your totals in half. Back to Texas, Brad Arnold hasn't hollered at us, so nothing new is going on there. Uh, but we do have strong winds getting ready to come through New Boston and then Texarkana. A lot of our storm chasers are in this general vicinity, including Chris, Zach, and Frankie. Strong winds uh, down here near Crockett, getting ready to come through. Longview, Marshall, uh, Jefferson, you guys are all under uh, severe thunderstorm warnings for 60-mile-an-hour winds as this continues to move east.
Mom, Mom Squad, thank you very much for that. You didn't even have to do that. Thank you. Uh, Corey Dovell says, is Illinois going to be bad? Um, it could snow. Uh, it could rain a lot. If you're in northern Illinois, it could snow. If you're in southern Illinois, it could rain a lot. And we're definitely looking at potentially some strong winds as that really strong low pressure center is going to uh, move right through. Is Chris Hall your brother? No, he is not. Um, he is my atmospheric brother, but we're not related, actually, outside of the atmosphere. Yeah, if you're in Tennessee, you can sleep tonight. Like, I, I, There's definitely a flooding risk on the western side of Tennessee. If you live in a flood-prone area, you got to think about that. Um, but the tornado threat's not very high tonight. Cincinnati is kind of on the northern edge of that uh, tornado threat. It's you, you got to watch the radar tomorrow. I don't know what else to say. There's I'm, I'm not going to sit here and weatherman you. All right. Nobody knows. <laughs> all right. Uh, you all we know is that the, the conditions are going to be there. Uh, if they nudge a little bit farther north, they could be there in Cincinnati. If they don't, they, they won't be. We won't know until it happens. So just know that the possibility for severe weather exists and then be. Be a. Uh, be watching tomorrow. Always be watching. <laughs> Ryan, you just said Southwest, West Virginia, Northwest, North Carolina, and North South Carolina. <laughs> and it was the most confused I have ever been. That's funny. <laughs> Looks like the big sandy uh, Texas cam is starting to get some wind there. Uh, what are you thinking for tomorrow, uh, live coverage or chasing? Oh, yeah, I was going to make a poll. I'm going to let you guys pick. Uh, let's see here. What should I do tomorrow? Uh, cover the storms from the studio. Cover the storms. From out in the field, from the field. All right, there's a there's a um, there's a poll in chat. Oh, oh boy, this is actually going to be close. We've already got um, almost 1,000 votes. It's 5347. <laughs> this is a very polarizing uh, thing here. Wow. 2,000 votes now, 54 studio, 46 field. Remember, keep this in mind. Either way, either way, I will be live. I'm going to be live streaming either from the field or from here. It'll just be, it'll be a little bit different if I'm out in the field, obviously.
All right, I'm gonna let that run for a minute. It's only been going for a minute. Keep voting. Uh, per the National Weather Service in Little Rock, numerous roads in Scott County, Arkansas are flooded in the town of Bowles. Reports some people are isolated in their homes due to rising water. Also, Richardson is asking all residents west of US 75 to cease water use except for emergency needs due to power due to a power outage at pumping stations. Uh, well, they're going to let us know as soon as more information is available. This is near the University of Texas at Dallas. It's actually where it is. The storms are very quickly fizzling out here along this line in Texas. Still strong storms um, uh, trying to hold together as they approach Houston, but they're not going to hold together much, all right? The strongest storm that we have down here on the southern extent of the line is going to be moving into Crockett here within the next little bit. Uh, that's going to bring 60-mile-an-hour winds, maybe some small hail. Madisonville, you're getting it right now. This is going to continue to move east. But it will continue to die out as well. Um, strong storms. I think this part of the line up here will be the one that tries to hold together the longest. So I think that this will make it to Shreveport. So watch that. Um, I don't like the, the sign here that I'm seeing near Longview, Texas, where uh, this is kind of getting flattened out. We, we might see this try to become one of those storms that... Uh, punches out a new area of uh, rotation. It's not going to happen in Longview, I don't think. But maybe Hallsville, Marshall, that this is one that we have to watch. Uh, but eventually, especially once it gets past the Texas-Louisiana border, this part of the line will also start significantly um, calming down. Uh, this, this up here is going to go into Arkansas over the next little bit. This is where Brad Arnold and the rest of our storm chasers are near, uh, uh Texarkana. You guys are going to be getting in on this storm over the next hour or so. And then up here, uh, near Fort Smith and, and areas between Mena, Waldron, Danville, like this is all just crazy flash flooding material. Okay. Um, this is going to be bad tonight. Yeah, this is just something everybody has to be hyper weather aware if you live in a flood prone area. Uh, there's going to be a lot of rain and it's going to fall in a very short period of time. Uh, you're you're hearing some lightning and <laughs> you're hearing some thunder and you're seeing some lightning in Memphis. Uh, pretty strong storms is forming to your south. Mostly just going to bring some gusty winds and some heavy rain. Chase and hydrate. Oh yeah. By the way, the the pole is like. Honestly, I didn't think that cover it from the studio was going to win. And just to be honest, I, I am go just going to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> but <laughs> the poll was fun, and and I'm I'm I I do care about like what you guys want. So this this is this is just adding more to the consideration, right? Out of five thousand people who voted, almost half of them want me to go chasing. But more than half of them would rather me stay here. And I get that.
Haas, thanks for becoming a member. Chevy Dude, thanks. Vaughn Vaughn, we need a Great Sandy Antarctica. What? What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, all I know is during the 2021 tornadoes in Kentucky, you got myself and my family to our safe place before our own weather channel and sirens warned us. Positive Rose, thank you for that. Um, glad we could be there for you. Kev Electric, thanks for becoming a member. Mike D, go out and chase. My wife and I are dedicated followers. She even got her mom hooked on you. Keep up the great work. Mike, I think, I think I'm going to. Go with what your wife wants. That, that's a good one. That'll definitely be a part of the consideration as well. Got considerable severe uh, for uh, Montgomery, Pike, and Polk counties in Arkansas, guys. Strong damaging winds on the way. Uh, Andy, uh, are you going to be around tomorrow um, to, to do the thing if, if I go out and chase or, or not? What do you think? Yeah, I'll be here, Ryan. <laughs> you put, you're going to put me on the spot so you make sure I'm there tomorrow, right? Can't, <laughs> I can't let the people down. <laughs> well, no, I kept thinking to myself, I was like, well, I got to talk to Andy about this, but I also need to go ahead and start planning. <laughs> so if you're going to be here, that also weighs heavily into my uh, uh, decision making. Um, because I think that'll, that'll help us out a lot. Uh, where do you, are you look, have you looked at any of the data for tomorrow? Obviously, we're still covering these storms in Texas and stuff, and, and we'll get into the flooding issues and stuff. But I'm sure people are interested in what you have to, think, have to say about tomorrow as well. Anything? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more on the side that, you know, the, the recent storms that we've taken a look at on the channel and covered, there's, there needs to be a good balance between things. And, uh, you're seeing that ridiculous, uh, parameter space with the, the winds, the kinematics in particular are uh, very powerful with those photographs that literally go off the, <laughs> well off the, uh, marker there. Uh, but there's not a lot of instability. So it's kind of, you know, you have a low low cape high shear setup and those do produce a significant events from time to time but there's also the case where we could see storms tomorrow that are that never reach very like good maturity levels such that they could actually sustain themselves when they're blown to pieces like that we kind of saw that earlier today uh down in the storms that were in east texas and louisiana when they were all this semi-discreet you saw those tops of them blowing away like 100 miles to the east from the radar um i don't know if we'll quite see that tomorrow but i think we'll see the effects of that uh at the surface of the storms like toward the surface at their base uh that's probably going to be the theme tomorrow if i had to guess but if storms do mature enough or any one of them does then they could 
in theory, take advantage or full advantage of that sort of a uh, wild dynamical kinematic profile. That's my thought. All right. Thank you. We appreciate it. And um, we'll likely be seeing you a lot tomorrow because I, um, I don't know. I just like to get out there when I can. 99% of these weather events, I'm going to be sitting right here doing this. But every once in a while, it's important that I go outside. I, I, I got to get at least, what, 10 hours of sunlight a year. That, that's the recommended, right? We're watching a storm that's coming into the town of Mall. Uh, it's going to be coming up towards Texarkana. We're actually in position a little bit ahead of it. We've got a pretty good feel of it because it's dark, of course. But uh, we're going to see if this storm that's actually showing signs of rotation, uh, we're going to see if this thing tries to do something. And if it don't, we're going to go ahead and make the journey to Kentucky. But uh, we're going to watch this storm because it has a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, shuffle cloud on the front end of it. Uh, maybe we'll be getting some good few shots with the lightning eliminating it. All right, so that was an update from the wind. You could hear a little bit of Chris Hall in the background, uh, but what you what he was trying to say uh, is um, he's up here north of Texarkana awaiting this big storm uh, coming in, and there's lots of lightning activity. See a shelf cloud, and he's going to stay there, let it hit him, and then he's going to be on his way to Kentucky for tomorrow. Is this is this fifteen sig NATO casting real that I keep seeing, or did somebody fake that? Update on the poll. Uh, we got 7,000 votes in now. We'll probably close it off at 10,000. Uh, but it's still 53-47. Way tighter than what I thought it was going to be. Uh, also, uh, thank you to Tire Dog Builders, LLC. The generosity there, D Dane, Dixon, Charles, Chad, and James for becoming members. And then Rick Adkins, at least you're honest enough to come out and tell us our vote doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is there like a NATO cast? site that people are pulling this from Uh, this is uh, Longview, Texas right now from Mandy.
Uh, Ryan, I have 35 years because I do what my wife says. Yeah, that's, that's smart advice. Ryan and Zach, are you ready for an update? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, I saw where Chris stated he was in Texarkana. We're in Texarkana as well, waiting on this system to pass through. I, we've got a stream up pointed toward the storm with some pretty good terrain, so... We'll keep you updated on what happens. It looks quite a bit of lightning and the wind's starting to pick up a little bit here too. Um, NWS new mesoscale uh, discussion does say that the severe and tornado risk continues locally here into southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana as that line continues to push east. That's why we have that uh, continued tornado watch there all the way through portions of Arkansas and Louisiana. Yeah, they are starting to issue winter storm warnings up there in Indiana around South Bend. Uh, what about Arkansas? So there's a tornado watch. Um, we've got a bunch of storm chasers in Texarkana right now waiting on, to see what's going to happen with this line as it comes through. Uh, we're probably going to see some really strong winds between Texarkana and DeQueen over towards Nashville, Hope, uh, Gordon, and Arkadelphia, maybe even over towards um, Magnolia, Camden, and Smackover, and El Dorado. <laughs> but in my opinion, the, the tornado threat has gone down significantly. We're going to have strong winds. Those are going to die down the farther east this thing goes. Um, but it's still going to be a strong storm. The main threat in Arkansas comes north of Little Rock. Um, pretty much along the I-40 corridor points north, we're going to see extreme flooding, um, uh, even maybe into Little Rock there, um, and then over towards Memphis on the northern side of uh, Arkansas, that is, and through central Arkansas, that's going to be the main threat tonight. Missouri, if you're in southern Missouri, especially southeastern Missouri, the main threat for you is also going to be flooding.
Uh, so some of those stronger storms that have the potential to produce tornadoes uh, will be uh, in and around the Owensboro area tomorrow at 1 p.m. I kind of want to be right here, right then. Noon. Noon um, tomorrow. Yeah, so that's just, to, that's near Glasgow. It's a four hour drive. What's noon minus four hours? Eight. Uh, huh? Yeah, we just got to get Austin here in time. Yeah, let him know. <laughs> let him know that uh, we might should be here early tomorrow, maybe seven. Take a plane for a four-hour drive. I would have to drive two hours just to get to the airport and then wait two hours to get on the plane and then take a two-minute flight. <laughs> Guess it works out, but I don't think there's an airport where I need to go. Oh, my goodness. Read Tamer with a jump scare on Twitter here. All caps, major tornado outbreak appears likely tomorrow. Uh, with extreme low-level wind shear parameters and supercellular storm mode expected. Greatest tornado threat will be from central Kentucky and Tennessee through northern Alabama and Georgia. Stay tuned uh, to watches and warnings tomorrow. <laughs> Timmer, they call him the extreme meteorologist for a reason. Oh, by the way, some of the longer range forecast um, models are, are starting to say that m most of March, uh, especially as we get closer to the middle of March, is going to be extremely cold. So we're going to go back to talking about snow at some point, probably. <laughs> the weather is always interesting, man. There's never a dull moment.
We're about to hit uh, 10,000 um, votes in our poll. 52, 48 is tightening up. Uh, the man, I, it's crazy that I've said the name of these towns a million times. I don't know where. Um, about 9 a.m. tomorrow in Holly, Holly Springs. That, but the, it's not going to be that crazy. You're actually in the perfect spot for this to be in the downtrend zone. Um, I, I don't expect too much in the way of bad uh, things in, in that area to, tonight or tomorrow. Amazing score. Thank you, uh, Charlotte. Chase tomorrow. Thank you, Matt Scott. Thanks. Is your storm chasing truck still running? No, it's not. <laughs> I'm going to just be taking a regular vehicle. But I'll have like, I'll have the stuff that I need. Uh, should we leave London, Kentucky? Uh, no, I wouldn't like evacuate. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. No, um, you, you just got to be, you got to watch the weather, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Like you, you don't need to be scared of this. You don't like. You just need to like go ahead and be like, oh, if there's a tornado warning, this is what I need to do, and then just sit there and wait and see if you have to do it. It's it's it doesn't have to be stressful. I I, I know it's it, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of urgency about behind the messaging, and it's not for people like you, the people who are like, oh my god, I'm so scared. What do I do? I wish that we could have different broadcasts for you because whenever we say like, guys, tomorrow is going to be bad. You better pay attention to tomorrow. It's, it's because there are so many people who don't. And you have to say that to get them to listen. So you guys, you're, you're like, you, you're fine. You're going to be paying attention to the weather. You're going to be ahead of this. So don't be scared. Be prepared. Think anything's going to hit the Mississippi Louisiana state line like Kentwood tonight? There's definitely going to be some strong winds, but I don't think anything major is going to happen. No. Uh, what about Western Kentucky tonight and tomorrow? Lots of rain, potential flooding issues, some severe weather issues tomorrow around noon. Oh my goodness, Josh Royale with cheese gifted fifty memberships. Wow, so fifty people now have free memberships. Y'all say thank you to Josh. That's huge. Derek May. Thanks for becoming a high risker. Haley says, should Liberty, Kentucky be worried tomorrow? Nobody should be worried tomorrow. You'll never hear me say that. Don't be scared. Be prepared. That's my daggone thing. Just pay attention. Get them helmets. Download Radar Omega. Tune in to your favorite local weather guy. Tune in to me. Go over with your family what you're going to do in, a, in the event of a tornado. Do you live in a mobile home? A lot of people get nervous about that because you shouldn't be in a mobile home during a tornado. Well, find out where you're going to go. If you, if you do end up in a tornado warning, if you see the storm coming, if you're paying attention, you will see this happening. Okay, then think about maybe leaving, getting to a more sturdy shelter. You know, like we, we're, we'll be all right, guys. Uh, hey, Ryan, should folks in central Kentucky cancel large events tomorrow evening? Um, 
there's so many different factors that go into that. I, I really don't know. Um, just know that between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. throughout all of Kentucky, uh, there will be very strong winds, very strong winds, and potential tornadoes. If, if that, that, that also means that there will be very strong winds and maybe no tornadoes, maybe just some rain. So with that being said, if, if you need to cancel your event, uh, then, then I would. But I, obviously we can't tell you that, yeah, you should cancel your event because there's going to be a tornado go right through it. Very unlikely that that would happen. How long will I be live uh, tonight? How long have we been going? About eight hours. Uh, we, okay, so we've been going seven and a half, about eight hours. Um, we'll probably just round out eight hours. And we'll call it a night. Um, unless unless something happens that catches our attention and, and we need to stay longer. Right now, I mean, we're just looking at a bunch of severe thunderstorms moving through eastern Texas that are bringing 60-mile-an-hour winds. Um, we did get some damage reports out of Longview. There's a tree on a house on Jewel Drive back here a little bit towards uh, Kilgore. We had 64-mile-an-hour wind gusts on a home weather station right along I-20. Um, so this, this part of the line is still bringing damaging winds. That's going to move towards Shreveport. This area got hit by a tornado earlier. So y'all get ready for round two. Uh, but the, the, the part where we can really be helpful and we're like, okay, here's the tornado. Here's where it's going to go. I think that's over. Um, now it's just, okay, you see this line of storms, it's going to go this way and it's going to keep doing what it's doing until it dies about right here. And there's not much more I can add to that story. Um, and it, after it quote unquote, quote unquote dies right here, it's still going to cause pretty significant winds, even into the Mississippi uh, river Valley. Um, it's just the severe weather aspect is going to calm down a little bit. What time will you be live tomorrow? Um, probably around noon. Hey, did you get a hold of Austin? Uh oh. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Well, as long as I get here early enough to get everything ready, that should be good. D do you care to be here that early? Okay. Yeah, we still got 270,000 people without power now. It's starting to be restored in Dallas, but... We've got places like uh, Red River County and Leon County um, and Houston County uh, that are that still have uh, significant outages, and those are new.
<laughs> I love Twitter. Uh, Reed's major tornado outbreak thing. Somebody said, Reed, you're one of the best, of course. But you can't be saying those things with a 5% tornado risk, LOL. Reed says, I make my own forecast, bro. Go pound sand. <laughs> That's funny. And then Riley said, make it, make it a quote. Where's the quote? It's in stream text. Does it? What do they do? DM it to you or something? You guys should all screenshot this, me pointing at this, like I'm talking, and tweet Reed Timmer, at Reed Timmer, Ryan is, is teaching us about the art of forecasting right now. <laughs> <He's> us <laughs> we're using Reed's quote. Giving you more hand emotions for screenshots. Oh, I hope we bury. I hope that his uh, notifications just go nuts. Uh, when does the SPC Outlook come out for tomorrow? That'll be around 1 a.m. if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> There's like literally 10 of those going in a, a second now. We're going to get a uh, Reed Timmer uh, trending on Twitter, I think. <laughs> uh, it's just a prank, bro. <laughs>
Uh, tonight has not been uneventful. Um, the, the, we've actually had a very eventful night. Uh, we're winding down from it. Uh, but uh, I actually think that today verified, uh, definitely. Awesome. We'll take the drone out tomorrow. We'll try to th th chuck it into a tornado. Uh, we'll take our uh, probe. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know or not, but we built a little tornado probe. Stick a GoPro in it and we'll throw it in a tornado. <laughs> this is the best one. I should have just saluted for longer. <laughs> Instead of pointing at it. Tornado probe. Why does it randomly get so cold in here? I look at the chat and I'm like, please check on London, England. <laughs> we are so scared. Guys, if you're scared right now, don't do that. Be prepared. Um, get the radar app. I, I, if, you, if you watch one of my streams, you at least have a basic understanding of radar. At least I hope I'm doing a good enough job of you know, doing that. And we got a new tornado, a new warning, tornado warning and uh, we're going to, I'm going to actually show you through this radar. How we know that there's a tornado or that there might be a tornado. Okay. So you guys can follow along in your apps. This is for, Oh my God. This is for the exact area uh, that we called out earlier, uh, where we saw that big uh, inflow area. Well, I'm, well, I'm talking about an hour ago, uh, and we said this is heading towards Shreveport. Well, it's happening. What's happening, Ryan? Well, you see this little bulge out right here? This is something that could be uh, producing a tornado here soon. Let's look at the velocities on it. Uh, yeah, strong winds coming out of the storm like this, going to get kind of curled back around here with the strong inflow coming into the storm. Might produce a tornado here on the, uh, the eastern side of Marshall. And that's why we have a new tornado warning here. All right. That includes Scottsville. Um, and, and pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, almost up to Shreveport. It includes Scottsville, 
uh, Mooring Sport, Blanchard, and Lay or Lee. Um, and that's going to be for uh, Caddo Parish and Harrison County in Texas and Louisiana. So that's, that's pretty much that. Okay. And uh, we want you to take shelter in there. Even after I end the stream tonight, there's going to be multiple tornado warnings. Okay. Tornadoes don't only happen whenever I am live. All right. So keep that in mind. There's going to be multiple tornado warnings tonight. You've got to figure out a way to get warnings uh, without me. You can get them on your phone and you can get them through, uh, you know, just keeping up with the NWS site. You can get them through uh, uh, Radar Omega. Just figure out how you're going to do that and um, you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be all right. Um, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, right. And actually, I was just staring at that at that spot that just got tornado warned while you were talking. But I was actually looking at the one just north of the tornado warning that's headed more towards the uncertain uh, Texas and gray Texas oil city, Louisiana area. I was actually a little more concerned about that one, but the the southern one um, sort of bulged out, as you said, first and earned that tornado warning. So I wouldn't be surprised if we also got one up here. That was uh, the area I was watching. So um. Y'all watch out. Y'all watch out. Thank you, Andy, for pointing out another area of um, kinkiness in this line uh, that we look for. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to figure. We're we're trying to give you guys a you know a little bit of a tips on how to read the radar here. Uh, I could say it a million different ways, but you're going to remember kink, right? And that's what's uh, happening right here. And we are expecting to see a new some, tornado uh, potential tornadic activity there. And there's your new warning. From Cherokee County, Texas. And Natchitoches. I think I nailed that. Uh, let's see here. You did not nail it, Ryan. Natchitoches oh. is in Louisiana. That's Nacogdoches. Of course. <laughs> Of course, I, I need to just lose any confidence that I have when it comes to saying names of places. Anyways, there's your new warning down to the south. Uh, that includes Nac Nac Nacogdoches and Appleby in Texas. So we got multiple warnings now. Um, let's inspect this one a little bit more. Uh, we can't really, not well. But as you can see, we do have rotation here, um, and we've got a, a strong storm coming right into Nacogdoches, um, and Douglas and Eden and Alizan and uh, North Redland and Appleby, so please take shelter now. One inch in diameter hail, also possible in this. This is for Cherokee County as well. Uh, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Morrill or 16 miles southeast of Rusk, moving east at 45 miles per hour. The hazards here are tornadoes and quarter size hail. Uh, this is radar indicated. All right, we get to shelter if you're in Nacogdoches uh, or North Redland in Texas. And then also, we want you in your safe spot up here in Marshall, Scottsville, and Blanchard between uh, Texas and Louisiana as well, as that is trying to produce a tornado right now. And this is too. This is too. Like this, I thought that this was going to be the new warning, the one that Andy called out. I, that's probably still coming. Literally hundreds, hundreds of tweets per minute going out to Reed Timmer right now, still at this moment.
A new tornado there warning we go. has been issued. Caddo Parish, Harrison County, Texas, and Marion County, Texas, now under a tornado warning. And that is for the storm that Andy called out there uh, moments ago. And um, I believe out of everything that we're seeing right now, all out of all three of these warnings, this is the most concerning looking one. And it's moving towards uncertain in um, in Texas. And also gray. Uncertain, gray, and eventually oil city. So there's your new polygon, gray, Vivian, Hostin, uh, Gillum. Uh, all these places between Texas and Louisiana, right along the border here, are under this uh, new warning. And that's your area of concern right there. Go back down, Nacogdoches, and uh, hold on. Inspect this uh, tornado warning again. Once again, it's hard to hard to see anything at all on radar here, but. On the reflectivity, you, we saw that that budge, that the bulging out, I guess, on this side of the storm. It since went away, but it's it might have something to do with our distance from the radar. Another area that is underserviced needs a radar. I think we need one in Crockett, Grapeland, Rusk. One of these places needs a radar. Write your local people or something, senators representatives i don't know you pay taxes for this and you and you don't get it getting ripped off Nacogdoches. Is that not how I've been saying? I'm still most uh, concerned about this one up here near uncertain and gray. That's the one I'm watching the hardest right now. The, the other ones obviously have the potential to be producing a tornado and we need to be in our safe spots. But this one, there's actually something here to, to look at. Here's an update from the um, Weather Prediction Center. Widespread areas of flash flooding are expected going through the overnight hours. Greatest threat area for significant flash flooding with three to six inch rainfall amounts. That's going to be in that little pink box there. That includes 
Um, the boot hill of Missouri that includes uh, portions of Northwest uh, Tennessee includes Little Rock and Jonesboro. Yeah, this is this is kind of like an unfortunately perfect flooding set setup coming up out here. And guys, I, I know that like a lot of times when people start talking about flooding, people's eyes glaze over. They're like, boring, not tornadoes. I'm over. I'm over it. But guys, yeah, fl flash flooding can and will kill more people than tornadoes almost uh, every decade, every year. So uh, the tor flooding is actually worse than tornadoes a lot of the times. Uh, and a lot of people are going to go to sleep uh, thinking that everything's all right because the tornado watch is over or whatever. And then, boom, flash flood. Uh, sadly, we saw that in Kentucky. Yeah, earlier, uh, well, last year, time is flying. Um, in July and August, we saw lots of deadly flooding back to back to back in Missouri and in Kentucky. And um, it's, it's a perfect example of, I, I think, it, just in Kentucky alone, in my area, during that one flood in Ju late July, like 50-something people died. That's more than a lot of tornado outbreaks, you know? <sighs> Severe weather events are attracted to radar holes, I believe. Yeah, so uh, both of those areas of rotation that we've been watching. I uh, have kind of. I don't want to say dissipated, but they've they've definitely. Became less impressive here as of recent, I think that's going to be the, the, the theme. This is going to continue to interact with this wind shear, and we're going to see multiple little blips like this. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw tornado warnings all the way into Shreveport, over towards Benton, Cotton Valley. Um, like this, will this will continue for a while. Brad Arnold must be a radar hole. <laughs> uh. 
Uh, all right. I think that, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a night. What do you think over there? All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, uh, the next 24 hours. And we're going to do that. And then I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to get up very early tomorrow. And we're going to do this all over again. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, now, unfortunately, because I am a human and I do have to sleep, uh, I will not be able to be here for uh, the remainder of tonight's severe weather threat. So I would refer to you guys to the National Weather Service, your local TV uh, people. They do a good job, okay? Um, I, I'm not out here competing with your local weatherman. Um, I think that they're good to have. So, like, if you want, like, if that's... Like, just do whatever you need to do to, to make sure that you've got a way of getting warnings tonight and, and, and feeling informed and safe and all that stuff. Models, midnight, boom. This is what things are looking like. What are they looking like at 3 a.m.? Boom. Still heavy rain over here in northeast Arkansas and uh, over towards uh, Tennessee, the boot hill of uh, Missouri. But look, the severe part of the, the storms that has been pr producing the tornadoes and the damaging winds and all that stuff, that really falls apart after it gets past Texas for the most part. It starts to reform, though, when? Tomorrow, 8 a.m., boom, strong thunderstorms in northeastern Arkansas. This is when some of the really extreme flooding may start happening after hours and hours and hours of extreme rainfall have been falling. Let's go forward. Boom. 10 a.m. Here we are. Supercell storms are forming in Mississippi. Let's switch over to the east here. Um, and we are even seeing some back here in western Tennessee. This is when some of the very favorable parameters for tornadoes are going to start building up out here in middle Tennessee, central Kentucky, and Alabama. Boom. Let's go out to 12 p.m. Now we see those storms move into that space where the parameters are high. Are they going to get sheared apart? Are they going to produce a bunch of tornadoes? We don't know yet, but boom, Ryan Hall is going to be right here in central Kentucky around this time tomorrow, hopefully giving you a, a ground view of what's actually going on. And of course, we will be able to uh, give you um, all kinds of updates on uh, everything that's going on across the whole storm system because we will still have radar, we'll still have Andy around, and of course we'll start covering that snowstorm up here as well as we uh, continue to watch the storms move off to the east. Boom, 5 p.m., maybe some strong winds, potential tornadic activity as far north as near um, south central Ohio, near, near Hillsboro, down into the mountains. Notice how we still have... Um, some convection down here. It looks a little bit more robust on the southern side. That's concerning. But uh, the, definitely northern Georgia into northwestern South Carolina, western North Carolina, and then uh, into southwestern Virginia, that's where the, the, the tornado threat's going to exist as we go into 6 p.m. And then I would say by 9 p.m., the tornado threat's completely gone. All right? The main threat's going to be right back in through here. Uh, but anyone uh, in a much larger area could be dealing with potential tornadoes tomorrow. Boom. And of course, we got a huge thing of snow up here that could drop up to a foot near Chicago. Tune in tomorrow and we'll try to keep you updated on all that as well. Night night. Oh wait wait wait. One one last thing. Cool cool thing. Ugh. Well, never mind. Never mind. I thought we had something cool to show you, but we don't. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, that's it.
A huge shout out to all the Storm Chasers, Brad Arnold, MVP, Chris, everybody involved. Huge shout out to Andy, um, and all the everybody on the team, all the moderators, Carly, and of course everybody who became a member today or uh, just hit the like button or hit the subscribe button. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here, and we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Go. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't get it set up in time, but I am going to end the stream now. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.